Hi, everybody. Welcome back for another adventure around the world. The plane will be taking off shortly. I'm excited to get back in the cockpit today, fly some planes, go see some new beautiful sights. Hoping to get three flights in today, but we'll do what we can do, you know? No, no reason to rush. The world's not going anywhere. EU checking in at the start of a stream. This is, you know what? I got a lot of complaints, and by a lot I mean at least two. I got at least two complaints. The last couple weeks about late start streams, because I've been starting at like 5 p.m., all right? I hope those people got the alert today. Because here we are. I wanted to. Be, I was gonna be even earlier, um, but it took me, not kidding, over 25 minutes before I finally gave up on the feet cam. It still works. It's just really bright, and I can't change a single setting on it. So I, I blame the feet cam. We we would have started at like 1:10 instead of 1:37. <laughs> I finally, I just threw in the towel and feet cam was like, all right, it works. As long as it works, that's all that I care about. Oh, nice and early. Stretch it in, chat. Hey, everybody. Simcopter, people arriving, no feet cam, people leave. Sim, you are, uh up very early today, which is not surprising because you're probably just up normally. I'm up early, and I don't- as long- as long- if I'm asleep, I assume everyone else is, too. This is when I wake up, typically. Okay, so when I say you're up early, you know, you have to put that in context. Well, let's see what else Sim had to say today. We have a high Etau Chan, but Baka. <laughs> Welcome, Simcopter. Hope you're having a good one, dude. I saw a Danion in here. What's up, a Danion? Uh, if you're if you're a streamer, you get a hello first. That's how it works here. We have VIP service. Um, exchange. Sims VIP cocktails are good at all Etal terminals. Your card will get you in to either special secret behind a curtain free drink service welcome to each and every other one of you though Ito have you worn those glasses outside because the genu they genuinely look good on you I wasn't expecting that to segue into a compliment oh I'm uh, huh, sorry no I have not that's because they're not real these are just Novelty aviators. You might be able to see if it can, I don't know if it can focus on that through my face. Right there, there's like a, like a, this is definitely fake. You probably couldn't read it, but you could see that there's text there. I, I feel a little bit toasty, though, because I did get some sun yesterday. No jacket. The jacket's right here. It just, it's too hot. It's, it's cool. The weather is fairly nice for once, actually, but it's still too hot for that. Where are we flying, streamer? We're going to take off from Tucson, Arizona, and we're heading to New Mexico. So we're going to go see some aliens. We're going to do it in real time. Yeah, 87 degrees Fahrenheit here is actually nice. 11% humidity, a little high. <laughs> Better get a coat on. That's what it feels like. <laughs> oh, you actually did just wake up, Sim. That's my normal schedule. And the chat chastises me. People um, literally spy on me, and when I appear on my Discord channel, I get people ch chatting about my wake-up times and, like, trying to mom me. Being judged. So, no judgment on when you wake up here, that's for sure. 
Hello, Ita. What's up, Hoosier Hales? Dorito, thank you for the compliment. Cobra Samurai, what's up? Ulthor, welcome back. Enjoy your lurk. Cucumber Pickle, what's up? Sonic fan, Ray... Raydonic? I saw this bunnies. Liuda people arriving on the scene. Just chatting, saying hi, giving some people some time to pop in, because it's going to be a little bit before takeoff anyways. Um, don't have any, like, super spicy surprises, but we still have the typical. If you can see over there, that is the corner of our world map. Uh, it is a wall size map that we will be updating as we fly. I would totally turn you over there and show you. Well, you know what? You, why don't we just do that? Hold on. I love that when... I don't want to show this. Okay, I don't know if you can read that. <sighs> Telemarketer. It says telemarketer. They're starting to identify themselves as spam phone calls. All right, let's come with me. <laughs> answer it. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm not going to answer the spam phone calls. This is not the Kid Boga stream. Okay? He knows how to professionally handle that situation. So, I can't really, like, move this without screwing everything up. Alright, that should be good enough. I can't scroll up. But you can see uh, the little... Here, I'll show you. That's where we've been so far. So we've only got two pins on the board, hoping to add to that today, and uh, maybe see a little bit more substantial progress on our trip around the world. We got a long ways to go, dudes. We're gonna be flying for some time. The world is a big place, and we are taking basically what amounts to a scenic tour. It is not efficient and is not quick. Dang, the world is pretty huge, dog. It is. I brought in flight snacks. Have a chocolate chip cookie, chat. Thank you, Brimo. I needed that. So, we've got uh, all sorts of choices to make today when we start flying as to how we want to decorate. That What we decided to do was choose a different combination of pins and yarn. Depending on uh, the day itself. So all of our flights today, we're going to do a new combination to commemorate it. And also, you'll be able to follow along by using our online resources. Poof, we're back. Which you can access by using exclamation plane in the chat. In fact, I'll probably put that in the title. We've got uh, a plane log being kept up by Kyra Toby, which is going to document each of our flights and screenshot the, the premises. 30 planes, all 30 planes in the game, are going to be used in some capacity to take us where we're going, all these different locales. And then we've got uh, the actual map for Google Maps. So if, obviously you can't just turn the camera and see that map. So we've got a digital course that we're tracking as well. And uh, Ace Tech and others, maybe also Kyrotopi, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> are keeping that up. Let's go ahead and boot the game up now. Before we do, actually, before we do, uh, related to yesterday's stream, I saw, I thought this was pretty cool, that... We've got um, a patch already. We're not playing astronauts today, but we did play astronauts yesterday, and they already patched some of the things uh, that happened in our stream yesterday. So I wanted to look at that real quick because I thought it was pretty cool. Fast turnaround. So let's see. I'm definitely not going to be floating like this. Okay. How about one more song? 
There we go. So they've already patched it. That's good sign. I just wanted to uh, I kind of identify that because there were some kind of naysayers slash negative people in chat, and this kind of attests to my general air of optimism as far as the game is concerned. Um, so, changed overloaded status to allow very slow walking instead of no movement, because we kind of got stuck a couple times. Starting salvage pod has more battery power at start of game. That was obviously the biggest thing that we had to overcome. So, that's already been updated. Fixed a bug that caused the career kiosk to stop working if abandoned and resumed. That's actually what happened to us in the tutorial. Before we got into our first game, I stopped the career kiosk. So that that was fixed. Uh, awesome to see these like really, really fast patch note changes for stuff because it just shows you that they really do care. And it's not just like a one-off thing. You know what I mean? Fixed a bug that caused battery control panel to always show 100%. That was also an issue because I couldn't tell how much power it had left until somebody told me to use a different overlay. And a few more things. But then they have... Uh, a roadmap for development, which I thought was cool. So this is just like things that they're planning on adding in the future. Item and ship parts wear out with use. Zero G, so you actually float down hallways and stuff. Uh, crew can start reactors and dock for you. Air scrubbers, bleeding wounds, and uh, healing UI. And then long range destination ports to go to. So it's just, I just thought it was neat. I wanted to just share it since we, we played it yesterday and you guys maybe were there to check it out. Definitely something I'll be coming back to as it gets patched and as it uh, gets new content and stuff. I just think it's a cool idea. For a second, I thought it was bedtime. You're early. Hello, Miguar. How are you? Booting up Flight Simulator right now. From what I saw, it was fun even in the early stages of early access. It was, jerk. It was a good time. Definitely still a long way to go, but like, it, it felt like true early access. Like that was the first iteration. And uh, probably like, sometimes early access just needs to be used as a as a source of play testing. Like they, they genuinely might not have known about those issues until they, they got to watch a stream or a video of it, you know? I think we automatically assume that all indie devs and all developers in general just have like 500 playtesters that they can summon to do stuff for free and like report issues. When sometimes they, they might just be working in a relative vacuum, no pun intended, and not notice that there are these big gaping issues until they actually can see it happen on the screen. You know what I mean? Because that's kind of like what I did was it, it was, I hope, helpful. Because not only could they see if there were any bugs, but they could see how I triggered them in the first place. I bet, like, my <laughs> my stream could have potentially just been one big, like, DXD ag with um, a video attached that says, here's what's wrong, how I did it, and maybe that could be reproduced and then fixed. We don't need that anymore, do we? Because we're about to have uh, the Microsoft Flight Sim tunes playing in our ear welcome set your experience all right just gotta load in and good to go hey pretend dear welcome palm putt professor shit post snide is back hello off rex and internet george what's up with airline food anyway <laughs> but howdy everybody thanks for being here we're going to be flying around today for the foreseeable future. Uh, it's going to be another interesting timing day in that... Well, let me go ahead and get you the proper camera here. There we go. Feet cam is online, just really bright. It's going to be another interesting timing day because we are going to be flying east. So we're flying into the sunset. So it's going to accelerate the amount of daylight... Oh, 
trying to. Just let me have this, kid. <laughs> Potato Hater is here with a brand new tier one sub. Much appreciated. <laughs> Thank you for the brand new subscription. <laughs> Monka S. I'm glad to have you on the stream. I forgot what I was saying. Oh, we're going to be flying on planes today, and then we're going to be playing Crusader Kings 3 again tomorrow and the next day, presumably. So, action-packed. <laughs> I wonder what's your new subtown next stream. <laughs> I like how chat's voice has developed into that. That's your collective voice. I forgot how long the boot-up was for Microsoft Flight Sim. Even with... A solid state drive. They care not for your technology. Here we are. Roswell has a lot of flying history, and I know none of it. Great lemon wheel. So, no time like the present to learn, right? Still don't hear anything. There we go. I think it thought it was muted, and it wasn't. According to um, the volume mixer. All right, the first flight of the day. Let me see. Did I? Uh, I don't remember if I set up a flight or not. For, what is this? Free Paderborn Lipstadt Airport. Free handcrafted scenery pack. Who made this though? From the creative team at Aerosoft comes a new intricately detailed recreation of EDLP available for free in Microsoft Flight Sim Marketplace. Huh, that's pretty cool. The scenery pack is clearly a labor of love and now it's yours to freely enjoy. To unlock, simply visit the marketplace, access official content, follow the on-screen on -screen instructions. Huh, I'll have to check that out later. What all do they have on the marketplace? So who made all these? BT Studio. Um, these so these are like third-party editions that people are just making and selling. This one's only got two <laughs> stars. <laughs> Why? 124 ratings, two stars. <laughs> oh, that's not good. <laughs> What about the official content? This is not free, yeah. The the thing that we looked at was free, but this is not. This is all paid for third party creations. Orbix. There's the free Aerosoft one. This one's free. Interesting. Okay, anyway. Paid mods? Kind of. But at least they have a... I like that they have at least a review system, so you can kind of get forewarned if it's not good. I guess they're giving it for free as a taster of the other work. Yeah, I'm sure that they do have uh, some additional content in there, because that would be weird if uh, that was their only thing. Okay. Looking good, chat. We are gearing up. Let me see if I actually made a flight plan or not. Or if we'll just... It's not a big deal if we didn't, because it should be pretty easy. Should be around the world flight three. Day two, flight one. Why did I do it like that? I don't know. Is that easier or worse? I think that's it. Okay, yeah, because we were at, uh, here's Tucson. And we're just north of Tucson, the city. So I'll go ahead and show you where we're at on the actual map. Okay, so this, this was our flight plan originally. We started in Vegas. Right here. We, you can follow along with the plane command. We got the map there as well, if you'd like. We flew west into Red Rock Canyon, and then south by southwest to Joshua Tree National Park. 
We did not get to see... These are mines and like a ranch. We did not see the boulders. I don't think I went far enough. I feel like one of these hills is the one that's always in each... Arch rock. Dude, that looks awesome. Large natural rock formation some 30 feet across. Where are the jumbo rocks that we saw before? Did you ever see the nuke craters north of Vegas? I don't think I have, no. I've probably seen screenshots of them. Hello, Midsid. What's up? Jack M. Yeah, Joshua Tree got a lot of reactions from the chat from people that have already been there, which was really cool. Got to see some actual photos. And uh, I'm going to try and have the P.O. Box for uh, postcards set up for the next one. Hopefully. I'll try and work on that and let you know. So I'm going to try and get the ball rolling on that. I don't know how exactly to do it. We will see. From people like you! But yes, we flew. This one was actually my favorite of the day. I really enjoyed seeing um, the, the bridge, the London Bridge. I thought that was super cool. We, we did some extra digging on the history of this after we kind of were winding down. Uh, Lake Havasu City actually ported over the real London Bridge brick by brick and then built it into connect like a man-made island where there's like camping, RV campers. They've got like a marina right here where you can go boating. And, uh, it's, it's haunted. Like, it's legit haunted. On the original London Bridge, they, uh, put spikes on heads. And decorated the bridge with, like, dead people. So, when they moved all the bricks over, they carried the spirits of the dead who had been killed for hundreds, if not thousands of years. Actually, it was like 600 years. The London Bridge was crazy. They they built it and then they forgot about it for like three to 400 years <laughs> while it fell into disrepair. It was like made out of wood for a long time. And then when they finally wanted to brick it up, they did and they, they made it out of actual stone and they did it poorly. So it started sinking into <laughs> the water. <laughs> And, and like every year, it was a few more and a few more uh, inches down. And then they, when they finally rebuilt it again, I think that's when they transported the bricks over here. I could be wrong on the exact timing. And then created the recreated a different bridge out of the same bricks in Lake Havasu City. So that was really cool. And then we flew out of there. Uh, past all of these self-sustaining like automatic hydrating farms in the middle of nowhere past Winden and Brenda and we just kept going and going and we saw at the bottom it was like Kit Peak Observatory it was Kit Peak over here yeah Kit Peak Observatory was really cool they didn't have the proper observatory in the game but it was like really close you could see how the AI attempted to um like right here, I think, was the primary building, the telescope, and it was like actually there with a round building. They had all the roads and they had all the sub buildings and stuff. And it was just like really cool night flight situation where there was lights going all the way down this, even though there's probably not in real life, <laughs> but there were in the game. And it was just like a really beautiful flight down the mountain path. So we got to see that. And then we just kept going east until we hit Tucson. And we flew around Tucson, got to see uh, the Air Force Base and the International Airport. This is the Air Force Base right here. Davis Monthan. And what was it called? The Boneyard? So they have a special spot. They actually have this really handcrafted area in the game where behind on this side, there's like a bunch of, aban not abandoned planes, but... You know, they're protecting them from the elements by putting them in really low humidity areas. And there was another spot over here. There was probably like a few hundred planes. There definitely aren't lights. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Because it's an observatory that would interfere with the telescope. But it was still cool in the game. 
but you could actually see all the military planes in the game. Pretty high resolution. And then we pulled north out of that and landed up in Lachala Air Park. Which looks a little something like this and you're about to see it in game. So we are going to be heading due east. So we're not going to see um, Albuquerque or Juarez on the other side of the border. We're going to be going up to uh, not Santa Fe. Where, chat, where is Roswell? Right there. So we're going to Roswell. Should be fun. And it looks like we are going to pass this area. Sunspot, Cloudcroft, High Rolls, Timberon will be somewhere in this. Lincoln National Forest, the Rinson Ridge. So keep your eyes peeled for uh, when the ground suddenly becomes mountainous again and also green. Looking forward to it. Let's get started. We are going to be flying on this particular route another new airplane. We're going to let's go ahead and swap that out right now then, yeah. We're going to be flying the 172 which I think is just the Skyhawk, not the G1000. Is that correct, Ace Tech? I honestly don't know what the difference is between these two. They're technically two different planes, even though they're not. So. G1000 has digital gauges. Gotcha. Okay. Well, that is a pretty big difference then. So we're going... Oh, yeah, that's what... Uh, Ace Tech wrote six pack, which means your uh, standard gauges. G1000 is the Chad version. Speaking of the Chad version, she's the worst. Uh, I gotta give she's the worst the uh, coffee award in the competition that Kyra Toby didn't know they were having. Um, she's the worst. Out of your coffee beans, you have the worst bean and also the best bean. I got the two pack of um, the one that you recommended, and my favorite one is what's it? Hang on, what's it called? Not the hologram. It's the other one. Hologram is is the lowest on my scale. It reminds me of cough syrup somehow. Uh, then Kyra Toby beans come in. Then on top is the boss. What is it called? It's like something. The boss. We're talking about coffee beans. I got. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I got a new coffee maker and um, I got like a bean grinder so I took recommendations from the discord but you got the house blend instead of El Diablo but I will take not <laughs> last I honestly think that my um, you guys are going to laugh because you're going to say I told you so what's the name of the boss one? it's got like car it's like caramel or something like that anyway I still think that the local beans from Sumatra, Indonesia are currently at least tied for first. You guys are going to be like, local beans, I told you, just get the- I did, but I did, okay? I got it. Now let's set up, uh, set up our plane. I assume we do want some gas. Let me see, what's our range? Yes, we're going to want some gas. Seventy-five percent looks like more, way more than enough. We could probably go even lower. Let's go like seventy percent. All right, that that's plenty of wiggle room. We're going in a basically straight line, unless we wanted to go down to Las Cruces or pop on over to Hollow Man. Hollow Man Air Force Base. Hollow Man. I never even saw that movie as a child. I know they remade it, but that still terrified me. The trailer for Hollow Man put into my mind that an invisible person could exist and terrorize me in my youth. I believed it. Even to this day, it's not, like, as scary as it was when when you're a kid. Because when you're a kid, you can, like, 
anything's possible and anything could be happening at that exact moment. But like as an adult, I still do stuff that's just like, I should probably check and make sure that this weird paranormal thing is not happening, even though it's, <laughs> it's crazy to think that it could even be possible. I saw it and it did get to me. Snidus, it's not good, dude. It's not good. We could weave over here or we could just keep going. I'm kind of in favor of skip the Air Force Base because I don't know if it's going to even be anything cool. Chad, do you guys want to go see Hollow Man or no? Oh, see, you screwed it up. Look, what did you do? <laughs> what did I do? <laughs> uh, let me, let me undo. Okay, we're back. Haunted Root. Hey, what's up, Darth Panzer? Uh, just gearing up to go for flight number one. Pilot, that's me. Co-pilot, 1800 is a lot. Let's say we got 50 pounds of, let's say 60 pounds of cargo. No, let's say like 40 pounds of cargo. That's reasonable. We could have chat. You guys want to ride in the back? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> we are above our ma- Okay, actually, chat, you're not going to ride in the back because that's going to slow us down. Okay, you guys uh, can't slow me down that much. White Sands is pretty neat to fly over. Could keep the current flight plan and just use VOR to detour. Well, I'll just need to know kind of when I'm getting close. I guess. Failures. Currently off. ATC. We're going to go tail number. This is day two. Flight one. Call sign. Midas. Flight number. Um, kind of the same deal. I don't I don't know what my tail number should be. Well, you could go with... What, what's our overall? How many total streams has this been? Is this the eighth total flight sim stream? Let's do 21. Show tail number on. I think we're good to go. Unless... No, there's no liveries. <laughs> Unless. Let's choose... One of these parking spots. They're pretty much just right next to each other. We're flying VFR direct. Shouldn't be that tall of a flight. You probably wouldn't be able to fly VFR if you're flying into Roswell International, would you? But I don't know. Uh, we're we're going to do it anyways because we're going to stay low to the ground. Truth or Consequences Municipal Airport is one of the things that we're going to stop through because it's called Truth or Consequences. So, of course, we're going to fly through that. Do we know exactly Spaceport America? Dude, I told you, aliens are already here. Where is White Sands? I will find it. Okay, White Sands National Park. On the map. And then I can just plug in a waypoint and I can get an idea of where it is. All right, White Sands National Park. What's here? New Mexico. Copy, paste, check it out. Okay, so you pretty much do go to Hollow Man Air Force Base then. In that case, all right, let's just let's just do this. This is ridiculous. Undo redo real quick. Set arrival. Then you have to work backwards. So we say add Hollow Man Air Force Base, add truth or consequences. Boom. There you go. Okay. Looking good. We will get a taxi on the way in. Everything look clean. Make sure your flight conditions are live, and I think we're good to go. Interesting airport names. Yeah, uh, New Mexico in particular has some interesting airport names. 
Hello, Bean Chat. What's up, Winsorin? Were you summoned by the beans, potentially? Okay. <laughs> I forgot that I had glasses on. I was like, wait a second. This is not working the way that it's supposed to. That makes a lot more sense now. I have been told you do not like hologram. I'm sorry. I tried. <laughs> As is typical of these plane streams, I saw a flying man. Did you guys see the flying man? As is typical of these plane streams, not actually going to take off until one hour in. That's become pretty much the standard, though. Like any airport. Dude, these are these shoes are so bright because the sun... I wonder if I can turn off... That's probably better for now. Just remind me to turn it back on later. Dude, this that camera this camera is such a piece of crap. This is literally the this feet cam is the worst piece of technology I have ever had the misfortune of using so far in my life. I would not have used this camera if it was 2005. This is like 20 year old who's doing donuts in the forklift out here. Jeremy's that for years false. This is not the same webcam. This one was newly unboxed. I unboxed it. Okay. So, hang on. Let me, uh... Chat, we're having some technical difficulties, as is usual. Oh. Is this thing... This doesn't... <laughs> this is not even facing me. Okay. There we go. That looks good. Perfect. No technical difficulties. It was a false alarm. Use new HD webcam for feet. <laughs> uh, do you actually talk to ATC? Not verbally, but there is like a simulated air traffic control. So I've got uh, motion tracker on head. This is the track IR. We got... Joystick and throttle ready to go. Now, uh, we just need to go through the checklist. We're going to go ahead and close this map, at least for now. Let's take a look around. This is new plane. I don't think we have flown this one yet, period, under any circumstances. So I'm actually really excited about this. Um, the first couple flights were fairly familiar planes. This one is an anomaly. So... All sorts of, uh... Found the parking brake. Hiding behind the steering wheel. <laughs> I'm really glad that I saw that, actually. Not that I, I don't have the hot... I do have a hotkey configured, but still. Got a fuel valve. It's nice to just look at some of the dials on the screen. Bigger bro of the tutorial plane. Yeah. The Cessna 152 to... 170... Is it 172? Cutting it a little close there with the bus. Got radio comms. Right side, I'm noticing in this one, conversely to the 152, every single dial is on the main pilot side. Co-pilot exists, I guess, just to hold the yoke. And control the heat <laughs> and air conditioning. You gotta, like, copy the main pilot's homework if you want to get any of the proper details for this. You're going. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. What do we got? Com button 1 through 8. There's the ignition keys already in. <laughs> I was gone for a few days and bam, 50 hours of Crusader Kings 3. It's really fun, Maritanapa. And hello, Potato Hater, again. And Maritanapa, both. Welcome to uh, pre-flight inspection. Wow, why are there so many pages? <laughs> Hold on. This is, what? This is, wait a second. 
This is the most detailed pre-flight checklist in the entire game? None of them are ever this big. Okay, well, everything, everything from this point on is after takeoff. The 172 is the only plane with a detailed checklist. Don't worry. Why did they do that? All right, pre-flight. Aircraft documents. I don't think we have any. Check the documentation. Parking brake. Well, parking brake is set. Ignition is off. Avionics switch bus. I can't even. Bus 1 and bus 2 off. Uh, just as a reminder, I like whenever I fly a new plane, I like to find all the buttons and switches myself for the first time, so I don't click on the, uh, the eyeball unless I can't find it. And I don't look at chat either. Oh, right here. So those are both off. Battery switch should be on. Fuel quantity indicators check. It's gotta be over here. There's oil quantity. Okay, we got over 66%. Low fuel and low fuel are enunciators off? Does that just mean it's not warning you verbally? I'm going to click on this because I don't think I'll find it. Yeah, I don't think I would have seen that. It's like grayed out. Okay, so that light cannot be lit. Got it. Okay, now we can turn avionics on. Because that wasn't a switch, that was just like a, a <laughs> not lit up icon. Okay, so we should be able to talk to ATC now. Let's tune traffic. We're going to announce taxi uh, once we get this spooled up. I don't think we can, can we even, do we need pushback here? Not really. I guess we might be able to get it. I don't know, I don't, I never see ground services. Maybe I have to, maybe I can't get ground services till I announce taxi, but we're not, I don't know. Anyway, cooling fan audible. I believe I heard that. Avionics switch bus one and bus two off. Wait, didn't I just turn them on? Okay. <laughs> Static pressure alt source valve off. Uh, yeah, this, is it not this? I'm just going to use a little assistance because this is the most detailed possible. I was right, but I was also wrong. I couldn't even see this. Behind. See, I was looking at it like that. And it was literally directly behind this. Switch to normal. Switch to alternate. So I think it's on alternate right now. Annunciator panel test. Again, I have... I don't know what that means. This plane... Okay, so I said I wasn't going to use the eyeballs, but I've literally never <laughs> had to do half of this stuff before. Annunciator panel test. Okay. Just making sure everything lights up the way it's supposed to, if there's a problem. Fuel selector both. Okay, I know where that is. Check. Fuel shutoff valve open. That's the selector, but it's not the fuel shutoff valve. Open fuel shutoff valve. Okay. Flaps down. Check. Pito heat. Pito! How do you say this again? I always want to say it pito. Pito. P pito. Pito. Pipo. Potato. Hello, the rural juror. Okay, pito heat on check working. So, there you go. Check working, though. How do you know if it's working? Working. 
You just look outside. <laughs> and make sure you're not freezing over. Okay, uh, then turn it off. It just works. Battery switch off. Why are we doing this? This is just pre-flight inspection of the cockpit. Elevator trim neutral. This is going to be a dumb question, chat, but there's no dumb questions if you have something to learn. Is pitch trim also elevator trim, or are they talking about... the other one like okay so if I if I do trim up trim down and trim right trim left are are two of those not elevator trim is one of them aileron trim and one of them elevator trim where are my plane peeps so like on the plane your elevators are here, right? Right there and right there. This is like if I... I can't adjust anything right now. But these are my elevators. These are my flaps. And if these are... These are ailerons right there. I'm pretty sure. So elevator trim is that this wheel... Or are there two wheels? I don't know, but I know that it works because I know my hotkeys. Okay, pre-flight inspection complete. Seat belts adjust and lock. <laughs> Some real RP. Okay, chat. Uh, what kind of seat belt do we even have in here? You know what? This aircraft has had its seat belts uninstalled. Don't tell my instructor. Okay. Electrical equipment off. I assume that it is. Yes, all of it is off. As I thought... Avionics switch off. Fuel selector both. Fuel shut off open. We did that for sure. Okay, now we get to actually start. Open a quarter inch mixture, which is right here. And moves this. Uh, I don't know if you, got, you guys should be able to see that. So we're going to go fuel cut off here. That's idle cut off. And uh, what else we got? Okay, propeller area clear. Yeah, they'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry about them. They do this professionally. Now we can leave the battery on. Let's go ahead and flip our beacons. I'm glad this actually tells me the light system. Okay, mixture full rich instead of idle cutoff. Ox fuel pump on three to four seconds, then off. Ox fuel pump. It's got to be at the bottom, right? Or on the floor. That's just a shutoff valve. On three to five seconds, then off. Am I going to cheat? I, this can't be hidden. It's got to be pretty obvious, unless it's on the floorboard. Power outlet. That's all I see. All right, do I have to cheat on this one? Oh, it's a switch? I was looking for, like, a button. You No, it's an actual switch next to lights. Okay, it was right there. One... Two, three, four. Mixture lean. Feet ready to break. Ignition start. Rich when engine starts. Oh. <sighs> okay, here we go. It's got a, it's got one of those combo ones. Okay, fuel pump. One, two, three, go. Full rich, start. Well, I did it backwards, but it worked. I wasn't supposed to do mixture yet, but it worked. You're going 
around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Throttle. Adjust a thousand RPM. Okay. RPM is right there. Throttle down a little bit until that hits 10. That's a thousand. Check. Check your oil pressure. Oil pressure is not in the green, but it's not, it seems fine. Right there at 50. Alternator can finally go on and we can probably get off battery power. Alternator indicator off. Is it not? Okay, that's what I was looking at. It's volts. Gotcha. Uh, ammeter. Ammeter. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what an ammeter is. We're learning. Amp meter. Basically. Okay. I don't even know what's a good number here. We got a uh, steam ban on the left. And then we have automatic manipulative pulse on the right. Which is, of course, what that stands for, as we all know. Forced rides at the park and now forced around the world. You gotta, now you're here. You gotta stay. <laughs> the higher the number, you better your score. <laughs> Avionics bus one, bus two. Okay. Um, should be on. Check. Radios should be on, but they are. I mean, that, that's on as far as I can tell. Looks good to me. These buttons all also seem to work. Transponder on standby. Now that I don't know. Okay, transponder is on standby. Flaps up. Check. You can actually see them move right there. That's really cool. Heading indicator set. Okay, I know what that means. No, I don't. <laughs> I I know what the heading indicator is, but I don't know um, how to set it, I guess. Like, do I just want to, what do I want to line up the heart with? What kind of plane are we in? A Cessna 172, yes. Yeah, I'm on the right thing. Uh, I think this is for manually adjusting the gyro. And that's what I have. It should automatically do that because that's the only assist that I have in the entire game. Altimeter set, we can do that by hitting B. And that's going to change this gauge uh, to be accurate. Attitude indicator you also have to set. This is the attitude indicator, right? No, there's two. There's this and this, but I don't know how to set either one. Oh, I got you. I've actually never done that before. That seems perfect. Okay, now we can taxi. Whoo, deep breath. Taxi light as required, landing light as required. Let's go ahead and get those on. Go ahead and get the strobe on. When do you use nav lights? I guess now. Parking brake release. Test your brakes. Test the rudder. Check the turn coordinator, which actually is this, because it says it right there. Turn coordinator, and this is the attitude indicator. Heading indicator is working. Compass check working. Well, we'll know once we start moving. Okay, let's do it. I didn't miss takeoff. That's because the unbeknownst to me, the 172 is the most detailed pre-flight checklist in the whole game. All right, taxi to runway one. We don't actually get permission because we're flying. I'm starting to suspect that uh, either A, we're playing in a virtual simulation of life or B, 
The gods above have decided no more death and destruction, no more wanton wasting of human life will be tolerated. Now any type of damage or waste of precious life will be intervened, and they have caused some temporal anomaly in order to prevent any type of tragedy or disaster. Wait, this isn't real? Can instruments actually fail or do you check them for immersion? There are fail states that I currently have disabled, but if you stick around long enough, uh, they might be enabled. So, I've, you know what? I'm dumb and I forgot to clarify the error list for the wheel. I'll let you know if I make an error. Okay, you have to trust me. Bus driver, uh, on standby right here. All right, can you guys calm down for a second? There we go. Parking brake is off. I'm gonna go ahead and throttle up before this bus gets pissed and comes back around the other way. Oh, and I need to do one thing. I need to close and open DX Story. Not that I think you guys are gonna really notice because they never get 60 frames per second anyways. I'm hungry, I'm gonna go get food. Thank you, Vintage. Get me some while you're there, okay? Appreciate you. Dude, these flame fire gas trucks? <laughs> these flame trucks! Also, I like that this little airport really did not get much love from the satellite. The game normally doesn't look like this. <laughs> but it got the airport, at least. Look at these, like, chunks. <laughs> Maybe it's just this particular northern part of New Mexico. So, we are going to be taking off to the east, hopefully. 57 Alpha Zulu traffic minus 21 taking off runway 1 departure to the east. Runway 1, chat. That would be north, right? 57 Alpha Zulu traffic minus 21 taking off runway 1 departure to the north. Because there's north, one's like that way. The famous New Mexico spike rocks. Indeed. Actually, this is. Hang on, is this the taxi? This has got to be the taxi right here. Okay, we'll steer clear of the runway. By the way, how's the volume? Do I need to crank it up? Or are you guys good? Probably gonna get louder once the engine's going full throttle. It's nice being able to say full throttle and actually have a throttle. Dude, um, it just really feels good to play this game. Like, having the joystick, having the throttle, having the foot pedals is just such an immersive experience that I don't get from any other game. And the head tracker as well. It's just so, so much of like a spoil for every other video game that exists. I'm just excited to, um, to get back in the sky. Okay, let's, an we already announced that we're taking off, so we shouldn't have to announce that we're getting on the runway, but I'm still going to like, look both ways before I cross the street. <laughs> Even though I don't have to get clearance to progress. Volume sounds good, fine. Excellent. VR is gonna be sick. Yeah, once once they get some more frames on this, it is gonna be sick. This is a pretty thin runway, isn't it? So I assume they want us to, the arrows indicate that you're supposed to start your takeoff from that, that line. And that's probably where they, they don't want you to land before that either. VR is going to destroy computers. I think it will, yes. Tox, do you remember the Minecraft series Fall of Gondolin? That was the first time I discovered you. Since then, I have stopped in to see what you're up to. Hello, Suhu. Welcome to stream. I do, in fact, remember. Okay, before we take off, we need to do a couple things. Number one, check flaps. There you go. Flaps are down for takeoff. We probably don't need them to be full down, but I can't... I don't remember how to step them. Let me just experiment with that real quick. I'm gonna set the parking brake for just a moment so I can play with the button here. 
I actually do have a stepped hotkey. So, is the 20 degree the takeoff flaps? I think so. Hi, Kimmy Kicks. Welcome to, uh, just in time for takeoff. How many frames do you drop with VR? Uh, you don't need to, it's not about dropping frames, it's about you need 90 FPS to really be comfortable. Is it 10 degrees? Or did you just make that up, Zerino? I would think lower degree is, is takeoff. You can go full if you want. Yeah, we can go full if we want. But let's just try that. Alright, parking brake. Off. Let's go. I don't have a heading going out though. <laughs> oh man, I don't I don't even know. I guess we could just look at our, our iPad. So I'm gonna stay full rich for takeoff and then lean it once we get airborne. We are not even cruising at 40 knots right now, so I'm not even gonna start pulling back. So we're going closer to 50 to 60. Okay, let's flaps up. Start nosing up. We're in the air in famous New Mexico spike rock zone. And, uh, I have no- I think my heading is probably just going to be east. That's- I mean, that's- that's pretty easy. That's fine. Chad, it's fine. We're good. All right, we leaned out. Uh, hopefully, we can start picking up some speed here in a moment. Sick jams during takeoff. Thank you. Proximity alert. Uh, sort of. <laughs> Proximity to stalling the aircraft and dying alert. Yeah. There's no, there's a fixed landing gear on this. So we're gonna be just dealing with that for a while. We got some uh, elevation to climb if we wanna get over these mountains. Okay, so this is the part where I wanna start adjusting the trim. So I'm holding back on this thumb. And then it should start kinda of climbing on its own. So, what I'd like to do is kind of check the throttle. Get it down to about like a nice controlled 80%. We, if, we, if we go 100% the entire time, we're going to end up burning out the engine. Not, not actually because I don't have that enabled, but it's good to get in that habit because it's actually possible we might fly with that as a disaster possibility. So I think we just... Do we need a Class B airspace transition? I really don't know how the ATC like authorities work here. I'm just gonna click it and see what it what it says. Tucson approach minus two one is type Cessna Skyhawk three miles east of five seven Alpha Zulu three thousand six hundred feet. Request clearance to transition Bravo airspace. Minus two one Tucson approach. Squawk three three two one. Okay, got a new squawk code. Squawk three three two one minus two one. What do you mean burn out the engine? I mean like uh, the the higher the throttle the more rotations per minute the propeller is going to have to spin in order to get you to go faster. So, uh, if you have it set to 100% throttle, then it's literally the, the engine is working as hard as it possibly can at the maximum. So if you, ma if you maintain that 100%, it's like if you're driving a car and you just hold the accelerator to the ground indefinitely. You just don't do that, you know? 
Okay, let's acknowledge our contact. And we should be good to minimize this and maybe get some views. Just going to stay on a nice steady ascent here. Maintaining about 70 knots, we can tell right here how fast we're going in airspeed. And you can see our altimeter climbing. We're at about 4,000 feet and climbing to 4,200 right now. All right, you got it. One two five decimal one minus two one. Tucson approach minus two one four thousand two hundred feet. Yeah, think of it like redlining a car engine exactly. All right, altimeter two nine or decimal decimal nine zero. So I need to calibrate two nine nine zero. There it is. So we have a correct altimeter reading, and we need to start gaining a little bit more altitude here chat so let's go ahead and work on that so I'm going to give it a little bit more throttle otherwise we going to hit some mountains chat so 70 is slow slow yes yeah, 70 is slow slow 70 is not that fast but we're also climbing uh, at a very steady pace right now but you can see that the mountains are climbing faster than we're climbing. <laughs> it's really cool to see uh, this area of New Mexico, like... Alright, we might not be able to make this approach, chat. The wind is going to start picking up, and we're going to have a problem. What did, I, did I say New Mexico? Well, it's going to be cool to see New Mexico during the day, too. I promise the ground is going to look pretty similar in both. But yes, Arizona. Nor north of Tucson. Because we landed here at night and really couldn't see much. Seventy knots at 100% throttle is a normal climb setting. Yeah, I just boosted it up to um, basically 100%. I think we can make it. <laughs> hey, uh, yeah, I think we can make it, guys. Thanks for riding here in Etel Air. I see the mountain coming in hot. Um, we're still going up, though. It's fine. I'm pretty sure we got this. Just get comfy back there. I'll take care of the rest. The mountains are beautiful, though. So, these are the mountains just north of Tucson. So, if you want to look at the map, that's exactly where we are. There's a saying in aviation, you can't outclimb a mountain. That is probably true to a degree. How long can you leave um, the throttle at 100% for before you really need to start worrying? This is a big mountain, though, chat. How do I turn off the stupid icons? All right, I think I'm going to have to pause here so I can turn that off. It's just drive... Like, it, it happens every single time we fly IFR. I mean, we fly uh, uh, VFR. I can't believe Etal's about to kill us already. Yeah, me neither. I can't believe I'm going to kill you guys already, dude. We're going to die. Nah, you guys are fine, dude. You guys are fine. Look at this clearance. Look at this clearance. Look at that clearance, chat. Come on. You didn't think I had that? <laughs> I had it not even close. I had it the whole time. Can't <laughs> climb a mountain. Hold my beer. I literally saw my life flash before my eyes. I do have full damage on, by the way. So if we crashed, that would have absolutely counted in the plane log <laughs> and been an error for the next time. 
Sorry, I peed on the seat a little. And yeah, we're rewarded with a beautiful view. Look at this, Chad. Look at this. All right, now I can afford to pause for a sec because I got to get this icon. It's going to dry. It's going to be there for the entire flight. So if I don't take care of it now, it never will go away. It's the taxi ribbon, I'm pretty sure. Which can be a blessing and a curse. There we go. Hi, Elystra. Welcome to um, our mountain canyon view. I think we're coming up on a river. Inside the mountain range right here. I'm trying to like trim down without killing us. And get some scenic shots. Yeah. That is really cool, dude. Alright, so I'm basically just going to continue heading east. And then we can figure out, like, where we're actually supposed to be. Hitting some chop in between the mountains, getting some gusts. Check out your uh, right passenger window right there. You can see a little bit of river running in betwixt the different mountains. But yeah, we're going to juice up so we can clear this. Next mountain is even taller. That's because I uh, went down a little bit. I love to show up to a stream where the pilot almost kills everyone. Yeah, but the good news is almost doesn't count. Because you're still very much alive. Oh, yeah. That's not me moving. That's that's the wind. By the way, when are they going to fix the, uh, the knots wind speed thing? Sometime in the near future, I guess. They said they already knew about it. Because there's going to be some real chop once that's done. Right now, I think the wind is like three knots or something like that. Okay. Uh, we do have a map-ish. So that's actually our flight path, I think, is the orange line on nav. So we're just heading gently back over in that direction. We just... Glad we got this, like, beautiful mountain view, though. This is a nice start. What mountain range is this? Well, once I get clear of this, we will take a look at the uh, the Google Maps. It's just north of Tucson, Arizona. So we're going Tucson to um, on our way to New Mexico right now, heading towards Roswell. Got, like, a mountain road pass through this. You can see that there was a road right there. That uh, the AI snapped a pick of. land on the road. You could. Possibly. <laughs> it's doable. Big mountains over here. I mean, we are already over 5,000 feet above sea level. We're still cruising through this. One time, I vomited on the mountain right outside of Tucson. Was it this one? Did you vomit on this one? Alright, let's, uh, what are we at right now? About 73. Let's, uh, let's stay right around there. Maybe trim up slightly. Trim right slightly, hitting some bumps. See, this is not, that's just the wind. Causing that little bit of turbulence. It's a beautiful plane. The Skyhawk. Pretty smooth flying so far, actually. Um, it feels like just way better than the 152 uh, initially. <laughs> you can land at that road. No doubt. Okay, so let's, uh, let's try and get like a a decent elevation before we hit this other mountain that's directly in front of us. 
So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to look at our attitude indicator. That indicates that we're heading basically into the horizon, which means we're going to crash if we stay on that path. So I'm going to use on the joystick my trim to I'm pulled down, which is going to start moving this wheel. So it moves this wheel right here. Here you can see, you see it scoot. Scoot a little bit more. And as it scoots, we're starting to nose up. As we nose up, we're going to lose speed. So what we're trying to do is find a nice balance between going up and not stalling the aircraft. So that's why it was tough to, um, to get that over that first mountain because you have to balance speed with the angle of the plane. You can't just point directly up in the sky like a helicopter and go straight up. Right? So, you have to balance the throttle with your trim with um, your angle of attack. So in this case, we're kind of drifting to the right. So I can also trim left a little bit, which is going to help kind of balance us. And what that does is make kind of semi-permanent changes to our elevators back here to kind of help maintain certain angles that we want to keep flying in a consistent pattern. So it's going to turn a little bit to the left, try and line us back up with our target. Remember to check mix as you climb? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to look at this. I can kind of see where we are in relation to our course that we're charting. We're going dead over that mountain. So let's just line that up. I assume that's my course. It'd be pretty funny if I was going the complete wrong way. And uh, I, I'm at what? What is my mixture right now? About 54%. So we're going to just move a little bit of mix. See if we get more power or less. So should I be watching RPM while we're doing this? Because look, I cut it and we lose it. I increase it and we have diminishing returns. So it looks like right around here is as good as it gets for now. Right around that 47 to 55%. EGT is best, but RPM is fine. I don't know what EGT <laughs> stands for. <laughs> All right, we need to angle up a little bit more because we're going about 80 knots. So trim up a little bit more. Egg T. Pulling to the left, so we're going to trim right. Can I go ahead and throttle up as well? I feel like we're going to run out of room here in a minute, unless we go around. Talks, I'm new here. Why do you need so many clocks on screen? It's time. How long I have to put up with your bullshit? That way I can write it on my report to Twitch later. <laughs> no matter how much I trim, we're never going up. I'm trying not to just, like, get aggressive with it and just yank it all the way to maximum. Otherwise, we're going to stall and die. All right, let's kick the throttle up a little bit. We're almost at seven. This, this mountain's got to be like 9,000 feet, dude. We're heading directly to it. Here we go again. <laughs> Every other pilot, just go around the mountain. Eat tall air. I'm going to climb it. Because I can. Okay. There we go. That's probably a better angle. But we're also losing speed. I'm 
Mountains are so tall, dude. I'm a little concerned right now. We can always just cut left, and that's probably going to be smarter. I don't know if I can take this any any steeper. Safely. Because I'm already losing speed down to 50 knots. Alright, we got to cut left. We can continue climbing as we go left. What's the plane model? This is a Cessna 172. We have wheels. We can always drive up. That's true. We could always drive up. I know it doesn't look like... It, some of you are probably like, it's how it's just pull up. It's easy. But, like, I can't safely do that. It's not possible. We are in a controlled climb right now. Approaching, uh, based on this indicator, 7,200 feet. We're hitting some mountain chop. It's a little windy as... It's going to end up pushing us down. You can hear that already. That noise means that you're close to stalling. So we're already close to stalling. Even though we're barely able to maintain 7,200 feet because the draft that's coming over the mountain is literally pushing us down into the ground. So the closer you get to a mountain as big as this, uh, the harder it gets to climb because of the way that the wind pulls around it. What if we just drove? I think it would actually be slower. We're having to take this big mountain detour, but that's okay. Yeah, what, what's the cargo? I do have like 40 pounds of cargo on this plane. What kind of cargo do we have on this? Slower versus dying. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Try spinning. That's a good trick. Uh, in time, maybe we will. ATC is not even talking to me right now. They're talking to a real airplane. The Exajet, Execjet 617 Tucson Departure. So, Chad, if you want to look up Exajet 617 and find out exactly who those people are and where they're going, you could do that. A mule for illegal nerd distribution. Well, I don't even know why I have to take that trip. I got plenty of nerds distributed in this chat. Feels redundant. Are we there yet? Uh, we are there. And by there, I mean... Oh, yeah. By there, I mean right here. Mother Nature. I'm ready to, like, get in a consistent flight path so I can actually, like, look up the exact mountain ranges. This game is beautiful. It is, yeah. Chad, is this a common occurrence in this channel? Does he bully you all the time? First of all, I don't know what you're talking about. Dart Kun. Second of all... Take what you're given. So you say bully, I say, uh, sass. Okay? If you stick around long enough, you'll see people who actually deserve... <laughs> uh, which is true. Alright, we're at like, let's just, let's just level this out and kind of hang left and just go a little bit more parallel. Talix, blink once if chat is holding you hostage. Alright, this looks good. 
Let's try and line this up. And uh, so how we line this up was we watch basically these dials in particular and kind of see like it's turning right hard and I'm not. So either we just hit a new patch of wind or the trim is severely miscalibrated. Could be a little column A, a little column B. It's like I'm not moving and yet we're tilting hard to the right. So I just trimmed left to try and correct. Trim left again. We must be hitting a crosswind. Trim left more. And then slowly as we trim, you should notice we start either heading in the other direction slightly, which is what's happening. And then that means I went a little too far in my correction. Okay, let's see. Still to the left. Still to the left. Kind of nosed down a little bit, so I'm going to trim up. It's thinking about it. We've almost got it leveled. Still to the left, come on. Give me a little something to work with here. Little, just a little wiggle room. Okay, so what, we're at 8,000 feet, slow climb, just trying to see where it ends up falling. The tr I, was, I gave this too much praise at the beginning, I think. It's a little bit tougher than I originally thought. Or maybe it's just this particular patch of wind. Okay, because we're just kind of bouncing along. All right. Does this plane not have autopilot? Probably not, but maybe. Uh, we're lucky to even have a GPS in here, to be perfectly honest with you. Compared to the last two planes, this is a luxury. We got uh, vertical navigation page. We might have VNAV autopilot. OBS mode. Dude, you can start your own stream in this? That's pretty sick. You're flying above a valley. It's basically a big wind funnel. Yeah, it's just crazy that it's simulated like that, I guess. Dude, this looks awesome. Got a river running all the way down here. Got some farms next to it for irrigation purposes. Oh yeah, we're, now we're going... As a premium member, you are highly valued and will be used as a flotation device in the event of an emergency water landing. Callum McChess, I refuse to thank you for that sub. If Simcopter could see you now, he would be very disappointed and know you for who you really are as you reveal yourself to our chat in our community. Somebody screen cap that and then post it in Sim's chat later and see what he said. I can't blame you. Thank you, Parkside. Someone said greetings. Who said that? Hello, Silent Serenity and everybody else is just popping in. 
Talix, found your sass through astronauts. Very nice gameplay. They dropped a small patch. We actually talked about that at the beginning of the stream, believe it or not. We did uh, look at that basically in detail. I thought it was super cool that they already uh, got something in the works and already fixed a few of the issues that we had. I like that we're going to be just basically following this river. All right, let's experiment with the dials a little bit more on this and see if we can get something... Uh, working for us so we don't have to work against the plane for the entire duration of this trip. This is going to be a pretty chunky trip, but uh, that's okay. We should have plenty of time. Dude, there's some wind. Because look at this. Nothing, right? Totally stable. Bam. You're going left now, nerd. Okay. Fixed. Wait for it. Now you're going. Now you're just kind of going slightly to the right. I don't even think um, our elevator trim is possible for us to to properly set right now. Um, hey, I asked the other day about Hotas for this game. You suggested based on the planes. I was interested in to get a yoke instead. Unfortunately, they're quite rare, and if it's not for PC, basically non-existent. If it's not for PC, basically not. What do you mean if it's not for? If it's not for PC, basically non-existent. What does that part mean? Uh, let me let me answer what I think you're asking. Which is, you will also find that joysticks and throttles are also basically non-existent right now. I, if I wanted a yoke for Xbox... Well, this game is not even out on Xbox yet, so you've got some time. Right, chat? This game's not out on Xbox yet, correct? Chat, have I been following the right path this whole time? But yeah, they, I don't think they even have a yoke for Xbox. If it's for console, I'm not sure what your best bet would be. Because um, I really don't have that much experience. No, it's not a no release date. Currently, PC is your only option. Uh, but there are some... Like, I have a Thrustmaster is what I'm using here. And I'm pretty confident that there are some Thrustmaster console versions... So I would just check those out based on what I've got. But when they do release it, there should be a Thrustmaster combo, joystick, and throttle. Just I would just check the reviews and see, you know, what people generally think of it. And then if they're good, then go with that. Oh, we're flying over... Oh, is this truth or consequences? <laughs> All right, hang on. Let's fix the autopilot so I can look this up. Wait. Can somebody tell me what... Why are there two orange lines on the screen right now, chat? Uh... Oh, no! No! Oh, no! Where have we been going this entire time? We're supposed to be going that way! Who put orange lines on my map, dude? Who doodled on my map? It's a road. I want a refund. Thank God we were at least going southeast instead of, uh, like, west. This is the first map in the whole game that I have flown a plane where they have the stupid airspace uh, indicators in the plane map. I love how smart chat gets after I tell them exactly where I went wrong and uh, how I went wrong. Suddenly, suddenly I'm a dumbass idiot as soon as I reveal it to chat, but nobody said shit before that. So I'm not going to take this from you. Okay? Because if you- if it had been so glaringly obvious, it already would have come up before I checked.
but you guys get like hindsight told you so's and you didn't even say anything. So I'm not gonna accept any of those. It's a fine line between Jeff and going the wrong way. Albuquerque Center minus two one nine thousand two hundred feet. Minus two one Albuquerque Center continue as planned. Here's why it didn't seem wrong. This is why it didn't seem wrong. Because the orange line was still going like south and east. And remember at the very you know what? I'm gonna blame uh obviously not having the VFR map is number one, but number two is everything goes back to Ace Tech. Okay, this is Ace Tech's fault because in my mind, I was like, wait a second, White Sands. We kind of plugged in White Sands with like a latitude longitude at the very last second. For all I know, it is that way. Like we're going kind of east and south. I thought maybe we're heading towards White Sands right now. It seemed normal. I knew we weren't going straight east because I can see that on my compass. I thought White Sands was this way. Ace Tech, apologize. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here let's 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 line up this way. Dude, let's figure out um autopilot, yeah? Nav receiver we got direct, set a direct course, menu, clear, CDI, switch between GPS or V-Lock to provide navigation output to an external, I don't even know, I don't know what OBS mode is, message display, flight plan edition, vertical navigation, that didn't do any, oops, uh oh, chat, I, I tried to scroll out and I mouse wheeled the, uh, the system. Well, I'm just going to start clicking buttons. Alright, I think we want to be on GPS, actually. Now I'm people chatting. It's the second box up from the bottom. What does that mean? Clear, cancel, remove? Is that what you're trying to show me? How do I get out of uh, airport view? Do you have Sirius XM? I do not. The panel under the GPS panels. Okay, well that that's definitely clearer than what that person was saying. They just said second from the bottom. Second button from the bottom doesn't. This, there's a thousand buttons on the screen. Okay. Someone else in chat has made a correct uh, description in a very brief way. But I want to get- I still want to get back to the map. So one problem at a time. How do I get back to the map? Instead of nearest airport. Clear, cancel, remove does nothing. Menu does nothing. Push the buttons. Hold clear. You have to hold the button down? Okay, you have to hold the button down. I would never have figured that out. Um, today I learned you can hold buttons in Microsoft Flight Sim. Now... To be fair though, chat, think about it like this. If we hadn't have gone wildly off course, would you have gotten to see those beautiful mountains that we took off through at the beginning of the flight? I didn't think so. Clear as a panic button to get you back to the map. That's kind of cool. It is kind of cool. Alright, now, anyway. Here's the idiot button. I don't want to click engage autopilot yet. Okay, I think I want an altitude hold mode on. Let's say like 7,500 feet. 
reference. Hold Barrow Display Unit. Oh god. Going off course again, aren't I? Okay, if I turn on autopilot, I'm terrified of what it's gonna do. Because usually it does something really bad at first. You normally don't turn on the autopilot, like, and leave it at that. You configure it in the other planes, then turn it on. So I'm gonna push it and just prepare for the worst. How are we doing? Look, looks actually okay? Maybe? Did anything happen? We got roll. Turn on heading mode. How do I change my heading? Like, on the dial. Because it's trying to maybe go north. Nav mode, I feel like, is just going to beeline me back to the, the purple line instead of taking, like, a intercept course, which is what I'm trying to do right now. What's my current um, altitude? Less than... It's, like, 9,800. So what I'll probably do is just... Dude, it automatically trimmed me, like, so hard to the left. Ridiculous. Okay, let's just up this to like 9,000 feet. So, um, we got an alert. I set it to 9,000. I'm curious what it'll do, if anything. This is fun to just experiment with, though. We're heading the right way, believe it or not. Maybe a little too far north, actually. I'm not going to arm nav mode yet. Arm back course approach mode. I don't think that's a thing we want. Toggle barrow display unit. Let's try heading again. How do I change the heading? Because heading really just wants me to go north. Speed is increasing. I assume we're descending to 9,000 feet. The orange knob next to the compass will select heading. Oh, okay, so it's a physical... I gotcha. It's like a... it's over here. That... I was wondering what that was for at the beginning, so it tries to match what you set here. That's really cool. Alright, we're good. This is a nice heading. That is neat. So let's maintain that. That should also stop us from rolling. <laughs> Which is good news. And then, uh, anything else that I need to do? It looks like we are basically holding 9,000 feet-ish. Like 9,100. We might need to change the barometer. I mean, the altimeter. Uh, speaking of barometer, there's a button specifically for... Hold to display the unit. Twenty nine thousand in HG. All right, what do we got on throttle control? Let's throttle up, get some speed, try to make some lost time, and um, maybe adjust fuel mix and see if we can do anything with that. Right in there looks good. 
which ended up being about 46%. Whoo, okay. <laughs> oh. Interesting start. We've we'll probably got to count that as an error for the next flight, so uh, fantastic. We've been airborne for like 45 minutes and we've spent about uh, 30 minutes just going off course. And uh, that extra fuel is gonna come in handy. So the error means we have to spin the wheel of disaster after this flight and see what happens as a result of it. Okay, so we're actually gaining some speed back up to about 90 knots uh, indicated airspeed. So true airspeed is likely much faster than this, considering we're about 9,000 feet up. We could uh, go a little lower to the ground, but we might have to adjust the uh, altitude for this climb. So let's play with the map a little bit and see if we can zoom out. That would have been helpful at the beginning, yeah? There's my GPS course. So yeah, we are, we are flying parallel to the GPS. So technically, this is where we started. So it's not like we went like the worst possible direction. You know what? <laughs> it's not like we went west. And at least we went east. So it could have been worse. That's all I'm saying. All right, let's try and turn the volume down on our chirping friend. Which, uh, there should be, like, a volume... Increase radio lighting brightness, and we have a floodlight for night flights. Cabin air. Uh, I assume, like, maybe 50%. Is that cool air? Get the AC on. All right, the radio should be right here at the top, but the volume, audio panel volume. That may or may not be him, I don't know. It seems like it never stops going up or down. Okay. Whew. Let's just take a deep breath. <laughs> take it all in stride, chat. Take it all in stride. It's been like six days since the last flight. There was bound to be some kind of screw up, let's be honest. Uh, Ashram, we're not taking a direct route. We're taking a route with two different waypoints in it before we get to our airport. So a direct path is not what we're seeking at the moment. All right, let's find out where we are on the map. Let's find out where we're, where we are, where we're going. So we started over here in Tucson, Arizona. And uh, we headed southeast. <laughs> the original range, this we, we, I think we crested Mount Lemon. The highest point in the Santa Catalina Mountains located in the Coronado National Forest north of Tucson. Peak elevation is 9,157 feet. Yeah, that sounds about right. Gets about 57 inches of snow annually. It's named after botanist Sarah Plummer Lemon, who trekked up to the top of the mountain with Native American guides by mule and foot in 1881. Long time ago. So that's what we passed at the very beginning of this flight. And uh, we got to see the Ski Valley. Okay, so it snows up there, and it's like a nice little resort. So I, that, that's the valley that we, we went through as we took off. Remember, we crested that mountain. That was beautiful approach right there. Will this game have snow in winter? I believe so, yeah. And I think we kept going south and east and went over Micah Mountain. And Rincon Peak 
8,400 feet. Either that, or maybe we went this way. I don't really know how far southeast we went. However, we should be going north and east right now. There's one easy way to find this. If we look at our map, we'll see that we're right next to... Is that P-33? Yeah, P-33. So we could probably find... P-33. And bam. There we are. Right next to Wilcox. A city in Cochise? Cochise? The city is located in the Sulphur Spring Valley, a flat and sparsely populated drainage basin dotted with seasonal lakes. The city is surrounded by Arizona's most prominent mountain ranges, including the Pinalino Mountains and the Chiricahua Mountains. Yeah, I can see the most prominent mountain ranges uh, <laughs> very, very up close and personal. And there are... Ooh, look at those! Hang on. Wrong button. There we go. Those are the... the farms with the rotating arms that water in a big circle. They got some good scans. Wow. There's so many of them. I guess they figure that it's so much easier for the automated arm. They don't care about wasting space by not making it a square. Because there's just so much room out here. This must all be fairly fertile just because of the lake right over there. And also all the mountains. Okay, think about it like this, right? All the mountains surround this valley. Therefore, when it snows in these mountains to the point where they even have ski resorts and stuff, the water drains down the mountain into the valley and probably helps keep this earth and soil consistently good, one would think. You know what I mean? The earth. All right. I'm going to get annoyed if this guy keeps on... He, he's not... He's Chat, somebody look up American 2352. They're getting yelled at. 2352. I'm glad we figured out the autopilot. That's going to make this flight <laughs> much easier now. <laughs> I'll probably take manual control for a minute once we get back. Or I'll just try and figure out how to hook it up to the course. That'll be its own thing. But you can go down a little bit more. There we go. What? What camera angle is that first one? They have a lot of... Someone really liked this plane. <laughs> There's a lot of camera angles. Like, this is a specific camera that they wanted. This is a pretty common one that you see. This is under wing is a pretty common one. This one's not. But I like that the sun is actually... Uh, behind. It's only the most common plane in the world. Well, excuse me. <laughs> Does that explain why they made a 17-page checklist only for this plane in the entire game? Which, by the way, we didn't even look at. I can't set the pilot and passenger seat backs, unfortunately. Autopilot engage. On the run-up? You can turn the autopilot on on the run-up. Flight controls move against autopilot, then turn autopilot off. Throttle to 1800. I don't even know what Magneto's instructions mean.
What am I supposed to do with these? Look at that trim going. I know! Look at the trim! Hello, Super Pog. We are early today, yes. And somehow still wasted time, but it's okay. Chat, I don't waste a second as long as I am streaming with you. That American Airlines flight's ahead of schedule. Really. It's the run-up italics is designed to make sure everything is working before you go in the air and crash. That didn't answer... That's not even what I asked. <laughs> I asked about Magneto's highlighting the key, left both and start, and one of them is 150 RPM max decrease, max difference. These words mean nothing to me. That part is basically turning off one of the redundant ignition systems at a time, making sure they work on their own. Ah. Uh, Magneto's like spark plugs. Okay. I, I don't know how to set these, but... Maybe if we experiment more with the one... This is only my first time flying the 172 ever. So, there's apparently a higher ceiling on this than some of the other ones. There we go. Vacuum gauge. Oil pressure. I know we're oil pressure. Oil pressure is good. Oil temp is good. Ammeter, ammeter, that's the amps, enunciator panel should be clear, this is the enunciator panel, just tells you when something's going wrong, how we're flying, switch nav mode, this was what we were supposed to do before takeoff, this is the only plane that I know of that has a before takeoff checklist, and you can't even do the first three. Transponder on alt. We did that. Autopilot off. Elevator trim set for takeoff. How do you know what the trim should be? Just up? Just trim up before you even fly? That sounds scary. Flaps 0 to 10. Ah, it even... This is also the only plane that tells you exactly what degree the flap should be at. 0 to 10. I think I had it on 20. Cabin windows <laughs> closed and locked. Nobody opens the window for a breeze. Take off, also 0 to 10. Throttle full. Mixture rich, we did all that. Good, good, good. Airspeed indicator was working. Lift nose wheel 55 KIAS. 55 KIAS. So you should... Okay, so you actually don't pull back to take off until you hit 55 um, knots indicated airspeed. And your climb should be 70 to 80. So you don't want to be too steep. You want to keep and maintain 70 minimum. Got it. Flaps above 300 feet. Easy. I think we did that as well. Yeah, I did flaps fine. Okay, so they want you to maintain 70 to 85 knots indicated airspeed, which is just here. Throttle full while you're climbing. Mixture rich while you're climbing. Okay, good to know. Check your engine gauges. Taxi and landing lights off above 1,000 feet. Good idea. And then mixture lean above 3,000. <sighs> I'm allergic to lean mixture above 3,000 feet, apparently. Okay, and while you're cruising, power should be 75% max, which is close. Uh, we're at 85%. Just try and gain some lost time. So we'll go 80%. Sneeze in-game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lean for altitude, so just keep checking it. Uh, engine gauges should also be checked, of course, which we have been. Fuel, we're already almost to half, which is a little worrisome. <laughs> Flight instruments also should be checked. And then descent, we'll just keep this page for when the time comes. Okay, cool. I like to see that it has that much detail. It's really neat. Is there a piss bucket in the cockpit? Yeah, you just go wherever you want. If you're the only one here and it's your plane, you, just whatever you need to do. Or you could open a window. Generic 
Flight Sim now includes random pilot medical crisis available in the disasters menu. Is it me sneezing while in the plane and accidentally bumping the... the yoke? Possibly. <laughs> well, we are over a stretch now, dude. Those those early mountains was certainly a nice way to kick... Ooh, we still got some behind us and to the left. We should probably go ahead and check our route and see if we've uh, intersected with it yet. I don't think we have. We're still flying mostly parallel, but we are on an intercept course, and then we'll get back on the actual GPS route. So... No rush there. This is a pretty lengthy flight. We're going to be here for a while, but then uh, planning on three flights today. One of them is going to be a night flight, but that's all right. Uh, I think we'll have plenty of time for it because we started so early. So it should be two daytime flights. Let me see. What time is it right now? Local? Should be central time. Even Yeah, as we move through Arizona to New Mexico. And part of Arizona is central and part of it is Pacific. We should be in the central part now. So it should be 537, and uh, we're going to be going into Texas after that, which is also central. So we should have at least another three hours of daylight, and then maybe, you know, a 30-minute, 45-minute window after that of just sky glow after that. Yeah, sorry, mountain time. I said central, mountain time, the, the forgotten time zone. It barely exists. Nobody even knows. Okay. <laughs> I do have this on Game Pass. Time to have a closer look at it. This sounds like a lovely thing uh, while listening to audiobooks. Ashram, it's extremely fun. Because you can go as deep into it as you want. I would recommend playing at least with a controller and keyboard. And you'll find that it's harder than you think it will be with a, with a controller. Uh, but just stick with it, turn your sensitivity way down, tweak those settings, and you'll have a lot more fun with it that way. Crank that sensitivity way down. But you can just turn off all damage, turn off the entire simulation aspect. You can spawn on the runway and just take off and go look at the sights in the world. There's a bunch of like exclamation points on the map that are just places of interest that are a little bit more detailed than the rest, and the ones that are starred are even more detailed than that. But it is very resource intensive, FYI. So beware if your computer is a little bit outdated or doesn't have reasonable specs. It is very hungry, hungry, hungry for power. If you use just keyboard, you'll want to cry. Some people do it, and you guys are brave, very brave. Uh, what was your question, Ethan? Do you know if Flight Simulator takes the same amount of time to fly places? For us, yes. So we are flying, um, for those of you who are new to this game, I guess I should have talked about this at the beginning, but may as well do it now while we're on our first flight. In Microsoft Flight Sim, we are flying real-time, real places uh, across the world with real weather. So it is just clear skies in Arizona right now. As far as the eye can see, we can, like, duck down and look out the window here, too. This is one-to-one -one scale Earth. This is uh, Microsoft using Bing Map technology. Nobody saw that coming. So all the topography across the world is scanned in with Bing satellites. Some of it is going to be more and less detailed. You can probably see when we took off that there was some weird anomaly earth pieces next to the airport so some of it is going to be lower quality than others but uh some of it is going to be much higher quality as well because of where they're able to kind of get the scans so your mileage will vary depending on where you go i have heard that southwest united states where we are right now is among the lower quality ones but if you go to like some of the big cities like uh microsoft's based out of uh, where, where's a Zobo based out of? But if you go to Seattle, we went to Seattle before, and it was just immaculate. Like, it was super highly detailed. I'm sure, like, New York City and some of those major cities are just perfect. So some of them are going to be better or worse. Some of them are going to be very plain. Some of them are going to be very detailed. But it is one-to-one -one scale the entire world. So you got to have a little bit 
of expectation of a margin for error, right? <laughs> it's literally the whole world. Um, you can change time of day if you want. You can change the weather if you want. We're choosing to do this entire flight. We're doing a real-time flight around the world. Um, every one of our flights is going to be airport to airport, A to B. So where we are going to land in Roswell, we are going to take off from on our next flight and continue on to Texas and continue our lengthy, this is going to be like potentially months long trip around the world. This flight is supposed to be about two and a half hours. It's probably going to end up being about three hours because of our detour at the beginning. Maybe just slightly longer than that. And we're going to learn about some different areas in the world. I've got some big plans for some future streams. This is going to be a fairly normal one, but even that is potential to spiral out of control with the disaster wheel and stuff like that. <laughs> Dude, we're going to Roswell. We are going to Roswell. People actually fly for eight hours? They can, but to answer the person's question, uh, if you want to, you can skip through the flight. I would recommend making saves at certain points, like I guess uh, let's make a save once we get to the first waypoint. That would probably be a good time to do it. But you can go to this travel to option and you can choose what part of the flight you want. So like, let's say you wanted to go um, to Europe. You wanted to take like an Atlantic flight across the ocean from East Coast, America. You can do the takeoff, you can do the ascent, maybe once you hit cruising altitude, you just want to skip to the approach on the other end, you can just click and fast forward your flight. So you can skip all the like in-between parts. Or you can reload and just keep trying a certain final and see if you can practice landing. You can turn damage on, damage off, and uh, simulate as much or as little as you want in the actual plane. How long would you say it takes to learn how to fly completely alone to be able to use all the controls of the actual airplane? Well, you need to do actual training for that. I am not a pilot, <laughs> and this is my first flight simulator game. So there are some actual people who are doing classes and stuff, uh, IRL, and they might be able to tell you how many hours it takes before you're allowed to do solo flights, but I have no idea. I'm not even a pilot. People leave. A pilot. A, uh, by the way, it's just my first time flying uh, without my instructor. Thank you, guys. Why do you have seatbelts and I don't? We only care about chat's safety and protection, apparently. All right, we are almost back lined up. We are passing KSAT, so why don't we check out? where KSAT is. We were in Wilcox going northeast. We got Bowie International Airport in Bowie. We might be f further towards Lordsburg. There's a municipal airport here showing off flex in a helicopter. And then we got a different Lordsburg airport. What, what did I say it was? Did they say KSAT? Yeah, I said KSAT. So we're a little further north than I thought. Cactus Flat! This is Safford Regional Airport. Uh, there's a lot of kind of overlapping cities here, interestingly. Okay, Chad, I'm going to drive home from work. All right, don't... Listen, remember to throttle up Ace Tech and uh, get engine... Uh, fuel mix rich for the takeoff and check your flaps as well 10 degrees for takeoff Using Google Earth instead of Bing Maps that's because I can plan my whole route and indeed we have But also it's kind of nice because you get a different perspective on like hey is this supposed to look like this? Well, we can compare notes. All right, so we're passing uh, Solomon right now which has literally no information. We've got, <laughs> let's see, an elementary school is the only thing of note in this entire town. It's one church, a mobile home park, 
Uh oh, did I find a Circle K? <laughs> You're a one stop shop for food uh, near Safford. We got a movie theater. Oh, it's not a movie theater, it's like a play theater. We've got, um, it looks like a Christmas play going on at Victory Fellowship Theater. That's probably just a church. There's a lot of churches here. Might be the. Okay, you could go get your teeth pulled. I'm looking for a restaurant. I want to read some Yelp reviews already. I'm in the mood. The library? What is this? It is... It's actually a pretty cute little library right there. Okay. Uh, food, though. No food in the whole town, I guess. Or at least Google Maps doesn't know about it. You, oh, uh, yeah. Do you see a fork and knife anywhere? Not even one. Why is this like a... Oh, it's an animal because it's a vet hospital. <laughs> that looks like a ranch. <laughs> we got some baseball fields, like a little track. All right. Well, I don't see any food chat. I'm sorry. But we can look at it in the game too and see if we can see anything. I don't see anything. We might not be exactly over it. That looks like the road. Did it get deleted off the map? Or are we not where I think I am? Maybe it's just further away. Like directly left out the window somewhere. You think that's it right there? It's hard to tell. Hello, cutie, cutie, cutie. How's it going? Hi, Tox, are you crashing? Elizabeth, is this a European friendly stream that you're here for? Welcome. Good evening. Am I a pilot in real life? Uh... If you count all the times that uh, I have ended my stream in a tailspin, then yes. This looks a little bit settled dead ahead. It's probably about time to go ahead and correct. For the GPS. Very unfriendly. It's 1 a.m. Well, it's not my fault you weren't here for the last two hours. It was here. Where were you? I'm punching the roof <laughs> of the plane with pump it. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> But yeah, thank you also, Puxley, uh, earlier for the nine months of sub, who's bemoaning the lack of YouTube videos. Deal with it. Kind of miss the YouTube days. If you say kind of miss the YouTube days, that's like saying kind of miss um, the last time that I had a Del Taco. You know, nobody says that. Del Taco is a moment of opportunity. You get it because no one else is in line and it's open. You don't think back nostalgically on your last order. This plane cabin seems cozy. It is pretty cozy. This plane is really nice because it is that just step up from the 152. Alright, it's time to learn about autopilot again. That's the big step up is that this plane actually has autopilot. Okay, so if we arm nav mode instead of heading mode it's probably going to take us in a direct line to try to get perfectly lined up with our GPS because I set it to GPS first, correct? yep, you can tell because it says GPS right there and that pink is actually our GPS line. We're heading northeast. 
in order to connect with it, and then we're going to even it out. We could change altitude if we wanted to get a little bit lower to the ground. The mountains over here don't seem that crazy. I don't know what that is, but it looks weird. Hi, friends. What's up? Welcome, my buddy, who's just jumping in. And you fly a Cessna 152. We did that last time. So if you want to see the 152, <laughs> it was a little bit of a struggle. That's in the, the previous Around the World. That was our second plane. So we're, we're initially at least kind of doing a little bit of a, a tier stepping stone. If you'll notice, by the way, Coffee Nat is back. I just saw it out of the corner of my eye. I don't understand. I don't have any trash in my room. There's, there's no food or other beverages in my office. There's just a Coffee Nat that exists sometimes and follows me up into my office. It spawns from the coffee. That's the only explanation, Kyra Toby, because you guys don't understand. You've heard me complain about this like three or four times. You might reasonably conclude, do you just have gnats normally in the house? No, I don't see them anywhere else. Off stream, never. They don't exist. It's only when I'm on stream drinking a coffee. You have a potted plant? I don't, know. And I don't see them anywhere else in the entire house. Not in the, um... Not in the kitchen at all. Or near the coffee maker, for that matter. Okay, so kind of a big turn there. As it lines up... Dude, autopilot so nice. Oh, yeah. We'll, we'll take it and fly manual once we get to a couple of away points. So we're actually gonna hit... I think it's on the screen. Is it on the screen right now? No, that's just dirt. <laughs> Uh, we got two manual waypoints that we're going to hit, so why don't we take a look at those on the map. So let's just zoom out and get a nice view. Because we're actually getting close to the border of Arizona, New Mexico. So we'll be welcoming you all in uh, very shortly. I believe the first thing that we're going to see, because it's funny, is one of these airports. Is that called Happy Mountain Airport? Dude, Happy Plane would be right at home there. Whiskey Creek, there's a lot of airports. There's an aero park as well, or an air park. Is there a lot of just like for fun aviation down here? Because this is an excessive amount of airports. But anyway, we're going to, uh, do this valley looks really cool. So from Albuquerque, we're not going to be going to Albuquerque. We're going to Roswell. Uh, we're going to be crossing over Gila National Forest. Ish. Maybe not exactly. Depending on how far to the east we're going. We're, we're first going to Truth or Consequences. Oh, well, literally in this valley. This is going to be neat. All right, I want to learn about why this place is called <laughs> Truth or Consequences. But check this out. This is going to be really cool. Elephant Butt. That's a real city, dude. Elephant Butt is a city in Sierra County, New Mexico, United States, near Elephant Butt Reservoir and State Park. The population was 1,431. Hell yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's where I live. <laughs> it's not pronounced but. It is when you're on my stream. Uh, you can't just write that and get away with it. Truth or consequences is what uh, we're going to be flying over. And it's right there next to Elephant Butt Lake and Reservoir. Horse Island. Rattlesnake Island are all here as well. This is a butt as far as as far as we're going to be flying. There's elephant butt itself. <laughs> That's perfect. I didn't even when I said I'm going to truth or consequences, I didn't even know that was there. So, that's just a that's just a happy accident as far as we're concerned. So if we take a look, it should be one of the waypoints. Let's get a nice... Uh, that 
that one's... Yeah, these are good. Okay. Let's take a look at the map. Kind of get an idea of how far we might be away from that. We're actually getting pretty close. We're at about the halfway point to Truth or Consequences. You can tell. TCS, Truth, Consequences. And then we're going to be basically just a short trip to White Sands and the Air Force Base that is around it. And then we're going to be landing in beautiful... You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. <laughs> very quiet. Or the plane's very loud. <laughs> I don't know which. But uh, we're going to be landing in Alien Town. Let me, I got to fix a couple things off screen real quick. Don't mind me. And then I'll be with you again momentarily. Okay. I think that should be good. Where were we? But you already have a chat full of aliens. Indeed, Jason. You're going around the world. Stop saying elephant butt. Why, Elizabeth? What will you do? Creative with names I see, a region with character. It is. Just draw cats. <laughs> it is. New... You're you going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. You kind of have to get creative with the names because you live in New Mexico. You know? If you don't get creative with the names, then what do you have left? What are these? There's some, like, low-hanging clouds right over here. Is there an active volcano in New Mexico? <laughs> when do I get my elephant butt complimented tour cookie? Well, what we're going to do now is learn about the place that we're flying into, because I actually am just genuinely curious on why this is called Truth or Consequences. Make sure ATC hasn't been getting annoyed with me. They have not. We can close this checklist as well. New Mexico, ironically, is not a creative name at all. The question you have to ask is... How did America get away with... Uh, going to war to basically take Texas and keep Texas and then was like, you know what? As a consolation, Mexico, I guess we'll name like this area, not Texas though, but this one over here to the left, I guess New Mexico. Yeah, just to rub it in a little bit more. Seems kind of mean. Like, was it, was New Mexico not just Mexico and then America was like, you know what? Now it's New Mexico, bitch, because it's mine. The Spanish named New Mexico years before. Okay. Mexico 2. <laughs> I kind of hate that there was a New York, New York. It makes everyone assume that city is the only place in the state. Well, it is. I mean, New York, everyone knows New York City is just New York State. It's just the only city in the whole state. But uh, they just did it to confuse everybody, right? I mean, who even knows about... What, Buffalo? Come on. What, Buffalo's in Canada, right? Wait until you find out how many cities are named Washington in the <laughs> United States. I just got here and heard that Mexico part. <laughs> I'm malding so hard. We got some upstate New Yorkers? Alright, what did I say? Oh. First of all, I don't know. Something's going on over here because we were getting some frames. I think it was just loading in a new set. I want to find out about truth and consequences. New Mexico. Abbreviated as T or C. Wow. They just, no one, none of the locals want to write that out, so they just start abbreviating it T space or space C. It's frequently been noted on lists of unusual place names for having chosen to name itself after the Truth or Consequences radio show 
<laughs> from the 1940s. <laughs> Bunch of memers. Okay, let me see. History. The city changed its name to Truth or Consequences as a result of a radio show contest. In March 1950, Ralph Edwards, the host of the popular NBC radio quiz show Truth or Consequences, announced that he would air the program on its 10th anniversary from the first town that renamed itself after the show. Hot Springs officially changed its names on March 31st, 1950, and the program was broadcast from there the following evening. Edwards visited the town during the first weekend of May for the next 50 years. This event became known as Fiesta and eventually included a beauty contest, a parade, and a stage show. The city, city still celebrates Fiesta each year during the first weekend of May. The parade generally features area celebrities such as local dignitaries Miss Fiesta herself and Hatch Chili Queen. Fiesta also features a dance in Ralph Edwards Park. That's dedication to a meme. A radio show is like, we will come broadcast our show from your town if you rename it after my show. That's like, Chad, if I said, okay, everybody, uh, if you legally rename yourself to Italics, I will come to a stream from your house. That's basically what happened. And then Edwards was just like, you know what? You guys are so dedicated that uh, I'm just going to keep coming back and visiting for the next 50 years. <laughs> Fog worth time. Chat's already done it. <laughs> My real name is already Italics. <laughs> uh, that's just, that's meme dedication right there. They didn't even know it was a meme in the 1950s. Alright, I need to find out more about the Hatch Chili Queen. Hatch Chili Queen. Um, truth or consequences? Let's find out. Hatch, New Mexico, chili capital of the world. Between Las Cruces and truth or consequences. I, so I assume this is related, but a different place. I'm talking about Chili Queen. I'm just trying to research it first. Alright, I'm going to give you guys a reference. So you guys can actually see uh, what I see. It's coming up. Just hang on. Okay, here you go. There we go. So, New Mexico, Hatch, New Mexico, chili capital of the world. A land rich in culture of generations building on the promise of tomorrow. Welcome to the Hatch Chili Festival website. They have a raffle for $1,000. They have a Facebook page. They have beanbag toss, um, corn, oh, sorry, cornhole toss, team tournament. $40 a team to throw those. Cash prizes for first, second, and third place. Hatch history, born from an extension of the Santa Fe Railroad Company. Uh, this began as an adobe post office and railroad flag station named after General Edward Hatch town grew until a flood in 1921 destroyed many of the adobe buildings. The village rebuilt and continues to prosper as an agricultural community to this day. Wanted dead or alive? Volunteers for the festival. <laughs> Alright, where's the queen? All right, uh, Hatch Chili Queen. Currently, Perla Angel, 
is this year's Hatch Chili Queen, a title held last year by her cousin, Destiny Angel. Don't screw with anybody named Destiny Angel, okay? They're going to change your timeline in indecipherable ways. They will have some kind of butterfly effect on you. They know where it's going to lead, but you don't. If you ever meet anyone named Destiny Angel, that's, that's the warning. Hang on, I can't find a page that doesn't have, like, 17 ads, so... You're just gonna have to take my word for it. Um... There's not even a Wikipedia for this. Hang on, we, we might have something from 2011. We might have something here. I just have to, have to play an ad first. One sec. <laughs> here we go. cools down, the village of Hatch heats up, and this weekend is the world-famous Hatch Chili Festival. Yes, and what's a festival without a queen? We are so happy to welcome Samindha Alvarez Garay, the 2011 Hatch Valley Chili Queen, and Maria Gomez, Hatch Valley Chili Princess. And you certainly look like a queen and a princess. Mm -hmm. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Is it a beauty so pageant, nice to have queen? You beautiful women here today. Thank you. It's look, our at, look at to all have... these chilies. What is this? What's the log of chilies? You, and, you know, the Hatch Chili Festival is a really big deal. So let me ask you, what is the historical significance of the festival? <laughs> well, throughout the years... That's three likes. 40 years ago, the Chili Festival started, and this is going to be a big celebration because it's a centennial <laughs> event and a 40th annual Chili Festival. So we're going to have lots of lots of exciting chili things festival. going on. So I just wanted to personally invite everyone who's watching to come to the Chili Festival this weekend and have a good time. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a historical event, but it's also a fun event. Mm -hmm. I'm 25% of the likes. It's going to be really fun. It's have a lot of surprises in the festival as it's long as the It's a five-minute video. And then we're hoping to everyone to come if you can go. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Now, Maria, Hatch is the chili capital of the world. I mean, when you think about chili, you think... <laughs> okay. Hatch is the chili... How many times do you think people from Hatch are like, Hey, uh, I'm from Hatch. Oh, Hatch, where's that? It's the chili capital of the world. It's kind of our thing. Think about hatch chili. Mm -hmm. What makes it the best? The best? Yes. Well, it's spiciness, of it's course. Like, it's a very unique <laughs> chili, and it's delicious and food. <laughs> well, what are your family ties to hatch? Each of you. Okay, well... My grandfather was a hatch chili. Personally, me. My family's been here since the 1800s, wow. doing all farming and that kind of thing. So, you know, even before New Mexico was a state, we've been farming and just going on. It must give yeah. you so much pride to be yeah. the queen of... Okay, but like, how do you stretch a five-minute interview on a hatch chili? The festival, knowing your family has such a, a background for so many years. It's incredible. I love to hear that. Has this been something that you've been thinking about since you were... Oh, yeah, of course. Just a little one. You always see the just queens and like, oh, one. I want to be that one day. What are you thinking about this since you were just a little it. one? You did it. And look at those crowns. My yeah, gosh, they're gorgeous. blinging everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> now, what role will you guys play in, in, in the chili festival? Well, we'll be there all day long. We'll be um, giving out awards, running the contest. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, okay, so as many as 30,000 visitors actually converge on the village of Hatch during the festival. So can you tell us a little bit about the schedule? 30,000 people? There's so much going on. Mm -hmm. Tell us a little Do bit I about need the to schedule go? of the event. The schedule will be going like to start chilies. with parade at 10 okay. a.m. And then from there, everything's going to start. But you can go to the Look how Hatch many Valley people there are. There, you can see there all the schedule that's going on. They've got a okay. fair and everything. Schedule. Now we're looking at some video, of course, from I guess this was last, last year's. Year. And there's so many things. You said there's Those so much going on. You said there may be even some surprises this year. Yes. Yeah. yes, you definitely have to go. To no see. hints? You can't give anything away, huh? It's going to happen at the parade. We've been working on it all summer. Yes. So okay. sure to come out oh. to that. We're gonna chili have roasted, SpongeBob Pepsi. Oh, no. Nice. Uh, get your Pepsi chili go. flavor here. We'll have about 20, right? So far, 20 we have queens. 20. Yes. Wow. Oh, how wow, nice. I guess so everybody keep your cameras handy because you'll want to take a lot of photos. And I see everything Music. from mariachi to. Dude, it's roller coaster chili tycoon to too. Rounds. I mean, there's kind of a little this, something for everyone, huh? That's the hyper What about chili sampling? Oh, yeah. 
They have, they sell <laughs> lots of chili there. We're gonna have a taste demonstration as well. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. nice. And then, and then I obviously a lot of music as well. We're going to be seeing different, different performances throughout the day. Yes, there's gonna be the Delks band, the lots of lots of country music. Mm -hmm. Nice. And the mariachis as well. Oh, Lots so of country music. Now, are you guys going to be sampling any chili? And, and I have uh -huh. to ask, what's your favorite, red or green? Which, yep. one, which one do you guys get? Yeah. Lots of country Both music. Are great. They're good on different dishes that you can get at the Hatch Festival. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And actually, this year, Mr. Jimmy Lytle has come up with a whole new variety of chili, and it's called the Big Jim Legacy. And it's huge. It's <laughs> Saturday mm -hmm. at the Chili Festival. It's going to be measured in the Guinness Book of World Records. Oh, that's so, exciting. Mm -hmm. Wait, sure what are they measuring in oh Guinness? Gosh, I love in it. 2011? So, so basically, you like both, just but. depending on what you eat it on. Exactly. Yes. Well, both you both? both? Miss, me, yeah. I like the green for enchiladas and the red for the manure. <laughs> oh, okay. I like it. Okay. Imagine being like the Hatch Valley Chili Queen, and you, you, you have to like take a bite out of a chili in order to take your crown, and you just spit it out everywhere on stage as a, revealing yourself as a okay. frog. I like red on carne arvada, and I like, I like the green on mm -hmm. pretty much everything else. I, I kind of it depends on I the like sauce. Green. You have yeah, to I like chili green, to be the I'm Hatch to Chili really, Queen. Uh, to, to get mm -hmm. good at eating the hotter foods. I'm, I'm not as, in the beginning, when I first mm -hmm. moved here, it was a little too hot, now not so much. Are See, that's what I mean. If you move to Hatch and you say you don't like chilies, you have to like, that's what she just said. She's like, eh, I didn't really like the spicy when I moved here, but because of the peer pressure, given the nature of where I live and who I know, I yeah, have to. Good. Otherwise, like, I'm cast out. Oh, yeah. you handle hot sauce? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm a very good cooker. So, yeah, we were talking about that earlier with the mom giving her kid yes, hot sauce. Yes. That wouldn't have any effect. No on way. Right. Well, maybe, we ask for it. <laughs> maybe we'll have to have you cook. You said you're a really good cook, huh? Yes. You'll have to come back and cook yeah. for us one day. We like to have a nice princess in the kitchen. Most then nobody will call us princesses in the kitchen. We'll have a real one. I love it. Let's give our viewers all the information they need to know about Hatch Chili Festival. Of course, all the events going on September 3rd and 4th, and if you go to HatchChiliFest.com. There you go. There you go. <laughs> what is that ad? Sorry, did you mean the Party City uh, costume with, like, the, the chili JPEG copy pasta behind it? Bennett's Carnival Food and Craft Vendors, Chili Capital Artist Fine Art Show. Dude, I'd buy a car of chilies. Oh, look at that cloud! All right, where are we? Hold on, let's let's find out where we are. All right, we're coming. We're actually coming up on exactly where we were just talking about. Truth and consequences, and beyond that, apparently, is Hatch, New Mexico. Let's check uh, fuel gauge. Looks good, just under half. Should be plenty in the tank. We only started with 70%, so we're at like 45% or so right now. Ooh, getting a little bit. I, I want to see some more clouds, dude. Southwest has been just blank slate on the last flight. I like this uh, terrain, though. be pretty funny if these mountains were way taller than us and we were at 9,000 feet right now and I just tab back in after that ad directly into a mountain. I'm going there right now to get some hatch chilies. Thank you so much for the local spicy flavor, Ital. Hello, Kieran Kylo. I'm just glad that we are definitely going the right way now. <laughs> some interesting formations there. Looks like some low-hanging fog and then a gap. Going basically due east at the moment. There's the sun starting to get a little bit low in the sky. But we still got some daylight. If we're going to be in mountain time, then it's only 5.15. So we should have at least a few hours of sunlight left. Might do some uh, manual flight once we get over Truth of Consequences and go deeper and look around. I need to fix my, uh, my tiara.
smuggle some chilies. Go scoop some up on the way down. Really cool area, though, overall. Etal is the hatch <laughs> princess this year. Hang on, I, I'm starting to feel like I might be in the contention for hatch valley chili queen the entire time. Very true. Dice Man, thank you for your prime sub, by the way, a few minutes ago. And the G-Man as well for 28 months. Hello to both of you. Hope you're having a good day in uh, Hatchland. Three interesting places back-to-back. -back. Hatch Va Let's find out where Hatch actually is for real. Okay, so here's truth or consequences. We are like... Somewhere in here. On the way. <laughs> it's me own airport! Oh yes. I do love flying out of me own airport. So nice to name it after myself. <laughs> I can't believe these are real. <laughs> this is the, I love this area of the world. New Mexico is a very interesting place because of all this. Okay, let's find out where Hatch is. Okay, so it's southeast of, or just south of Truth or Consequences. So we're not going to get to see Hatch, but we'll be able to look out the window and know that it exists down here. We're going to hit um, Truth or Consequences proper. We might see it because there's White Sands and there's Holloman Air Force Base, and then we just pop on over to Roswell. So, once we get to this, we're just going to go mium, mium. Now we have to see Hatch, just to say that we flew over it. So, bam, 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 and then land in Roswell. So, still, it's not as quick as I just made it sound, but once we hit uh, that valley... I'm curious what the river is called there. Let's see if we can find out real quick. Because I know this is Elephant Butt. But, like, what is this little reservoir? Yep, it's just Elephant Butte. Elephant Butte Reservoir. And that leads from... Well, like, what is, what is this? What is this river? Google Maps can't keep up, dude. It doesn't, he, it doesn't know. San, wait a second, this is San Antonio, New Mexico? Oh, that's confusing. Okay. San Antonio, New Mexico. With the Buckhorn Tavern. Buckhorn Tavern, number seven in America. <laughs> that's a top ten uh, chili cheeseburger establishment. <laughs> Okay, now I want to know more about Buckhorn Tavern, dude. <laughs> I still have no idea what this body of water is. I didn't learn anything. It doesn't say. I'm not getting a single name. Chat, what's the, this is a huge river. That goes all the way up to Albuquerque. Why is it not labeled anywhere? Wait a second. This is the Rio Grande, isn't it? Yeah, I should have looked south. Because this is the Texas Trace outline. Okay, I, w I went north instead of south. I didn't realize the Rio Grande went north of Albuquerque, though. But yeah, the Rio Grande traces the Texas border. Okay, well that, that makes a lot more sense. I just didn't realize it went so far north. Really cool. Good. See, I learned something just now. All right, what was I going to do when I tap back in? Oh, I was going to look up, uh, what was it called? The Buckhorn? Buckhorn. 
Buckhorn number seven. I think that's what it was called. Hang on, let me get you guys to like a good camera angle. Buckhorn, San Antonio, New Mexico. They have a website. They have their own... Actually, it looks pretty good. At least on the pictures. Hold on. All right. This bet, I'm just checking. I have to scan the page first. I just have to scan the page. It ain't number seven in America for nothing. All right, here we go. Welcome to the Buckhorn Tavern, established in 1943. Tavern serves a full menu throughout the afternoon and evening. No reservations. Just stop in. Look at this. We got the meat, the balls, getting ready for you guys. We got a bowl of beans. And chili, of course. Chili beans. Uh, we got some onion rings with chilies on them. We got some classic uh, Texas toast BLTs. Maybe a burger under there somewhere, under that mountain of lettuce. <laughs> um... All beef Nathan's hot dogs. Are you serious? You don't make your own. You, you just get Nathan's from the store. You go to Walmart in the wiener aisle and you just grab Nathan's off the shelf and then sell them. Those are just de <laughs> default hot dogs. I buy those. I don't cook them on the grill, I guess. This is actually a, uh, I know you can't see. Let me, let me move. Oh, well, Etel Air will not BRB, actually. Etel Air is right here. But there's, uh, some COVID masks. So this is actually current. All right, let's read some reviews. I need a review for Buckhorn Tavern. Let's go to Yelp. Yelp has a 3.5 out of 5. Pretty average, pretty normal. Let's see. Gotta find the first one star review. Hard to find a one star review, that might be a good sign. All right, this is a, this is a book. <laughs> this, is a, this is a, somebody wrote a book here, hold on. Wow, we're missing some beautiful scenery. Okay, hang on. You're not, but I am. That looks like some snow down there. No, we just we just got into it. Okay, we're not missing anything. It literally just started right back there. Look at this. Finally get into a little bit of cloud cover. I'm really curious about that. It's probably just a little fog formation, but it looks interesting. So chat, based on what this looks like to me, look how low that, that's like a 10,000, 11,000 foot cloud. Cause these, uh, these mountains are pretty tall. We might need to get a little bit more clearance. I like this one. I like that front camera view. That's a good one too. The under under the wing is always a wonderful sight. Let 
some little snow-capped peaks. I think I see, is that fog or something? What is that over there? Hang on. What is... Yeah, it's some fog. Let's take a look inside. Yeah, this is the mountain range right there. And then over that is truth or consequences. Or just somewhere thereabouts. So we do need to climb a little bit. So let's go ahead and program the autopilot. I don't know how you program its speed. And I believe I have to kick in um, one of these buttons in order to confirm. Vertical speed mode. How do I, like, change my vertical speed, though? Because I know I need to change my vertical speed in order to climb up and down buttons. Is that... you just made that up. That's altitude hold reference. Oh wait, you were right. So I can set 9500, then click up, but how do I change the actual, like, designated speed? Because right now it's kind of, like, slowing me down. Which I'll just power up to 100% for the climb. And I guess take over. If it becomes an issue. Because we're going a little slow. But I set it to 9500 and it kind of just blew past that. So that's vertical speed. Oh, there you go. All right, feet per minute, there's where you set it up. Okay, I got you. I see what you're saying. And then it goes back. So yeah, we're still climbing. And stalling. All right, we're gonna have to stop fighting each other. Ah! <laughs> we're good. Chat, we're good. All right, the trim was just maxed. As soon as I turned autopilot off, it just shot me up into the sky. We're good. We're fine. All right, bro. Why, when I turn autopilot off, isn't that a bug? That has to be a bug. It just resets every single trim to something that's just unbelievable. Like, I have to, I am holding trim left right now, which you never do. I'm holding it. I'm holding trim down. I'm just cruising left. I think it's actually a bug. Because it shouldn't just reset the whole trim to like, Super obnoxious levels. I don't even think I can trim left right now. Like, there is there is no trim. There is no left-right trim on 172s? Really? Because I was doing it. Maybe I tricked myself into thinking that I was doing it. Because I definitely got it, like, earlier, where I was just tapping it one way and it was going that way. There has to be left-right trim, though, Zarino, because how does autopilot work? It's not tilting me. You telling me it's just... rolling? In order to maintain the course with autopilot? That doesn't make any sense. Are we back yet? I was making dinner. No, you missed all the fun factoids about this area. She's the worst. Sky Vector says minimum safe altitude's 10,500. Yeah, we're currently on a climb. 
I'm doing it manually because we were having some trouble with speed. The game lets you use aileron trim on any plane even if they're not supposed to have it. Really, Ace Tech. Interesting. Well, that would explain. No, Potato Hater, I'm trying not to crash into a mountain right now. I don't have time for your Yelp review. <laughs> Peep arrive, <f> flaps. <laughs> Uh, it never gets old. Because <laughs> it's always somebody different. It's always a different chat member. My immersion is ruined by fake aileron trim. I don't know. There seems to be some disagreement in the chat right now. So, I don't know. Listen. I'm not the expert. I'm not making any claims. All I can tell you is, at the beginning of the flight, I definitely had left-right control. Now, it is forcing me to go right. I actually heard that somehow. Okay, we're going to tune Albuquerque and contact Albuquerque them. Do I know any air tricks? Yeah, it's called not crashing into a mountain as I gently kiss it as I fly over it at uh, 10,000 feet. Behold. Albuquerque, New Mexico. So goodbye, Arizona! You are long gone now, I know. You can tell because there's green. Remember when I said at the beginning, I was like, once we start crossing into the green mountains, that's basically how we're going to be 100% sure without even looking at a map that we're in New Mexico. Because this is probably, is this Gila National Forest or is that further on? I think this might be Gila National Forest. Unless it's further east on the map. Interesting clouds here. A little bit of uh, low visibility. And also some strong winds. Dude, the, even the up-down trim is just obnoxious right now after that autopilot cancellation. Where am I? Okay, there we go. We're not going to Albuquerque. We're just flying through the airspace right now. Roughly. Albuquerque is going to be out the left window once we pass the Rio Grande. And it's going to be way off. You probably won't even be able to see it. But we are coming up on truth or consequences right now. So let me try and get autopilot back online and engaged. First things first, though. Keep my eyes on this on the left while I mess with this on the right. Not having a co-pilot in this incident is uh, one of the issues. <laughs> Normally, you could pass control or they could handle this. So I'm going to hit autopilot. I got vertical speed indicator on. I think it's still climbing, though. And I'm trying to figure out how to f fix this up and down because it seems like clicking one or the other like 
doesn't really have the effect that I intend. I'm very confused by it. So I go, I click decrease vertical speed. If I want to do 500 vertical speed, that should be 500 feet per minute. And I want to go down to 9,000 altitude. From 10,000. So, unless I need to confirm something else, we should start descending, but I'm still going up. So what am I doing wrong? Why did we even turn autopilot off? Because there was a mountain. Okay, remember when you said, I think you're the same person to say, can we have a Yelp review? And I said, no, I have to go over this mountain first. I don't have time for your Yelp reviews. And then now you're asking, why did we turn autopilot off? Okay, so focus on me, focus on the word that I'm saying. And then you will understand the situation. Can we have it now, please? You? No, me. All right, we're just locked in at 10,000 feet. See, now it's at... There. I think I solved the riddle. Okay. So, I clicked altitude mode. Then it gave me an indicator to say how fast do I want to descend. Then negative 500. So we're, we're now descending 500 feet per second. I got it. I figured it out. And on top of that, we are on the correct path. So we actually want to go even lower than this because it looks like there's no mountains here in sight. Let's go down to 8,000. And then... Feet per minute, 500. Okay, that should work. And if we're descending, we're going to be going fast and pick up speed. So I'm going to throttle down just ever so slightly and just keep an eye on the indicated airspeed gauge. <laughs> I think some viewers need to watch the Don't Argue with the Pilot intro. <laughs> Do we have to uh, display that again? All right, anyways, for the Buckhorn Tavern, Number seven in America, so they claim. We have a, this is the first one star review that comes up. This is from Jasmine, who has 487 reviews under their belt. So there's something, they even have Elite 2020 as um, a tag on Yelp. So this is very, very serious, I guess, when you see a one star from that. Jasmine says, This place has really gone. You're going around. The world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Just let me have this, Flaming Camel. You've been here for like the whole stream, Flaming Camel. And you waited until we just started the review to ding dong. Hello, Flaming Camel. Thank you for um, 13 months of sub. Unlucky. Very unlucky. Yes. Okay. They said yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, this place has really gone downhill. I've been twice. The second time, I would have given it four stars. They are apparently one of the top seven burgers in the United States. They've been on diners, drive-ins, and dives. Now you've got my attention. You've been on Triple D? They closed a few months ago, unfortunately. Oh, I don't think so, because they have pictures of them with masks on. I think they reopened. Because on the pictures we saw, they had COVID masks. They closed a f uh, anyway... Oh, they closed a few months ago, unfortunately, and reopened under new ownership less than a month ago. This is September last year. We were on our way back to Albuquerque and stopped by since we really liked the green chili cheeseburger last time. <laughs> of course it is. The green chili cheeseburger. The place was at capacity around 1.30 p.m. It probably seats 30 to 40 people, including the bar. The server was really slow getting to us. Probably took about 10 minutes to get to our table. That's okay. We knew she was busy, and we remembered the burger being worth it. We waited an hour and a half for our food. No one should ever have to wait that long for their food, ever. 
I'm kind of embarrassed I stuck around that long. My husband wanted to leave at the 45 minute mark, but I kept thinking it would be next. The server sent and checked on the food for us and said it was being plated. We still didn't get our food for another 15 minutes. We heard the manager explain to another table that there were only 15 spaces on the grill, so the burgers come out pretty slowly. I never saw more than three burgers come out of the kitchen at a time. I had the manager sit down with me after the meal, and although she was apologetic, it didn't seem sincere. She seemed stressed, and like I definitely wasn't the first to make a complaint that day. I did ask her if they've thought about only seating as many people as they have grill space for. She said they've considered it. I wasn't expecting to get my meal for free, but I was expecting more than a sorry about that when I told her I would not be back. Maybe she knew I'd already made up my mind and I wasn't worth the energy. To top it off, the burger was not even close to worth it. The burger wasn't nearly as good as I remember it being. The fries were limp and oily and quite frankly, disgusting. Sorry, Buckhorn, you're a disappointment. I hope you all get it together. <laughs> Oof. Damn, that's a whole ass five paragraph essay. Yeah, that's why we always gotta go to the one star review, because they have the most to... I didn't think, I just had to go for the gnat. Coffee gnat made itself known, I had to try. Uh, sorry if I peeked the mic. Listen, if you wait an hour and a half for a burger, you probably deserve an angry review. It's a burger. All right, in, in trying to balance that, let's give a five star review. They're not as funny, though. The five-star reviews sound like ads. Like, does this sound like an ad to you guys? So glad a friend recommended this little gym to us. We were leaving ABQ, that's short for Albuquerque, headed to Las Cruces, New Mexico. We were told they have the best green chili cheeseburgers. So I went on Yelp and was surprised with some reviews. I understand this business has a new owner. We almost didn't go. But we are traveling and are on an adventure. If our foodie friend said it was good, we would try and make our own decision. We went on a Tuesday around 12 noon. When you walk in, you are immediately greeted, and they say, quote, You can sit wherever you would like. There were plenty of people in having lunch, so we decided to sit at the bar. We thought that would be fun to sit and talk with others and employees, too. We met Ernie, the new owner. He reopened in August 2019. I have never been there prior to today. Ernie made everyone feel welcomed. He took the time to chat to us about our trip. The burgers are cooked to order. We watched them make them from where we were sitting at the bar. We ordered the Buckhorn Burger, just the way they make them. You can choose your cheese and add mayo if you want, but we wanted to experience the original Buckhorn Burger. It did not disappoint. The burgers are big. They are very juicy. Very good burger. <laughs> and my husband is a burger connoisseur. We also ordered the onion rings. They are battered rings. Very good rings, too. All right, is this a review? Did Trump write this review? We just had water with lemon to drink. I never write about water, but the water was good, too. If you find yourself near this establishment, please go in and have yourself a really good green chili cheeseburger. The burgers are big. They are very juicy. Very good burger. And my husband is a burger connoisseur. We also ordered the onion rings. They are battered rings. Very good rings, too. 100% written by Ernie. <laughs> Ernie's the one that wrote it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so funny. Okay, where are we? Dude. All right, probably time to take manual. Let's, uh, oh man. We're there. This is it. All right, we gotta go down to truth or consequences. Autopilot off. Get ready to die. It's gonna be fine. We're just gonna throttle down. Manual flying. That was perfectly timed review because we're there. We're not landing here, by the way. We're just flying over it because, um... Well, it's truth or consequences, and we, we learned about how it was named after a radio show from the 1940s because everybody that lives here is just a big memer. Where is, uh... 
Where's the butte? Where's the butt? Isn't the butt supposed to be north? Let me open the, the actual map. Oh, we're not there there. We're not there there. My bad. My bad. Jump the gun a little bit. Jump the gun. That's fine. We'll, we'll just take it in low. Do a little bit of manual flying for fun. The bot was convincing until the English at the end. I don't know if it was a bot. I think it was just Ernie. He got a little over-enthusiastic about that world-famous Triple D green chili cheeseburger. Yeah, I think I got a little excited. We should be just west. Oh, there it is. I can see the elephant butt right over there. See the water? That's it. And this is Truth or Consequences Airfield. So why don't we just fly over that? Even the even the world famous delicious lemon water was great. The visor doesn't even work. One day, maybe it will. Some of the planes actually do have sun visors. That mountain range does look familiar. Uh, it should. So to our left is going to be Albuquerque. All right, hang on. I can't fix this because whatever. Can it? Does it work good enough? Yeah, until I look too far up, but it's fine. So Albuquerque's that way, chat. Hey, Utah, can we stop? I want to pick up a green chili burg. <laughs> what, what, what? What town was um? That particular restaurant even in I don't think it was truth or consequences I think it was hatch wasn't it close to hatch hatch is south so this is truth or consequences airfield I got to be careful because I'm going to just drift into the ground here not that impressive I know but it's still just cool seeing all these the fact that these airports exist you know is still just interesting to me because to us, like to you, right? You're looking at this going like, okay, it's in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, but that's kind of like why it's cool to me. Because people live here and they fly in and out of this airport. Oh yeah, it was San Antonio, New Mexico. San Antonio, New Mexico, that's right. I get what you're saying. Yeah, I, I like stepping into other people's shoes in that sense, you know? I like trying to imagine these people's busy lives. Like, while we're sitting here joyriding over their hometown, they're riding up and down the interstate like this. Looks like we got, um... An 18-wheeler got photographed <laughs> by the satellite and imprinted forever on the road. <laughs> I just think the technology is cool that the satellite can like take <laughs> take pictures of the road and then automatically know cars are supposed to be driving on that. And then just do it. All right, so here's what we need to do. Before we go any further, we should absolutely make a save in case something goes bad. Around the world, day two, flight one in Prague. Not Prague, but in progress. That way I can do this and nobody's going to care. See? Ah! No! Don't 
Kill us, please. Welcome to Truth or Consequences, chat. This is, uh, Elephant Butte to the left. And there should be a little mesa over there to signify it. There's a couple. This horse island exists over here. And another one. That was also named after an animal. Got to take this one in low. Try to get a feel for what it might actually be like to live in one of these little house circles. This is like... <laughs> Somebody made um, a cul-de-sac inverted. Instead of making the houses around the circle, they made the circle and then put the houses in it and then put the road around it where it normally is. Rattlesnake Island, that's what it is. Horse Island and Rattlesnake. So which one is that one? That's gotta be one of them right there. Have you seen any animals? I actually haven't seen any animals in the game. We will on this trip around the world, though. I promise you that. Is this one of them as well? If this is one... I don't know. I think it's further north. But this is... Um, the Rio Grande right there. And then if you keep going... Well, if you keep going north, you can follow it to Albuquerque. This is just like a pretty big pocket. I want to say that that's... Is that horse and that's rattlesnake? Because that's a pretty big one. That's got to be that's got to be elephant butte right there, right? That's the butt. Yeah, animals are in pretty specific spots. For now, touch it. <laughs> You think I can touch my wheels down on the top of Elephant Butte and then take off? Not in first person. No way. I'm going to crash. I could do it in third person. Todd, I can't even see. We're going to we're going to die and it's all going to be your fault. Oh, that hurt. I couldn't touch it. I'm sorry. I couldn't touch it, but I tried. I'm not going back. Because I don't want to have to reload the save. I gave it an honest go. I, that was a lose-lose situation for me either way. Either we touch it and explode, and then I have to reload the save, and you guys go, ERROR! That's another ERROR! And then I have to, like, consider that, and I'll be like, no, -uh, you made me do it. I wouldn't have done it except you told me so. See, so we would have had that whole argument. There was a 1% chance where it just worked, and I'm a hero. Or I miss, and you're mad, which is what happened but I don't crash and have to reload my save. By the way, I love that we've uh, got all these clouds that we're flying into right now. Just doing some low pass over the terrain. Need to change my altimeter so I can actually get a good reading. We're 5,000 feet above sea level here, which is just kind of incredible when you think about it like that. Everybody up here just lives 5,000 feet above sea level. Almost a mile. So, we're gonna kinda just mosey on back to our GPS. Uh, from... Oh yeah, Hatch would have been that way. Just down the river. So if you're curious where the Hatch Queen Chili... Hatch Chili Valley Queen. I don't even... That's too much. It's four words. Hatch Valley Chili Queen uh, would be nominated that way. I don't know what they're going to do this year. Because it happened in September, I think. Not anymore. 
It's kind of a good sign that I saw the gnat just fly. That means it's not in my coffee. And I can drink this. If you zoomed in, it just flew around my head when I drank the coffee. I swear it's coffee gnats. There's a new breed. They only care about coffee. Weather's looking uh, pretty good. I'm gonna say just some just some light cloud cover. Looks fine. I think I need to reset my tiara. Caffeine addicted gnats. It has to be. Those aren't coffee grinds. Those are gnats. But yeah, I really, really, really like this flight condition in particular. We got big open plains. Even if we are 5,000 feet above, we got like tall mountain plains. We got um, low hanging cloud cover with some pretty cool formations up ahead. And it's just that nice juxtaposition. Like, because if it's clear skies and flat, then it's kind of not boring, but you know what I mean. Like, there's not a lot of topographical uniqueness to this patch of land, so we got some interesting eyeball candy up above it gives it more depth that's what I, that's kind of what I'm trying to say a little bit more depth feel the the feeling of you know like if you're in space and you're moving but you have no frame of reference for what you're moving past obviously we have like the ground but having the clouds as well kind of is another frame of reference to make you feel like you're going the way you're supposed to all right we can speed up a little bit you're not really supposed to cruise at 85 knots, or 85%. Uh, if you couldn't go 85 knots, that would be pretty slow. We're going to go ahead and zoom in over here. We're heading towards Hollow Man Air Force Base now. And also White Sands, which I don't know how that's going to be represented in the game. I'm assuming the ground will just be a different color. So we will check that out. Uh, probably just beyond this mountain range, and then we'll be very near to our destination of Roswell, New Mexico. So we are heading to Roswell right now. In the Cessna 172 Skyhawk, which, having no <laughs> no way to trim, does not make it the most fun manual uh, plane ever, but the autopilot, even though it's a little tricky, seems good. So what I need to figure out how to do is get my selected altitude down while watching my indicator here. Actually, we want to be higher because we're at, what, like 6,000 feet? So let's say 7,000. And then... Autopilot engage. And then we want... 500 feet per minute on a climb. Okay, because I see the mountains in the distance, so I kind of want to start anticipating that. We can even go a little slower. Maybe like just 200 feet per minute, just something really nice and slow. Set the altitude to like 7,500. Why are there two different ones? I'm a little bit confused, because this is altitude mode. If you click it again, it turns on vertical speed mode, which is just like an override. Did you guys see the al Did you guys just see the altimeter jump? Okay, but I think the goal is you just want you want this to be in altimeter mode. 7,500 feet, then you should be able to increase or decrease the... R I don't understand how this works, to be honest. Because I don't want this to be stuck in VS mode. What I'm afraid of is, even though it's going to work in terms of making us climb, I think it's going to go... I don't know how to set it... Altitude is just altitude hold mode. Okay, so I think what happens is we have to use both interchangeably. 
We have to use vertical speed in, and just kind of keep an eye on the dial. And then once we get where we want to be, where the little hand is on the 7 and the big hand's on the 5, that'll be 7,500. Uh, then we just turn vertical speed mode off and turn altitude hold back on. I believe. You sounded so confident when you started talking about it. Well, this is the first time I've flown this plane, and its autopilot system is still being... I'm still working it out. Because it's just a little bit different. Also, there's no um, elevator trim on this particular plane. It should auto-switch to alt when you reach the set altitude. Interesting. That's pretty cool. But yeah, still, still some things to work out. All I have as a frame of reference are the other planes that I've flown. By the way, Kyrotopi, did you already get a screen cap for the plane log, or do I need? Should I set up another one? You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. I took the one we were flying over the mountains earlier. Was it good? Did it turn out nice? Hey, what's up, Xenofaints? How's it going? Cosmic Anomaly, happy one year. Thank you for the 12 months uh, of sub. Big one year. Much appreciated. Glad to have you back. Captain, I got left behind. Still time to jump on, okay? If you could just meet us at this mountain up ahead. I'll go low over it. You just grab onto one of the wheels, okay? Sound like a good plan? So we can take a look here and kind of see the flight plan. Are we... We're still on GPS. I think I turned off nav mode. So we're still going the right way. Just a little too far north. So it's going to get us synced back up with the pink line, which is our represented on our VFR map as well. Give us a nice couple of turns. Hopefully nothing too harsh. Looking good. New Mexico. Looking very beautiful right now. What's up, Big Sus? We're in a Cessna 172 Skyhawk. First time flying this. And uh, it's been very interesting because it's got some shortcomings, but it's also got some really good advantages as well. I would say the shortcomings come in terms of manual flying, but the advantages of autopilot are not to be overstated. Not using the updated G1000? No, because you can't appreciate that without knowing where it comes from, right? But also, we're kind of stepping up the technology level. Before this, we flew um, the Savage Cub was our first flight. So we started as bare bones as you could going out of Vegas, and then we went from there to the 152, and we stepped up the 152 to the 172. So we're not going to keep that, like, it's not going to be a rigorous and um, hypersensitive you know, it's not going to be super strict. Sometimes we'll skip around. Analog 172, best plane for noobs. Yeah, I've enjoyed this plane so far. It's just taken some getting used to for the autopilot controls. But, to be honest, what plane doesn't have a little bit of a learning curve for autopilot? You know? They all are slightly different from each other. Hey, look, it looks like we're going really fast now. Off we go. Noom. <laughs> and then I said to him, thanks for subscribing. <laughs> hey, hang on. How come I can hear myself now? Just Mojo with the double gift sub. Pogging out. Schmack attack and 
Not okay, Patrick. Welcome aboard. Oh no. Whenever I finish drinking the coffee, dude, the gnat gets confident. I'm gonna have to do something. I got... Oh, hang on. There's mountains. Chad, did you guys notice that there's mountains and stuff? Yeah, there's a couple mountains. There's a couple. One or two. Yes, but we were hoping you wouldn't. I'm pretty tall up here anyway. Heading towards 7,500 feet. We should probably be plenty of, of clearance. You guys don't see this? I think... It's getting very hyper. Did it get some caffeine? Dude! Hang on, is that possible? If the gnat is attracted to caffeine and it like gets in there, gets some and gets out, does it start like flying around like crazy afterwards? Cause right all of a sudden it just started going insane. Cause think about it. Think about how much caffeine you need to get a burst of energy versus a gnat. Infinitesimally smaller than you. It's adapting. <laughs> it's adapting. Alright, I want to get some information on this, but we can do that after we fly over it. How about that? Because right now, I kind of just want to enjoy it. Oh, this is beautiful. Especially with the clouds. Why does why do they ATC is like literally nothing, crickets, and then oh I really like this and I want to enjoy it. Hi, uh, minus twenty one. You're leaving my airspace. Do I need to request a flight following? I guess so. Wait, no I don't. Alright, get off my screen. Firm. Let's change altimeter. Chad, are we gonna make this? <laughs> I think we're gonna make it. <laughs> hey, are we gonna make that? Dude, this is a really cool area. This is probably my favorite spot. I think it's just the combination of, like, the time of day. Like, that's... That's the screenshot. That's a screenshot right there. Combination of time of day, the clouds, the topography, uh, the plane itself, knowing that everything there is simulated. Off in the distance, we're going to see Hollow Man Air Force Base. Somewhere in this general vicinity. Ooh, is that White Sands? Maybe. Let's take a peek. Getting a little wobbly. Dude. The, dude. Hollow Man Air Force Base. We're going to have a K-hole first. <laughs> let's, let's find out where K-hole is. I just wanted to give you guys a little cameraless scenic view. The hub of the engine. Where are we at? So 
So, New Mexico. Roswell's right here. Pikachu. Picacho is an unincorporated community in Lincoln County. With a post office. They do have a post office confirmed. Ski Apache. Wow, look at that. Ski and snowboard resort open year round. 8,900 foot long zip line is what's open year round. Count up on Sierra Blanca Peak. All right, what were we looking for? K hole? Not, <laughs> not coals. K hole. <laughs> Airport. No, not coals, dude. We couldn't un. Okay, well, hang on. Try again. <laughs> Just find the uh, Hollow Man. Just find Hollow Man, and you will find everything else that you need. White Sands Missile Range is what's coming up. Uh, okay. White Sands Space Harbor. <laughs> the Missile Range. West Filming Area. I'm kind of curious about these. And a National Monument. Dude, that looks crazy. So we got Gunsight Peak. Lots of peaks over here. Granddaddy Peak. Skillet Knob. There's Elephant Butte. So we have to be coming over the Kayla Mountains to White Sand Miss. Hang on, let me see. White Sand Missile Range. I mean, this is it, right? This is it. That's got to be. All right, I got to get rid of this coffee cup, chat. I don't want to abandon the plane, but I got to get rid of the coffee cup because I'm about to lose my mind. I can't take... That's been three hours. I need to take an actual B <laughs> BRB. But I'm in the plane, and this coffee net is going to ruin the stream if I let it. I guess I could pause it. But I'm trying to do this real time without stopping, but I can't just leave. Don't worry, Chad and Midas will watch the plane. Oh, hey, I have a couple pics from that White Sands National Monument. Uh, if any of you guys have pictures, feel free to share them via imager link, and uh, we'll take a look at them on the stream. Obviously, just don't put any identifying characteristics in there. Should go without saying. Why is this camera... Oh, why, yeah, why is this camera like that? How do I reset this? Wait a second. How do I reset this? Oh, there we go. This is a really cool area, though. The Skyhawk. I can see the sun in the distance. We gotta make some good time, chat. So we can have the next flight at least be mostly during the day. Ooh. What kind of buildings are these? This looks like buildings they're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> Doesn't it? <laughs> if this is a missile base, uh, they probably can't render these.
because this is absolutely a crossing of some kind. Almost looks like an, is this the airport? Are we pat, this is K-hole. K-hole airport. This is not Jackson Hole, though. That's a censored military airfield. Okay, because it literally doesn't even come up on Google. You're about to get some F-16 escorts. <laughs> K-Hole is, is uh, Jackson Hole, which is like a specialized airport that you can land in in the game that's like not in New Mexico. So it's weird that this has the same identifier. Isn't this where they do the land speed runs? Oh, is this where they do it? Because that could be... You're going around the world. Could be cool to look up. Want you. Just let me have this, kid. They're going to scramble some uh, Cessna 172 Skyhawks to come get me. But yeah, this is absolutely like a censored missile base. That is probably purposely scrambled to look like uh, puzzle blocks. To protect the satellite imagery. Let's look it up. Um, New Mexico missile test. White Sands Missile Range. Current operations. We got ground-based electro-optical deep space surveillance telescopes performing space surveillance missions. The title of the picture is The Night Watchman. It's kind of, uh, spooky. There's your nighttime New Mexico, uh, missile base test. Yeah, it, there's a whole Wikipedia page for White Sands Missile Range. Chat, look it up. Before I read, I doubt. I. Don't doubt, okay? It's right here. Uh, also, there's a, obviously a nearby military base. We're literally going to Holloman Air Force Base. Incidents. Circa May 30th, 1947, a German V-2 sounding rocket fired from White Sands Proving Ground, veered off course, crashed and exploded on top of a rocky knoll three and a half miles south of Juarez, Mexico's business district. <laughs> Good job. You, you missiled with a... You V-2'd Mexico in the 1940s. Uh, after, okay. On July 11, 1970, the United States Air Force launched an Athena V-123D rocket from Green River Launch Complex in Utah. While its intended target was inside of White Sands Missile Range, the rocket instead flew south and impacted 180 to 200 miles south of the Mexican border in the Mapimi Desert in the northeastern corner of the Mexican state of Durango. Wow. We've bombed... We've, we've missiled Mexico twice on accident over the years. Hee <laughs> hee, oops. All right, I'll look up some more factoids. <laughs> but first, when we're actually flying over it, we should look at it. A lot of cloud cover. I like that it actually realistically obscures the sun in terms, like the lighting is very neutral and even right now. No, no hard shadows. We've missed a lot of countries, yeah, but not a lot of countries by accident. <laughs> That's what makes it stand out from the other ones. Give you guys more of a view.
this is a really pleasant flight. Got to see a nice variety of the landscape. Mountains, desert plains. White Sands is pretty cool. It's, its own monument and there's an Air Force base that we're coming up on somewhere. Got to see Coffee Nat up close and personal. Still flying on the screen as I speak. Literally landed on the screen. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, did I just disable the autopilot on accident? Maybe. Uh oh, I just hit. Chad, I just hit a. Oh god. Oh, what have I done? We're fine. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Chat, why are we just speeding in a circle? What did I do, dude? Why, what did I push? There. Got it. Oh, that was a rhetorical question. I had it under control the whole time. The gnat actually ruined the flight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wait. All right, we're good. It's just trying to get back on the, the pink, I think. Very aggressively. You disarmed approach. Yeah, approach is for landing. Like, landing approach. We definitely aren't landing yet. Wait. There we go. Alright, hang up. What? There we go. Alright, that's what I was trying to find. Free camp, sorry. So, there's the end of White Sands. Dude, that's so cool though, how like the sand catches the wind, right? Is it possible that White Sands is gonna disappear after so many years? Like if the wind keeps dispersing? Cause it's not, you can't just make more sand, right? How many years would it take before the, the sand gets blown out far enough? Cause that's what these little waves are. How did it get there in the first place, though? Ah! I'm sorry, chat. It was right in front of my face. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to scare you. I'm gonna, I'm gonna lose my shit in a moment. Okay. I gotta take this coffee out of here, dude. I'm trying to like enjoy the flight. It sounded like you slapped me. I didn't mean to. This is supposed to be relaxing and calm. I want to enjoy and find out what this is, and I've got a, I don't, why? How to destroy, I'm gonna Google how to destroy coffee nets. Here's what to do. Find a spray bottle. Uh, fill it with alcohol. <laughs> Keep it about three feet away from your compost pail bowl. No, there's only one gnat at a time. There's not like a bunch of gnats. It's just one. I don't even know how they get here. Uh, no one can help me. Certainly not this person. There's nothing to spray. All right, where are we flying over right now? This is the Air Force. This is Holloman Air Force Base. I'm sorry we didn't get uh, a better look at it, but you can see some planes getting out of our LOD on the ground. A couple baseball fields there.
Like, I know there's plenty of liquids that work on gnats. That's not the issue. There's nothing to spray. That's the issue. There's nowhere to aim. You don't- I'm not just gonna spray the sky until I hit the one gnat that's flying around. Are you hiding food in your room? No! I clean up my room after every stream. I've got one empty coffee cup from today. That's it. You just leave it out and they drown themselves. Okay, well I'll try that. I guess. Apples- I don't have any apple cider vinegar. Oh, look at that cute little sun up there, dude. Bye, Holloman Air Force Base. We didn't really get to appreciate you as much. Also, Minecraft Chunk, moving in. Or maybe it's just really dark clouds from over there. All right, from Holloman, we're basically uh, coming to the end of our journey. We should be approaching Roswell from this point on. And flight number one will be at an end. We are currently flying over. So there's Holloman Air Force Base. We're heading towards Lincoln National Forest. And La Luz is to the north. And also Alamogordo. Volunteer Fire Department, a couple more regional airports. Virtual View Tours. See, there's the missiles. That's the missile, dude. Got some radio stations. I don't see any food. Golf course? <laughs> of course there is. People golf anywhere. <laughs> They're like, yeah, Air Force Base, desert. We can make a golf course here. Absolutely. Sunspot. That's a cool name. National Solar... Oh! Solar Observatory? That's pretty badass. Stare directly into the sun. This Carlsbad. I think I've been to Carlsbad. Anyway, we should be going northeast to Roswell, so we'll probably be closer to Mes Mescalero. We're not going to really pass near the solar. It'd be way off course to go to the Solar Ob Observatory. So, specifically, try, I have no idea where this actually is. I just looked at it. It's gotta, it's gotta be... This looks pretty detailed, actually. I think they got better scans here. This looks pretty put together. Okay, so this is definitely like Lincoln. There's one of the regional airports that we just looked at. Alamo Gordo, I think? Yeah. That's uh, the university, right? You can kind of see the icon on the field. Right in the middle. How many baseballs do you think get hit into that water? <laughs> Probably a fair few. NMSU. New Mexico State University, huh? The vinegar thing didn't work for me. I noticed they went away almost completely once I put my kitchen... Kitchen trash? Dude, it's in my eye! It was in my eye. It's gonna land on my eye. I gotta do something. I gotta do something. I'm gonna lose it. This The whole stream can't be about this. Are we gonna clear these mountains? It'll be fine. Nat stream. This is a this is now the Nat stream. It's I it can't be that. Maybe we should go a little higher. Timer until Nat kills Italics. 
A fun thing is that the curvature of the Earth makes distant mountains look shorter than they are. True. Because by the time we get to them, we're going in a straight line, but we're... We're actually going to... They're going to rise on the horizon. Which is kind of fun to think about. Those look like pretty heavy clouds. Okay, so this has got to be a uh, part of Lincoln National Forest. Rip in peace, waspy, wall scorpion, and now coffee nap. <laughs> Listen, the uh. All right, let me back in. The writers for the show determined that we may have upped the ante a little too much when we went from waspy to wall scorpion. So, when we rebooted the series, we decided to go with some of the B and C list villains in order to try to give them more personality and character for the evolving bug enemy universe on Etal Streams. So we're going to start low with Coffee Nat, and we're going to turn that into its own interesting character that you don't expect. Kind of like, uh, kind of like Spider-Man Homecoming, you know? You didn't expect the villain there to be as good as it turned out to be. You were like, oh, come on. Where's my Doc Ock? Well, you can't just rob me of... What do you mean, spoilers? It's in the trailer. Vulture's in the trailer. B-list villains. I see what you did there. How dare you rob me of Green Goblin to give me Vulture? Well, Coffee Nat is Vulture, okay? We've turned him into a real villain at this point. It just feels so cool to, like, actually lean around and try and look out the windows. All right, we do need to clear these mountains, though, chat. It's fairly important. May need a little manual help. Why can't I see the uh, VS vertical speed indicator? Because this is just cranking it, dude. To 40 knots. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. What? What are you doing, Autopilot? Autopilot, what is you doing, baby? Let me see over the dash. I can't even see. It's the <laughs> the gnats in the plane. Why are you still pointing up? I would said at 8,300. And you are, you are at 8,500, and I disabled Autopilot to take over. <laughs> the gnat is in the plane. Confirmed. Right now it's just Trim fighting to go up. Alright, we're good, chat. Now. Don't do this. Don't kill us, please. I'm begging you. All right, listen, I'll just take over. It's fine. I got it. 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 Just shut up. All of you, shut up. Stop complaining. Or I'm going to turn this plane around and we're going right back to Tucson. I don't care if I only have 25% gas left in the tank. I'll find a way. What is this? I actually kind of want to go see this. I need to reset my track IR as well, which is not helping anything. The plane does have a backseat for chat. Yes, it does. Okay, can somebody find out what this, like, mountainside resort is? I guess I could just go look at the flight plan, because it's, it's a place that we would fly directly over. How are you guys living 9,000 feet above sea level, dude?
Hello, what's up, Malachi? Excuse me while I try not to die here. <laughs> oh no. Try harder. <laughs> it's really hard to fly up here. Oh no, we're gonna die, chat. We're gonna die. <laughs> Why? I, I landed! It was an emergency mountainside landing. Not an error. I survived. <sighs> now what? We didn't run out of gas, did we? When do you run out of gas in this? Uh, because we're at like... What are we at? We're but we're, we're in the green. We're in the green. We made it. Chat, not a single pog for actually oh, the chat had to update. Chat, is Twitch broken? I think pop out is not working. Okay, I can see you now. I was like, there's definitely gonna be more of a reaction to emergency landing on the side of a hill. Connecting to chat. Great. Coffee Nat is in the chat now. Uh, it's not loading. Welcome to the chat room. I see one D face. There we go. Now you're in. Please <laughs> enter your pogs now. <laughs> Why am I sliding uphill, by the way? With the parking brake engaged as well? Let's make a save, because this might uh, take a moment. That was a pretty good landing, chat. That's not where we're supposed to land. That's just where we ended up landing. Let's do... <laughs> uh, go ahead and make a save. And I really don't understand exactly what happened there. Where do you think the best place to try and take off from is? All right, first things first, I did technically land. So I'm gonna try and uh, I, gotta, I gotta deal with coffee nap first before we take off. This is a, this is a, spon not a sponsored break, but it's like, it's allowable under our rules, because I'm not pausing, nor am I uh, autopiloting. But I need to take care of this, and I also need to take Midas out real quick. So just watch as I slide uphill and try not to die. This is now GTA, yes. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just trying to move off the road. And then we're going to try a mountainside takeoff. But yes, Midas has to, has to, uh, I can't believe I landed that. That was a miracle. All right, if I crash while parked, that's not an error. Okay? To be clear. Clive, thank you for the boop, by the way, for 37 months. Uh, how about we boop this aircraft back onto the road? Midas does have the zoomies. He, need <laughs> he needs to go. Super Pog is very pogged in chat for a third month, and Super Guppy is here for the first time ever. Hello to each one of you. Thank you for being here <laughs> and witnessing this disaster. I'll be back in just a moment. Thanks for your patience.
Hey, what's up? <laughs> I was gone for a while. What is happening? That's a great question. What is happening? I love that this is supposed to be like a chill relax learning experience and somehow everything always goes awry it's great always when you least expect it talix landed here so he could get a drink from the 7-eleven up the road you know what the people of new mexico were super gracious and understanding about my emergency highway landing up here 9,000 feet um, above sea level, and they gave me this complimentary... I don't know why it does that. <laughs> they gave me this complimentary special beverage. Uh, they put a little something extra in it, I think. Yeah, it tastes like, uh... Tastes like wild turkey. Exactly what I need to get airborne again. Also, we got new... 
Okay, all right, all right, I get it, IR Tracker. You don't like it when I cover you up. IR Tracker's freaking out. Remember how we were gonna have two daytime flights today? Well, that was before, that was before we, <laughs> come on. We gotta at least be able to take off during the day. <sighs> how does this always happen to me? All right, so let's center ourselves. There we go. But yes, thank you to the people of uh, New Mexico. Are we going to New Mexico? Oh, are we going to Mexico? Eventually. One day. We're in New Mexico right now. No more foot cam for takeoff, there will be. <laughs> this is not even supposed to be a takeoff. But first... Actually, hold on. Just let me... I gotta tuck Midas in. I don't know why he gets right next to the easels that are holding up the world map. And that's where he wants to be even though he has a bed that's five times his size and a blankie that he can snuggle up in. I got all this for you. It's special for you. All right. I have absolutely no faith in this, but we don't need faith. We just need, all right, parking brake is off. We're gonna get, uh, well, park, careful. I need rich, full rich mix. It's not good. We live here now. Okay, this is my first time flying this plane, chat. Be nice. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's get our... Taxi landing. I think it's fuel pump for three seconds. Lean the mixture. So it's rich. One, two, three... Off, lean, start. Fantastic. Okay. The checklist isn't accounting for a high altitude takeoff. Oh, full rich at this altitude is the problem, huh? Okay, let's try. Hang on, I didn't do full rich when engine starts. Time out, time out. Shh. It's rich. One, two, three, back, lean, start. There we go. We're in. Okay. We're in. Now, give me a little speed. Parking brake disengaged. I think. I think I'm stuck in a tree, actually. <laughs> also of note. I think I'm actually in a tree. Mmm. This is gonna be toasty. This is my runway now. We're gonna turn around and we're gonna use the hill as a as a jump. <laughs> we gotta get creative. Let's go ahead and turn around. Look both way. Oh god. Um
Chat, is the propeller not strong enough to even stop me from sliding back? <laughs> All right, just gun it. You gotta just go. <laughs> Come on, dude. Pick up a little speed. You're on a plane. All right, go full flaps down then. This is it. That's a house! <laughs> no, <laughs> dead. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> we nailed the emergency landing, not the emergency takeoff. I had to go, though. What else was I going to do? Not go for it. All right, let me just sort. I don't even know how this is going to load back in. This is going to be very... Dude, we don't even have enough fuel. We don't even have enough gas to make it there. Apparently. Gas is not why I landed on this, though. Roswell International Center is just out of reach. <laughs> well, there's other airports. We'll just land at one of those. Just put more gas in. I will. But I gotta take it as it was given, without cheating. What's the difference between ATC live and not live? Um, I don't know, I guess. ATC live? I think there's... Is there multiple settings? I think you can turn off or on. Oh god. Uh... It's trying to figure out how to spawn me in here, I think. As we fly uphill. Bro. Explain yourself. If my parking brake... If my parking brake is on... Then how am I floating uphill? Oh shit, here we go again. I think we can do this, dude. I might be in a point of no return here, though. I don't know if it's even possible, dude. Because the planes... Alright, that doesn't count. That, we only got one error. I can't... I'm trying to figure out if it's even possible to get out of this situation. <laughs> if I press restart, where does it take me back? <sighs> this is like its own challenge mode. Look, there's no double jeopardy. I can't be tried twice for the same crime. I already... I already crashed. That's the error. Now, we just have to get out. Oh, come on. When I press restart, it takes me... 
Oh, no, it's the right place. I got an idea. I got an idea. What did I hit? What did I touch? The game lagged. You, there's nothing there. A bush. Invisible wall. <laughs> Why would you put parentheses around lag? It literally froze on the screen. All right, don't hit ready to fly yet. Let it load in. Well, this is not where we are. This is the only way that Cheerios are good. Is in little milk bar form. <laughs> Propellers are basically lawnmower blades. True. Bro, I'm barely even moving. It's a miracle I even landed here. Look how sensitive this is. How did I land? <laughs> you know? <laughs> think about think about that. How did we even touch down the first time? Right, I'm just gonna cruise down the street and see if we go down far enough if there's a better angle Really like not even supposed to be here like where does this go? We don't know because you don't have enough Momentum to find out. Why don't I have like car wheels like that? <laughs> Microsoft driving. I can't even turn. I can't. There's not enough momentum for me to even go that way. The throttle's maxed. Okay. Let's try going down this road. This road looks worse. By far. Oh yeah. Was there like a tiny tree that clipped a wing? I wouldn't even be dead. I'm going like 10 miles an hour. Is it bugging or do planes IRL have really this little torque wall on the ground? I think it's just the incline is steeper than it appears. Tree three, house two, etal zero. Get off my screen. I'm not gonna get permission to crash again. Also, I can't even move the camp. What is going on, dude? See, I'm getting stuck on geometry. That's what probably crashes me if you go over two miles an hour. I think the only thing you can do is really just back up this road as far as possible. I think this is the only way. It has to be. Back up. Here's what we need to do. 
got to take this road to its natural end where we just were. We're going to whip around right here, okay? Hard turn. Hard turn. Give me some give me some juice. Okay, U turn. There we go. Now get some like land speed that's not too big that we can't turn, right? And then gun it. Right here. So we got like a rolling start. Ignore the car. I damaged my landing gear! Clip the landing gear, alright? That was it, dude. There's not six errors. We already went over this at the beginning. We already went over this. I really think the rolling start is the answer. I think I need to be rolling even faster. Once I hit this left corner is when I have to gun it immediately. The plan is a pretty good one, though. Now that we've got some experience under our belt. Okay, get ready to whip it. Whip. Accelerate. Big acceleration. Cut it so that you don't whip around this corner so hard that you... Uh, gotta go fast off to your death again. There you go. Full speed. We're gonna die. We're still gonna die. I... There's... I can't go up! How do I go up? What's the maximum height for a Cessna 172? Fourteen thousand feet. We're already at nine to ten thousand feet. We're like 60-70% of our maximum height. Just flying over this. Groundhog day where the pilot keeps crashing the plane. <sighs> okay. This is the one. Feet cam? Is feet cam still even? Shut up. <laughs> I'm stuck in a rut. Don't whine at me. Get off my screen. Okay, I actually made that one. That should have been it. Maybe if we just... F I feel like you can't just flaps up immediately, but maybe you can. Just clear the house. Flaps up immediately and just take off into the sunset. The problem that was the problem in the first place was I couldn't get any air. I couldn't get any airtime whatsoever. All right, hit it hard as we round the corner. All right, rolling start. Gun it. Ignore that car. Flaps are all the way up, chat. Flaps are all the way up, chat. I can't get in the air! <sighs> we already had... Like, I think I just am stuck here forever. I think we're stuck here forever. I love how chat's saying, don't turn. There's a taller mountain dead ahead.
I'm not, I haven't even gotten off the ground yet. Takeoff is supposed to be 10. We'll do 20, and maybe that helps. I was maxed flaps before. Just drive down the road. I tried that, the road narrows, and then I hit a tree on the way down. Alright. Eventually, we have to perfect our craft. I'm gonna try doing it to chat way and just going straight on. Streamer, make sure you enable VTOL. Thank you. Will do. The running start is a genuinely possible maneuver here. Okay. Hammer it as we turn. So if you look at the dial right there, we're trying to get over 40. Alright, I maxed it before we even hit the turn. To try to get as much speed as possible. Chat says just keep it straight, keep it level. Hit the tree dead ahead, dude. There's one tree that I didn't hit the last two times in a row. <sighs> Apparently the short field takeoff procedure for the Cessna is flaps at zero. All right, you guys wanna try flaps at zero and see if that helps us build speed? Gear up. <laughs> there is there's a fixed gear on this plane. <laughs> Please, Ito. I don't want to die here in New Mexico again. It hurts every single time as if it was the first. No more. Let me out of this purgatory. Alright, chat says no flaps. Straight on. The thing is, I'm trying to keep it straight. The reason I can't is because, uh, the incline of the road. Oh god, this is a terrible run-up. The incline of the road, see how it turns? So I can't quickly adjust to the right, or else my wing hits the ground. How? I don't think flaps up is the reason. I didn't even get close. There is nothing Ace could do to help here. There probably isn't, no. It's like Edge of Tomorrow. I'm gonna finish this drink before we even take off. It's gonna be nighttime before we even take off. We tried flat. I think flaps down worked better. Like, max down. I was just trying that because one guy in chat said not to do flaps and see if it did anything. Which I'm not even blaming because we've tried my way like six times in a row and it didn't work. So, that's fine. The epic takeoff challenge is a Ludwig level threat. More or less. All right, so it's maxed before we even rounded the corner. Have you tried just dodging? Oh God. Uh. Well, I almost made it to the other road. <sighs> I actually touched the ground. <laughs> That's the furthest we've made it, though. Take off, land on the other road, then land on the other road. That's the furthest we've made it away, though, Chad. That's the furthest we've gotten. Why not go downhill instead of uphill? Because there's mountains. Do you see this mountain right there? You can crash into that. If we try to go from the other direction, there's even less room to pull up. 
the way that we're going, we get a ramp, we get a few hundred feet, and then impact. This one, you get no room. You just die. Ah, that was a really bad... That was not good, what I just did. But we can just reverse. Hit the brakes before we crash. This is not my fault. Whatever happens is not... Uh, yeah, when you skip 60 frames and don't take any of my inputs, I'm dead. Who would have thought? Just ask one of those people to let you sleep over and then try tomorrow. Okay, we got flaps down again, as usual. Sit up in our booster seat a little bit. Try and take this turn. This is like when you- yeah, it is like a Dark Souls boss, and what I just did was I died on the run-up to the boss. I got tired of dying to the actual boss, so I died on a trash mop. I'm just trying to get better at steering on the ground so we can try and build more speed before we hit this section. I feel like I'm not building any speed, this, or is the speedometer working? Chad, is it even moving? It's not moving. Pito? 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 I can't. I can't gain it. What's- where's my speed? <laughs> Am I free? I don't know which way I'm going. I'm going, uh, north. Alright, that's gonna have to be good enough. I made it! We're out of here! Uh, my pito needs to be- okay, the speed just updated. We had an instrument failure. I'm gonna keep the throttle max for now. That was like its own Dark Souls boss. All right, now we just need to go east. Oh my god. That was in- that was actually- okay, so on the one hand, I was like, is it actually gonna feel cool to get out of here because we've tried ten times? Eventually, you're just gonna get lucky. No, there were extra challenges on that particular run that could not have been properly anticipated. Like, uh, the aforementioned airspeed indicator not moving. Um, also, the subsequent, like, buildings that I had to weave through at the last second. To try- because I was trying to go down to pick up speed. That's the only option that I had, right? Go nose down the mountain to try to gain speed to obtain lift. And it's still, it turned out really cool. It felt like, actually, on the one that we succeeded, it was like doing a line in Skate 3, perfectly. I feel like we just created a line and just got a high score. All right, let's turn this down a little. Flaps are for sure up. We are back on track. That was fun to watch you science. Thanks, Nomad. <laughs> the funny thing is, uh, it was an emergency landing there because it's so high up in the sky, uh, above sea level, that I couldn't get any lift as low to the ground as I was, even though I was coming in from, like, above it. I just lost all my altitude and made an emergency landing 
And the emergency landing was actually flawless. We didn't crash. Like, I landed it perfectly on the road, and then went to BRB, and then couldn't escape. So, the landing, I thought, would be harder than the takeoff. But the real secret sauce was uh, the reason I kept crashing. What is this? This is like a dam, but it's not? What is this? The reason I kept crashing was because I was trying to use that bump as a... as a jump. But I only had like 40 knots of speed when I was hitting that and pulling up. So I was crashing left into the house because I was trying to pull up at the exact time the road curved. And it was throwing me into the house. So the last time, well, the one that worked, I just stayed wheels down on the road for longer. And uh, it let me pick up some more speed going downhill the other side. Then I could kind of pick up and I had enough speed to, to clear the next mountaintop. Was listening to that whole thing. Glad you made it. We did it! <laughs> but yeah, it's this is what I like about a sandbox game like this. Not only are we making our own objective with regard to traveling around the world in real time and real planes, one to one, but also if we want to goof off and like, yeah, I do want to try and take off from this stupid road 9,000 feet above sea level, then we can do that too. You know what I mean? We can like bounce back and forth between realism, try hard, like do everything by the book here. This is an error. And let's put a pin in that for a minute and just try and do this really annoyingly difficult, fun takeoff. That's what makes the whole game fun, because you can just seamlessly bounce back and forth between one play style and the next and have fun both ways. Was that town Cloudcroft? I have no idea. But we should definitely look. So let me get uh, autopilot back. We're going to do autopilot nav. Okay. Then we're going to do altitude mode. Looks like there's no mountains. We're at 97 hundo. We could probably go down to 8,000 or 85 hundo would be good. Why is this doing this? Feet per minute. Yeah, that's... uh. Oh, because I'm doing the wrong... I always get confused. Sorry, it's my bad. That one's my bad. We already learned that lesson. Let's stay at, like, 9,000. Okay. Sorry. I want to get in close. And also, none of these look taller than where we just came from. And I like, I like, um, we could just stop at, like, we could stop at, like, 9,200. 9,300. Where are you? That is 9,000 feet. We're in New Mexico right now, heading towards Roswell. We got a little sidetracked. Hopefully the sun lingers in the sky long enough for us to get the next flight of the day off during daytime. But this is what ends up happening. We, if we did everything perfectly, <laughs> we definitely have time for three flights. And then on this stream, we end up getting sidetracked and distracted and have to cut one. But we'll see what we can do. Sorry for playing with your lives like that. Let's check it out. All right. It looks as though... I do want to say that we were probably in Cloudcroft. But maybe not. See, this doesn't... Sunspot's too small for where we were, I think. I mean, this... This is a wild enough path that I don't... There's nothing built out here, though. Dude, this is this town called Weed? Like, besides the memes... It's just... Even without the memes, it's an unfortunately named town. 
<laughs> dude. Dude. <laughs> we dude. Based on topography alone, I really would guess that we were on Ruidi Ruidoso, but I don't know, Chad. Do you guys have any idea? Here's what I can do. Let's just open up the game. Open up uh, the VFR map. It's directly between KHMN and KROW, but I think it's a little south of that from where we were. So if you want to look up KHMN, draw a line between that and Crow, it should trace a path direct. <laughs> 420 High Avenue, Weed, New Mexico. Population actually 420. Well, I'm glad we're out of that situation, at least. I'm so upset with myself, though, for getting stuck there and also having the gnat problem. We should already be, like... Listen, don't rush. I gotta, tell, I gotta talk myself down. Because as long as we're having fun, that's all that matters, Chad. And I'm having fun with you guys. I don't need... It's not about speed. It'd be nice to have three flights today and have two of them be daytime, but that was that was genuinely fun. Trying to escape from <laughs> that uh, roadway takeoff 9,000 foot elevation purgatory. Because the fact that we could actually do it if we just kept trying and learning from our mistakes, you know, that says something. Pretty sure it was Cloudcroft. Well, it's a nice name. If you guys wanted to, if you wanted to put Cloudcroft on the, uh, the Google map, I would not be mad at that, because that was like a, that was its own pit stop point of interest. On accident. But, any good journey is marked not just by where you plan to go and visit, but also how you allow yourself to explore and go off the books for a little while, you know what I mean? I think uh, anytime you're going on a trip, if you're too rigorous with following an itinerary verbatim, then you're, you're kind of going through the motion at a certain point. Sometimes you got to let yourself just have some fun, even if it's a time waster. And that's what we just did. Around the world in 30 planes in two years, if that's what it takes tone. About the friends you made along the way. I had a lot of fun watching you make that takeoff. Thanks, Silence Randy. I want to watch it again, because I felt like... Okay, they just announced that uh, Squadrons is going to have, of course, support for these, and it's also going to... Or, the HOTAS, and it's also going to have support on the consoles for HOTAS setups on console. And I felt like, genuinely, I was an X-Wing pilot right there, maneuvering through the buildings and through the, like, forest, the breaks in the trees. Like, as soon as I turn off the stream, that's the first thing I'm going to do is rewatch that... Uh, Navigation, because it was genuinely just so much fun. That weird dam you saw was Ski Cloudcroft. Really? Are you going to use VR for squadrons? I don't know. Maybe. Fun fact, Cloudcroft only has a population of 701. Well, they were certainly nice hooking me up with this beverage. So good for them. Yeah, I, th I think you guys are right. It is Cloudcroft. Skyhawk has some real learning curves, I think, as far as maintaining certain altitudes and getting enough speed to safely maintain them. It's been a learning experience. We're at about 80... Let's go down to 85, maybe 80%. Just chill. Chat, here's the other problem. We don't have enough gas to actually make it there, uh, technically speaking. So, the 152 has a utility rating, better power to weight. Yeah, that's, I can feel that. You can see the road corner and the dirt road that you tried <laughs> to drive down. <laughs> So what do, what do I do about running out of fuel? Okay, another question. How... What planes are the ones that can glide for, like, miles? 
with no fuel. Like, if you if I ran out of fuel right now and the engine turns off, how far could I actually glide? Because I feel like in the game, maybe I'm just not good at it, but it definitely feels as though we just sink like a rock. There was an airport right there. Is that crow? No way, right? Turn off the engines and find out. The 172 doesn't have great aerodynamics. It'll lose altitude quick without thrust. Yeah, that was the issue <laughs> that we were just having. Did you found the exact street? Hold on. Let's go look this up. DSG may have found the exact corner. Is that an NL? Blanca? Or Blanca? Supposed to be a B? Oh, this is it, dude. Check this out. Look, 1498 Blanca Vista Way. This is the person's yard that we were using to U-turn. Right there. We came down here, curved around, <laughs> went back up the road. This is where we gunned it to 100%. And, uh... You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Okay, so we turn around, go back up the road. We bounced right about there, but the one that worked, we stayed on the road, like to here, finally pulled up, kind of started heading this direction, I think. Managed to get just enough clearance to kind of safely navigate through. I don't know how we got out of this, to be honest. Did we take a right through this? Did we end up weaving that? Then you wrap back through the town? We'd wrap through somewhere. I think it was like one of these roads. You went over the green strip towards the ski area. The green strip. You went over the a main area of the city. So we went boom. Oh, this right here? So we went boom up the green and then followed this narrow path. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, did I veer left? I think we went left over this dirt road, maybe? Dude, I don't know. It was somewhere like that. That's crazy. But isn't that so cool that that's just like in the video game? Dude, that was the highway. That was the highway. I just think it's amazing that all that has been, like, faithfully rendered. Also, getting that New Mexico sunset on accident. Yeah, this was supposed to be a three-hour <laughs> This is supposed to be, like, a two-hour, 45-minute airtime. Oops. I'm doing my best. The good news is we get to change planes and uh, do a takeoff and landing, we should still be able to see. So it's gonna be transitioned to nighttime for the next flight, but at least we'll land during the day here and take off during the day. So the game said I did not have enough fuel. When does this actually bottom out? It was pretty worth it though. I think it was pretty worth it. It's actually dark now for my flying with you. Are you on live time or am I not on live time because I reloaded? I kind of don't want to know. <laughs> I'd rather just leave it. The mystery... Let the mystery be. Because it should only be... Are we in central time now? Yeah, uh, Sky Collapse, the estimated time is basically based on if you were flying at cruising speed the whole time. So it's always undercut by what it actually is. 
Gumby Oak says room. Thank you for 18 months, Gumby Oak. Welcome to the stream. Well, it's only 6.30 Pacific. If you're on mountain time, it's only 7.30. It ain't, it ain't dark yet. This, this looks about right. As we're approaching fall back, uh, days should get longer and longer. Right? Or is it the reverse? Not including unscheduled landing, would this flight end up being faster than driving? Oh, yeah. We are going uh, over 90 knots indicated airspeed right now, and that's at 9,300 feet. So it's actually faster than that. Let's say 90 knots at... True airspeed calculator. All right, my indicated airspeed is like 90-ish. Mean sea level altitude. I don't, is that, is that 9,300? I don't know what mean sea level is. OAT estimation correction. I don't know how to calculate that. We should be going around 106 true airspeed. And if we do knots to miles per hour, that's about 121 miles an hour. So, sea level is mean. I think we're going around 120 miles per hour right now. By the way, Coffee Nat is still here, still just a pain in the ass, and still flying right in my face. The only upside is, uh, my cup at least has a lid on it. So I don't have to worry about that as much. How much is that as normal speed? I just told you. 120 miles an hour. If you don't measure in miles an hour, look it up like I did. Crazy how far you can see that light. These formations look kind of crazy too. All the ridges. Oh, accidental perfect camera angle here. With the sun setting in the distance. I don't like this one because my head my head tracker screws it up. So I think like I don't I trust the game's estimate that we're not gonna make it, but at the same time, is that that has to be the airport. Right? that we're heading directly to. How far away are we? Distance, 28.4 nautical miles. That's not really that far. The fuel's at, f we got five uh, gallons. <laughs> I got five gallons. At what point does the engine cut out? <laughs> five gallons. Just finished watching David Lynch's Dune from 84. Uh, I think I've seen parts of that because I have a family member that loves it, but I've never seen the whole thing, actually. If you feather the engine properly, you should be able to glide. I have no idea how to feather an engine. That sounds like a very intimate maneuver. Look at that sun peeking over. Trying to get like an actual good camera angle. Bring some balance. Sun on top, plane on bottom. I can't take screenshots though, because it's not on Steam. I'm trying to use thirds, Kyra Toby. I'm trying. 
But yes, we're going to have a lot less sun just because of the nature of the trip. I've mentioned it before, I know, but we're flying east, so this we're literally flying away from the sun, which is going to make all of these days shorter whenever we're streaming this game. Disabling the rotation of the prop after the engine cuts out so the air flows better over the wings and gives you better lift when you're falling. Feathering, this is a fixed pitch prop. Oh. Well, they tried. I'm the passenger. Really? Hair? Is that you? Who's back here? Chad, if I kicked you out of the plane and didn't weigh you, maybe we'd have enough uh, juice to make it to this airfield. Nine thousand four hundred thirty three three zero two six, huh? Okay. Acknowledge. Copy minus two one. We are nine miles wait. Radar contact nine miles east of eighty two New Mexico? Dude, nautical miles New Mexico. That gets confusing. Tax you can take a screenshot using Windows key plus print screen. Oh, I just pushed print screen. I didn't know you could Windows key it. That's pretty cool. The engines usually die out of like three gallons. Oh. Well, that's not good. Why doesn't the plane use all the fuel? <laughs> that's probably a really dumb question. <laughs> uh, yeah, I got three gallons in here. How far will that get me? Well, the sky certainly looks beautiful today. It's just insane to me that this is all just no man's land. Ever drink a boba drink in the bottom little bit you can't get because how the straw shaped? Well, why didn't they just design it better? It's kind of like my coffee maker, actually. Your coffee maker can have water in it, but it just needs, like, a minimum amount, or else it doesn't go at all. What's well, the name of the gadget on my head? I'm using Track IR5. You're supposed to be using a hat, but there is no hat that fits me. True story. So I'm using a uh, headband in order to get the same effect. But it is uh, very cool. And if you do have hats that fit you, then it's probably even better. I must drink all the boba. I haven't had boba in a long time. And by a long time, I mean like at least a year. That looks so close, but apparently it's not. We are probably at four gallons right now. Is there a way to save on fuel efficiency? Like, if I lean the mixture, does that do anything? And throttle back. Probably too late for that. Probably doesn't do anything anyway. Have you thought about using custom tailors? I just don't want to wear a hat anyways. I'd probably just want to make, um, like, wear a visor. Because it would get kind of hot. really empty for miles and miles. Worst part of that is the long straight highway sections. Oh yeah. I've lived in the middle of nowhere before. Not in New Mexico though. Oh yeah. At least we get to see the sunset. It would be worse if we were in the menus. A little, uh, a little cozy in here. There's not a lot of wiggle room shoulder space, chat.
Throttling back helps, leaning not really. Dude, the gnat is on chat right now. It doesn't know what it wants. It doesn't know what it's looking for. Uh, best glide speed is 65 knots indicated airspeed. It's just so far away. I think it's the closest one as well. Well, chat, we might have to cheat in more fuel. Because... There's not a closer airport than the one that we're currently approaching. Send it, there's plenty of flat desert to ditch in. Well, I'm not saying we can't land, but then what? I can see the runway right there. Is it too soon to request a landing? We just push it to the airport. You're close enough to just push the plane to the airport to get the next flight. Well, I want to land on the runway if I can. You can totally make it. Landing and taxi your way to the airport with cheated fuel. Okay, we could do that. If we run out of gas, I'll try and land it somewhere. And then if we land successfully, cheat in new fuel and then go from there. Just believe in the heart of the cards or something like that. <laughs> well, the airport's in sight. Twelve miles. So if we're going 120 miles per hour, dude, we should be there in like six minutes. Make left base runway 35. Dude, look at the sun right here. Um, uh, I gotta change my approach. Because we're supposed to land from here at least, so that's good. So 3-5 is that way, like just almost north. So we need to start here and then land. That's a beautiful sunset though. We got just a perfect cloud cover. Nice blue to yellow to pink color transition there. Twelve miles out, probably close to eleven to ten now. Listen for the sound of uh, the aircraft dying. Fourteen percent fuel. You're probably fine. I feel like we might actually be fine. I just maybe really underestimated it. Or maybe we just made some good time. I don't know. Dude, looks awesome here though. Pink, puffy clouds. I would say they're hanging low, but they're not. They're like 8,000 feet up. <laughs> they just look really low. This game's incredible. It never gets old. It's still just so much fun to look at everything that's going on. Welcome to Roswell, everybody! We have arrived! That's it over there. We could probably fly over it in the next plane. Right now I'm kind of focused on landing.
What was it? Windows key plus print screen? Okay. Probably time to take over manual. Try to line ourselves up. Yeah, let's get our, uh... I think my lights are probably still on, actually, from the takeoff that we did there. Wait, it... Okay, this is not my fault. It actually just reset all the lights. There we go. Uh, when we reloaded, it reset them. I believe they're all on now. Yeah, they're all on now. I did have them on before takeoff. It just turns them off if you crash. <laughs> Would you be willing to fly over where I grew up? You used to live here. Uh, if it's on the route... You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. If it happens to be on the route, it happens to be on the route. But I can't fly everybody's personal request because we've already got the flight plans locked in. I don't want to. Too bad. That's where we're going. We were so caught up if we'd run out of fuel that we burned enough gas to fly over the airport. What does that mean? Dude, we're coming in hot. Chat, we are coming in blazing hot. Clear to land runway three five minus two one. Flaps are down. That's definitely gonna help. Got a crazy angle of attack here. Also, this is not even the one we're supposed to we're supposed to be landing at the one on the left, by the way. Clear to land runway 35. That is, uh, we're gonna have to, like, do a little sweep, which is actually helpful. Because it gives me a little bit more room, gives me a nice turn. Oh, we got this, dude. Oh, yeah, look at the sky, too. Big runway. Mmm. Tasty. Tasty. Nice little scoot. Like butter. You got it. Acknowledge. Whoops. Next taxiway. Uh, I don't know where that is. I think it's right up here. GG. That was a solid landing. That felt good. Tapping the brakes. Trying to slow this down. We are now clear of the runway. And, uh, I have no idea whether to taxi right or left. Shh. You didn't even- what'd you even say? <laughs> I think I accidentally tuned- he was like talking to me and I accidentally tuned to the other one. Alright, request taxi to parking. Taxiing to General Aviation Parking using Taxiway Bravo Charlie minus 2-1.
I'm assuming that's going to be left. I had to turn off uh, taxi directions because it was bugged on the on the overworld. If I remember right, one of the runways is big enough that it was backup runway for the space shuttle. Really? That's awesome. Though it's going to be funny if uh, this is actually the wrong way. Using taxiway Bravo Charlie. They didn't really give me any more information, so I'm probably just going to pause real quick. And turn that assist on, because there's literally no other way I'm going to find this. Uh, okay, well that didn't help at all. However, I'm pretty sure that I'm here. So, I don't really know where they want me to go. This is what always happens on these flights. They never hook me up with an actual parking space. They're kind of just like, yeah, just go to general aviation. Dude, that looks sick. What is that? What is that skin, dude? I want to fly that. That thing looks awesome. A great aviation meme rooted in truth is the hardest part is finding your parking spot after you land. Well, I can attest to that right now. I guess I could just park anywhere for the purposes of our um, ending flight. Can we all agree that there is not an obvious parking space here and also the game doesn't know where they want me to park? And also it doesn't seem to be marked on the ground? So I'm going to say this looks good. Pretty much lined up with these guys. Parking brake on. Did not remember that there was a checklist uh, on this particular plane for <laughs> descent <laughs> um, flaps as desired required put those up before landing upright position fuel selector rich mixture landing does that account for the fact that we are 4500 feet above sea level taxi landing lights I did that uh, autopilot off did that flaps down check did that did that all right after landing flaps back up just did that landing lights as required taxi lights as required strobe off trim reset I don't know how to reset trim um, transponder to standby okay Parking brake engaged. Transponder off. Avionics bus switch off. Thank you, ATC. Engine idle. Magneto's cutoff test. I don't know how to do that, so we're not going to do that. <laughs> Mixture idle cutoff. And wow, I went through the ground. Uh, instead of going to heaven like we usually do, we're now on our way to hell. Whew! Good flight, everybody! I don't know if this is an accurate count, but, uh, GG's. Watch out, there's a tomato cult in my chat. That's exactly where they told you to park. Apparently, because I got the logbook. So, um, I think I accidentally went to the correct spot, or close enough. GG. Good flight, everybody. Good landing, especially. Got the right um, landing strip. Did not run out of fuel. Had an exciting mountain takeoff. Good times. And now that we are in Roswell, uh, we are going to head on over 
to, I guess, I mean, Area 51 at night is going to be not really visible. Where is actually Area 51? It's not even marked. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Why am I thinking? Hang on, I'm getting the two confused. Roswell, that ends well. Is there Area, 50 Area 51 in Nevada? Why did I think Roswell? Roswell's aliens. This is near Vegas. Why didn't I go to the Ninja Conference? I didn't know where Area 51 was. Apparently, I did not know where Area 51 was. I live in it. They wiped my memory. I must have already gone. That makes sense. I have a big blank spot in my mind from when I went with all of the ninjas. That now it's all become clear. That's why the hats don't fit you. I don't know why I literally just confused those. We were talking to a person who couldn't remember his own address the other day. They probably did like give me the men in black flash. If you Google Area 51, it doesn't even have a pinpoint. It literally takes you to where it apparently is way northwest of Vegas. It's probably like a couple hour drive away. To be fair, Tucson isn't that far away either. This is where I got my antenna. <laughs> is that what this is? What's our next flight? We are now on our way from Roswell to San Antonio, Texas. So we are going firmly into central time. We're going to San, the real San Antonio. We're going to KSSF Stinson. So I think we've already got this. I want to re I feel like Roswell has too many factoids, but we're going to, we're going to read some of them on the way out. I want to learn some Roswell history so I can educate myself. All right, day two, flight two. I've already got the plan. Boom, there it is. But we're gonna be flying a different plane, so it's gonna be a shorter flight than, than what it says. We are upgrading again. The 172 six pack was cool. I enjoyed that a lot. Now, we get to check out something a little faster, a little bit more nimble. And also another first time flight, the banana. The Textron Aviation Beechcraft Bonanza G36. Never flown it before. 176 uh, knots true airspeed. Cruising speed. Max altitude of 18,500. And an endurance of 6 hours. Range of almost 1,000 nautical miles. Only one livery that I have. That's what I was flying. This one, uh... This looks like a pretty cool plane. It's one of the fastest single prop planes that we've got. There's a Las Vegas in New Mexico. J Mark, I'm all turned around. I don't know where I live. Uh, I don't... I would love to try and take off from the exact spot I landed. I landed at runway 35. Taxied over to here. So I'm going to say we were at around gate ramp 50. We can take off from the exact same... Okay, this is only going to be... Two, this is actually shorter than the last flight, believe it or not. Because this plane is just blazing by comparison. Now, I learned from our fuel shortage last time that it would probably be wise to start with at least a little bit more just to have extra. All right, that should be more than enough for any disaster that might strike. We should be able to make it all the way down to Austin and Houston. And then there's Corpus Christi down there. Laredo and McAllen right on the border. So you can actually use these to kind of trace that Texas chin, if you want to call it that. Be sure to put on your novelty tinfoil hat before you leave Roswell. <laughs> I might need one on the way out. We are going to hit up Midland Air Park. And Midland also has an international air and space location. 
So maybe learn a little bit about that on the way. I'm looking forward to flying this plane. All right, let me double check flight conditions. Let's get on live time. We may have been, it may have been a little generous with time of day for us uh, due to the reset. I think we were just lagging 30 minutes behind because it's now 8.03 local time. But I did have it set to lifetime. It's all good. I enjoyed the sunset. And it was pretty much dark um, once we landed. Okay, we're going to say... Just pick a small general aviation. And I think we're good to go, chat. We just need to change ATC flight number 2-2. Two, two. I'm looking forward to this plane. It should be a lot of fun. And we're going to get to see some nice cityscapes. We get to actually fly through San Antonio to get to Stinson. So I'm looking forward to that. Uh, we're not going to San Antonio International, however. So we're going to fly past that on the side. And um, some nice nighttime flying. But before we do this, as we load in here, we have something that we need to do. I think you all know what it is. Come with me on an adventure. The map. It is time to update the map. Let's grab the light. There you go. Got some light in here. There we are in the good old USA. All right, hopefully you guys can see uh, where we've gone so far and where we plan on going. I'll just mute the game for a moment and turn this on. And let's pick, uh, we gotta pick a color scheme, chat. What, uh, what color pin do you guys want? Green, blue, white. Or, well, what do we have so far? We got blue pins with orange strings, so we need a different color scheme. Green for aliens. Okay. Um, the USA map is green, so maybe green pins... Why different? We're doing a different uh, combo for every day we're flying. So sometimes we're going to fly further and sometimes we're going to fly not as far. Today, <laughs> today was going to be a... <laughs> it could still be a three-flight day. I don't mind. Listen, I don't mind getting comfy and doing some more night flying. I like it, actually. All right, what color uh, yarn do we have? We got all these yarns. We could do like, um, well, the Southwest is kind of red. What do you guys think about like red and yellow? What about like yellow pins with uh, red yarn? That's very like deserty southwest. Orange pins, light blue yarn. That's just the opposite of what we already did. I did like the idea of the green, though. Why don't we do green and red? We'll just do Christmas colors. <laughs> or uh, green and yellow. 
Okay, green pins, yellow yarn. Sorry, chat. I'm not allowed to uh, combine colors in any way that you may already be familiar with, which, by the way, every single color combination that exists has already been used by some kind of major company. The New Mexico flag is red and yellow? Is it actually? Hold on, I'm trying not to stab myself with a pen. Alright, well if it's actually that, then let's just do that. Let's do what I said then. Why you guys make me doubt myself by calling it McDonald's? Okay. Yellow pins. So we actually only need one pin, but I need to cut the, um... I need to get the... The, the yarn package! Nice red color it is, isn't it? This is what we're all here for. Alright, so we're just gonna cut like a too long piece of this. And with a too long piece of this, have to pull out the pin that's already been done. the new yellow pin and pin it into Roswell so I gotta find Roswell now someone say this map is too small this map is is the size of a wall Got it right in Was Roswell. So, kind of a larger chunk overall in terms of just distance. And then we're on our way to San Antonio next. The world is just big, dude! What do you mean the map is... Look how big the world is! Maybe the world should be smaller for the map to be bigger. Shrink the world. I know, right? That's what I'm saying. Another little piece. Another little leg of the journey, chat. Big world. Okay.
Now let me fix the camera. And then we will be good to go. Ooh, it's spooky outside. Very dark and scary. <laughs> Let me update, um... The title. We're going Roswell to San Antonio in a new quick plane. This thing is fast. All right, you guys want to see me staring into the sun? Basically, that's what's happening right now. It's so bright! Ah, there. Okay. Much better. And, uh, thanks Kyra Toby for doing the Earth and the plane log. I mean, at this particular moment, anyway. So let's take a look at that. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Are you guys doing something in the background? So this is our first, first total flights three. <laughs> oh, the errors. Ah, the errors. I forgot about that. The Cessna 172 Skyhawk. Nice, nice pick, by the way. Um, La Choya Air Park. Tucson, Arizona to Roswell. Went the wrong way after takeoff. Error 2, dead. <laughs> and there's the highlights. Uh, every takeoff and landing has been clipped. And apparently the errors are somewhat being clipped if you want to keep up on exactly what's happened, which is hilarious. Um, if you want to see a summary of each of these flights, there they are. Save you some time, maybe, but the whole flights are always enjoyable, if I do say so myself. Okay, and the Earth is also being updated, but since we just did the, the map, I won't be redundant and make you look at that. You can look, click on it, though, if you want to. The, both links are in the same command. If you do exclamation plane, you have access to both those resources at any point in time. The kids will love the playback of your trip at Christmas. I hope so. How far do you think we'll be by Christmas? <laughs> Don't get many op options for errors in flight sim. Second error and you're dead. Thank you, Dre RG. He says, I was born in Roswell. Well, that's where we're going to take off from. I know it's hard to see, but once we get the in the plane and turn the lights on, it won't be that hard to see. Plus, we'll be able to see Roswell in the distance. All right, let's... um, Let's do the wheel. We got to do the wheel. I don't want to do the wheel, but we got to do the wheel. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. To the wheel! I gotta spin it twice and I might have to reload this save. We'll see. Oh, thank you again, Liuta, for making the art. For every error that is committed on a flight, uh, which are very rigidly defined by me, we have to spin the wheel at least once. So. I don't have a... I should have a button to spin the wheel. I'm going to make a button to spin the wheel so I don't have to go to the website and click it every single time, okay? Okay, one sec. Uh, what can I delete? Eh, these are all useful. 
I can't really delete any of these. I just need a larger um, <laughs> stream deck. <laughs> I guess I, I guess I could do a folder. Okay. Uh, anyway, the wheel. Here we go. No more stall. Only spin. Spin the wheel of disaster. We're up to ten subs. Could be given to the community instead of one. We up to the, we up the stakes from one to five is the minimum, and ten would be the maximum. That's a reasonable amount that I'm not embarrassed by. Go. Give it three good pushes. <sighs> This could dramatically affect this next flight. I, I didn't click anything. I didn't click anything. I think it just queued up both pushes and then released it. I promise. I was pulling for oil failure there. I can't keep getting it. There has to be two spins anyways. So let's just get this. There's another spin coming because there were two errors. So we may as well just get this out of the way. Ten gift subs. That was the big one. Okay, here you go. It says what it says. The cockpit has been informed that those of you pushing the call button repeatedly above your seat have mysteriously lost your luggage. Wait, that's not Please mine. Please contact our customer service department upon arrival. I will give you the number as we approach the gate. Flight attendants have informed the cockpit that there are at least 10 of you using the overhead storage compartments as monkey bars. Please return to your seats or I will turn this plane around. Uh, War of the World says... I misunderstood. I think I misunderstood. Wait, did you think I was asking for 10 subs on the wheel? I... I think I should have made that clear. That I was the one giving them. They're from me to you. <laughs> uh, War of the Worlds, why'd you just pay for the subs that I paid for? Now we're just break even net zero. Uh, whatever. The only winner here is people in chat. So if you are Donut Smuggler, Kuza Muza, Thumpertron, uh, Krien, Brackman, Muzgrob, Kid Pro Quo, Green Thing LP, Brogantic, and Noted Yurd. You just got gifted a sub from War of the Worlds, and I guess these are, this is my team. Uh, Birdman Coon, Zotan, A Friendly Stand, Spider Jam, Ethereal Psyche, Sweet Leaf, Kitchen Ninja, B Dizzle, Paul Delos, and I'm Toonsis. Enjoy. We have one more spin to go, though. It ain't over. Spin the wheel. All right, I clicked it once. Hands are off. <sighs> Enjoy your gift subs, and thanks for being here, everybody, so you could receive one of those. Now what? I'm actually thankful that at least one of them was subs, so I don't have two disasters on the same flight. Oil failure. Okay. So, oil failure... Better than complete failure. That's why complete failure is smaller. You think you're a real Etal fan. Do you know how many channel points I have? I send all messages through highlights. Get on my level chat. Yield carbs, please. <laughs> okay. Uh, here's what we're going to do. For the... For the Oil failure. I have no idea what to even do with that knowledge. But if we go to assistance... Wait, do I have to do this before the flight takes off? I believe I do. Let's just... I saved this flight plan, so it's fine. You're, you're welcome. I was rooting for a failure. I don't know how... What rooting for oil failure actually does. So, load the flight plan.
Okay. Day two, flight two. Check. Same plane. No livery. Okay. Weight check. Fuel check. Failures. Oil leak. Right? No, it was oil failure. Enable failure on. That doesn't guarantee that there's going to be for sure a disaster. It just means that it can. Let's say we landed on oil system twice in one series of spins, then it would be armed. Armed means guaranteed to happen on your next flight. So now we have the potential for an oil system failure uh, on this flight. It exists. That's what the wheel of disaster gets us. The thing is, I have no idea how to tell if the oil system is failing, and I have no idea how to stop it from failing. So, if anybody in chat wants to help when that does happen, what do we even do? I don't know, Kyra Toby. I have no idea. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Alright, we were... <laughs> we were on... You just call a mechanic. I guess you just call a mechanic. We were on, like, ramp 52? Okay, looks good. Fly, make sure flight conditions aren't back. Go. If the plane falls out of the sky, I think that means the oil failed. What I don't like about the failures in this game that none of them are recoverable is eight flavors of emergency landing. Oh, spoilers. Don't you report it and make an emergency landing with an oil failure happens. <sighs> well, if an oil failure does happen, we're going to have a really fun emergency landing in the middle of the flight. Made more fun by the fact that we have no visibility because it's nighttime. It's not really a spoiler, but I was just joking. Here we are. Look at this short checklist compared to the last plane, so... I know you can't see anything. If you're on your phone, you will be able to see absolutely nothing, uh, at least for a minute. Until I get the floodlights on in here. Phone users out. Hmm. I think hair is interfering! How about that? It's perfect until I try and look too far up. Which I guess, this is fine. Okay, this is fine. Now. Never flown this plane before. Parking brake. Is now set. I think this defaults to parking brake not on. All avionics on. Yeah, just turn on all the avionics. Are you kidding me, you nerd? All right, flashlight should be left alt plus L. There we go. Now we can at least see what's going on. I got a headlamp chat like uh like I'm wearing IRL. There's avionics. Air conditioning. What do you mean all avionics, bro? This is this tells me nothing. There's like f six total things. No, all avionics off. Yeah, it is. Just turn on the plane, idiot. Thank you. All right, avionics are off. <laughs> Fuel selector fullest. Hang on. All right, that makes more sense. It was too small. Fuel selector fullest tank. Okay, so do we have to swap these? Because we got like one. We got left main, right main. Should both be full. Battery and alternator switch on.
Ding. Okay. Got a nice screen. Um, all Garmin dials with some regular dashboard uh, screen went dark. Help, I can't see where I'm going and how fast I'm going. Indicators over there on the right. Starting the engine is mixture rich. Prop RPM to max. Throttle full. Uh, there you go. Fuel pump boost on until flow peaks, then off. Uh, okay, hang on. I'll find it. There's flaps. Fuel pump boost. If I was a fuel pump boost, there's really not that many buttons. Without looking at chat for answers, because I know that what they're saying, ox fuel pump high. Could be that. Until it peaks. I don't know what that means. Throttle open half an inch. Well, you screwed it. Why does it start with throttle full? What am I even looking at here? Talix is right there. <laughs> it's in pain. Uh, what plane is this? This is the Bonanza. This is my first time even attempting to fly it. I don't think the plane is actually going to work since you enabled the oil failure already. The oil system is just destroyed from the start of the flight. Pepe laugh, he doesn't know. I thought, wait, did I fundamentally misunderstand about how the disaster thing works? Is this the wrong pump boost? Well, let's just find out. Nope, it's the right one. Is it because you toggled the arm switch? Did I toggle the arm switch? Not hard to figure out. Only takes a second. Well, the wheel of disaster has struck early. Unexpectedly so. This is where saving your flight plan is a godsend. Failures. Oil system. Enable failure on. Did I misunderstand what this actually means? I thought enable failure meant that it could happen. Armed means that it will happen. Gamer death bot already, dude. What's the point of having a failure that occurs before you take off? That's kind of what I'm trying to figure out. My bad for assuming, I guess. Armin, it maybe set it to two times or three times the length of the flight. Hmm. But then that guarantees it's going to happen. F 
fails in 10 to 240 minutes. Why don't we do like, okay, just because we don't want it to 50 50. It shouldn't be a 50 50. All right, how about like 30 minutes? Let's do six times the normal length of the flight. The flight's two hours. So that's um, 120 minutes. So let's do like 660 minutes. That's 11 hours. So it's a two hour flight. There's a 20% chance that it triggers, which still is higher than I figure. Because what I thought was the oil system will only fail if I do something bad. But it seems like it can just fail regardless of whether I actually do anything to deserve it or not. Because, like, when I see a fire, I'm thinking you had the engines on the whole time. Do 666. Alright, how's that? I feel like this is guaranteed. <laughs> I feel like this is guaranteed to trigger. All right, let's do it. This should be two and a half hour, three hour flight tops. This means we'll never make it to San Antonio. Now we're doomed. What are you do supposed to do in response? Emergency landing, I guess. Which could cascade into another failure afterwards, but we're good. Let's just take it from the top. Uh, that would be why I couldn't get the engine to turn on. If we die thanks to oil failure, does it count as an error? Crash is a crash, I guess. A crash is a crash. Gucci, thank you for the brand new sub. That's not your name, but it's close enough. Thank you for uh, subscribing and welcome to the stream. Rip retrogrades 50,000 channel points. Have you said anything more about sending postcards and such? I said, uh, I'll try to get that squared away for the next time we stream this game, Sonic fan. Hopefully, if I can. Uh, War of the World says, I know there's a mention of an art show. Can we also do a Halloween-themed one in October? If you want to submit Halloween art, then go ahead and do that. But I'm not going to do two separate ones in the same month. You know? But if you want to make it Halloween-themed, then by all means, go for it. Still trapped in Roswell? Yeah, I had some difficulties <laughs> with uh, with the failures. All right, this is good. This is all perfect. Okay, fuel mixture to rich. Prop RPM. Throttle full. Fuel boost pump on until flow peaks, then off. Define flow. I still have no oil pressure. Obviously, because there's nothing happening right now. But, uh, define flow. Fuel flow gauge is on the display as F flow. Right here. Okay. Until flow peaks. Red is a peak, yeah? Define peaks. It's not moving. That, okay, peak would be what it can move to, I guess. Right, to 1,000 to 1,200 RPM. We actually have pressure. So that's good. About 1,100. Oil pressure in the green. Avionics master on. We can talk to ATC now. Get our lights on. Nav, beacon, strobe, um, turn panel lights on, 
taxi landing. I guess you do landing when you're doing takeoff. Flood is just interior. We can turn the headlamp off and uh, probably turn the flood off. Well, you guys can't really see anything either way. All right, fuel boost pump, double check that it's off. It is. Parking brake released, and that's all the information they're going to give me. So let's just tune. Hi, guys. Let's tune ground. And request taxi to depart to the east. Roswell ground, minus 2-2 two two with Oscar request taxi to the active east departure. Two, two, taxi, two, Crew just chilling. They're just hanging out. <laughs> Still wearing sunglasses at night. Taxi two and hold short of runway three five using taxiway B. Contact tower when ready. Taxiing hold short runway three five. All right, chat. I gotta take a gamer death break before we take off here. I'm sorry to do this to you, but we're good to go. I just gotta uh, take Midas out again because it's been three hours, and I I don't want to forfeit my responsibilities IRL. And also, you should stretch. All right, let's do that. Let me get a refill. The, the pilot needs um, another complimentary New Mexico drink. And then we got a nighttime takeoff here. The pilot may not take breaks during takeoff. Well, it's either now or never. Because once I get up in the air, yeah, everybody get up and stretch. And then we're going to start our nighttime flight to San Antonio, Texas. Should be a very fun new plane experience. Looks very fancy. All digital displays. I'm I'm all about it. Nice change of pace from what we were doing before. But yeah, get up and stretch, chat. I'll give you guys um Did you see me almost knock that? Did you see that? I almost knocked it over. I was about to start uh going for the panic recovery. Kyra Toby, good luck taking a picture of this. It'd probably be better to wait until we get to San Antonio, because you're not going to be able to, <laughs> to see this. <laughs> it doesn't exist. It's a ghost in the night. <laughs> Maybe there'll be more lights in San Antonio. <laughs> I don't want to stretch. Too bad. Get up and do it anyways. Thanks for hanging out with me tonight, chat. Keep me company while we fly and learn a little bit about our world. We'll be back in just a moment. See you in about three to five minutes. Bear be.
Hey, I had a whole chicken Alfredo pizza. Where's mine? Did you bring some for me? Rap boys? Ooh. Sorry, I ate it. Oh. Well, that sucks. Ooh, look how bright that is. The foot cam, dude, sucks. Now, engine's on, correct? All we've got to do is get out of here. Midas is thirsty. He actually didn't have to go to the bathroom, which I am suspicious of. Hey, what is the sensitivity level for the joystick? I don't think I've adjusted it. So I guess default? I did adjust my foot pedals. And you know what, now that you mention that, I'm going to make him even less sensitive. Sensitivity. It's already at negative 67%. Let's do negative 75. Dead zone of like 8%. Okay. That should be better. That should be better. How we feeling? Hey, how we feeling?
cheers chat to another good North American flight. The good people of New Mexico have provided me, Ben Elnor, with some delicious wild turkey and coke. With a generous extra portion because of the size of the cup. Alright, now the gnat actually does have some food. Because I got some stuff. But anyway, cheers, chat. I haven't seen the gnat in a little while. Hopefully it's gone. So, we've already got clearance, I think. I don't know if they canceled it because I took too long. Taxiing hold short runway 35 using taxiway B. Okay. There's my yoke. We're going to hit the parking brake. And... Watch yourself on the wings. Dude, this thing is like, doesn't turn very well. <laughs> That's fine. I'm navigating. This is gonna be a fun aircraft. This thing is quick. The Bonanza. What's the, what's the proper name? Is this Textron Aviation? Are you going to visit a lot of countries, or are you just going to go as fast as possible? No, this is going to be a very scenic route trip around the world. We're going to use each plane multiple times. There's going to be a lot of stops. I'm going to have to start doing better than two flight streams if I ever want to make it, dude. Um, I'm, I'm toying with the idea of just doing this again on Sunday just to try to catch up for lost time, but we'll see. Maybe we'll do, like, Crusader Kings tomorrow, then... Flight Sim Sunday, then Crusader Kings Monday or something. The Bonanza. Beechcraft. Wait, what? Beechcraft, but they are owned by Textron. I got you. Because I'm a little bit behind schedule. But I was anticipating three flights a stream. And I think a third flight tonight is still doable. I think we could get three flights today. I just really wanted to do two daytime flights. But... I'm not going to apologize because nighttime flights have their own challenges and their own beauty to them. All right, we got to... I can't... Dude, the taxi... I can't even do this inside the cockpit because I can't even see. There we go. Yeah, I would not be able to navigate this taxiway without... It took me really, 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 really far... Oh, wait. We got, like, 1.3 nautical miles before I even get to my spot, from what I can tell. This is a long taxi. This is an international airport, though, is it not? I can't wait for nighttime emergency land. <gasps> oh, no. The 30 minutes were ticking by while I was just sitting there with my engine turned on, huh? Where is this you're starting from? Uh, should be Roswell... New Mexico Crow K R O W. I think I up did I update the title chat? I think it's in the title. We also have an exclamation flight plan command if you'd like. We also have an exclamation plane command which has two really good resources if you want to see what we've done already versus um, what we are currently doing. We got a bus. On the taxiway. Yeah, I see the other traffic. I'm coming to a stop as fast as I can. Hold position minus two two. <laughs> Where are you going, minus bus? Two two, continue, taxi. Roger minus two two. It's like 50k population here. That's pretty cool. Fun fact, international airports just mean that they can have an on-duty customs agent. Nothing to do with size. You can find a lot of tiny border airports that are international. Huh. Just an on-duty customs agent, huh? What is this? Red light, green light bullshit? Hold position, minus two, two. Why don't I have right away? I'm a plane, dude. Roger, minus two, two.
Supposedly being a customs agent at a tiny airport is a really cushy job since they are legally required to be there all day, but don't have to do anything. Because nobody's actually <laughs> coming in from out of the country. Alright, this is quite a brisk taxi that we're doing here. There's a nice little, like, action cam for you. We haven't seen any aliens yet, but we didn't technically fly over Roswell yet. We just kind of landed direct at the airport. The craziest thing to me was learning uh, as we flew over White Sands that we accidentally missile struck Mexico twice. In the 40s and then in the 70s. That was crazy to me. Like, that missile could have landed anywhere, it just happened to land in mountains. You know what I mean? Like, that- that could have been more than the international incident that it probably already was. Imagine if we had, like, an accidental missile detonation inside of an actual populated area instead of just hitting a random mountain somewhere. Oopsie whoopsie, I loosed one of my missiles again. <laughs> That's what I mean, there's so much just, like, random history in all these places that you would never expect. Like, if we just flew over White Sands, normally be like, ooh, pretty White Sands, cool. Uh, and someone in chat's like, I've been there, to the monument. It's like, oh, that's neat. By the way, uh, we launched, uh, something that sounded like a V2 in, like, 1947, and it landed in Mexico. Did it have a payload? I have no idea. You'd have to look more into it. But there was another one in 70, in the 70s. You would think they have a payload, because that's the whole reason that they land the missiles here. In White Sands. It's the middle of nowhere. I- I thought that was the whole point, was that they were testing... ...in some- a place that they couldn't hurt anybody. Yeah, navigating this, uh, without the... ...heads-up display would be just miserable. But what's nice about this is it's going to be nigh impossible to get turned around on takeoff, like we did on the first flight today. Because I got, uh, my Garmin GPS already ready to go. Alright, let's start hitting the brakes a little bit. I have to do handbrakes because I don't have toe brakes on these pedals. Oh, dude, the turn ratio on this is incredibly low. This is clearly not a ground vehicle. I'm ready for the next suburban e-landing. Dude, the emergency landing here is gonna be just terrible. All right, come to a stop. Okay, let's tune tower. And request takeoff clearance. Roswell tower minus two two at runway three five, ready for takeoff east departure. Minus two two cleared for takeoff runway three five departure. Tree 5 departure, acknowledge. Cleared for takeoff runway tree five. All five right, two, two. whatever runway number you get, chat, indicates a heading. So if we got clearance for runway 35, we are going to be taking off going that way, which is basically north. So, if you look up ahead, you can see this is taking me that way. I think it was going to want us to turn around, right, chat? I want to get hours into Bonanza IRL to fly cross-country with friends, but the local club doesn't have any. How hard is it to get certified for a new type of plane? But yeah, see, it's making me do this weird, funky loop. Why is the taxi, like, pointing me... I don't know. It wants me to be there, but we, we can make the turn ourselves. Because we're at the end of the runway. Every runway is actually two runways. So if they tell me 3-5, it indicates the heading I should have either, like, if I was arriving at 3-5, that would be the heading that I'm supposed to take to, to, to land. Chat, am I getting this right, or am I actually totally wrong on this? I don't know why I'm doubting myself at the last second. But see, we're facing 3-5-1. We're basically dead on, so 3-5. Uh, this is also... 
If you go the opposite direction, a runway going the other way. So this is 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So this is also 3, 3, 5, and 1, 7. So it'd be 17. So if they tell me 17, then I would need to be at the other end coming back this way. Does that make sense? So whatever runway they give you is directly related to the heading that you should be taking. Too many numbers, brain confused. Well, that's because you don't know that there's 360 degrees in a circle. If you knew that there's 360 degrees in a circle, you wouldn't be as confused. Are you aware that if you turn 360 degrees, you'll be facing the direction that you were facing a moment ago? And if you turn 180 degrees, then you're facing behind you? That's what a heading is, okay? Now you know how to use headings. All right, so this is where we're going to start, right here. Hey, what's a circle? So this heading wheel, north, south, east, west, is that, what I just said. So we're facing basically north, which is both 0 and 360, because it's the same. So south is 180 degrees, because it's behind you, right? Therefore, east is 90, so it's 0, 90, 180, 270, 360. So that's a how, how you get a heading. So when they give me a heading, uh, that's how you find it. It's just north, south, east, west, and assign 360 degrees to that, and it tells you exactly which way you're supposed to go. Basically, it's like a more fine-tuned way of them saying, like, ah, go north! Okay, but, like, how far north? Uh, 350. See? It's like a way to specify that. Now, do it in radians. No. Uh, No. Okay, chat, we got a couple things to check. We got full rich right here. We're going to do flaps down. Okay, flaps are now down for takeoff. Does this aircraft have fixed landing gear? Or no? We've never flown this before, so that can't count as an error. Go mostly north, please. So what's fun about nighttime takeoffs is we can actually use this screen to see where the runway is for our purposes. What did Mostly Lost say? That was arcane nonsense? Oh, 2 pi? Ooh, 2 pi. 2 pi sounds like my stage name. Okay, uh, on this thing, I want to zoom in a little bit. Looks like we got our autopilot system here. We'll be looking at that. I don't know how to zoom in. This is... There we go. Okay. One zoom. Does this flight count as IFR? I don't think so. I think we're still on VFR. We probably could have done IFR. We can switch to IFR on the way. Chat, you ready to go? Three, two, one. Let's get out of here. Takeoff time. Alright, once we get above that red on the menu, we'll be going fast enough to start thinking about nose and back. But I'm going to build up a little bit more speed on the runway because we got a long runway. So we may as well get to like something closer to 70 to 80 and just gently. And we are up. Okay, going to flaps up. We still got a long way to go on this runway before we even hit the end of it. Hit the landing gear, which has made a noise, so I think uh, there actually is not fixed landing gear on this. Pretty good thing that you would want to know before you actually take off. So what I'm doing right now is just watching the screen. We're going to start turning.
knowledge. Welcome to Roswell, everybody. Or at least part of it. Yes, Bonanza gear go up. Well, I pushed the landing gear button anyways just to see if it would happen, and it did. Okay. That looks good. We won't be needing you anymore. At least not for right now. So what I'm going to do is kind of just line up. I can see where our course is in the pink. I'm not going to take too direct of a route. I'm going to go ahead and just get us manually going in the right direction. So I'm going to need to trim up. There we go. Okay, see now I can kind of take my hands off while the nose is climbing. So what I'm angling for right now is... It doesn't really matter what uh, height we want to since... What uh, altitude we want to be at because it's kind of up to us. So I think in just like seven to 9,000. We probably want to switch to IFR... Um, just so that we can see if there's any mountains, you know, because I'm not going to be able to see anything. I'm doing an A320 and there's something magical about watching other people fly while I cruise. That's, uh, you got a flight in your flight, you know? There's too many flights in there. And if you can see it, here's the Bonanza. Flying out of Roswell back there. So Roswell's all nice and lit up. That way, San Antonio. Texas in darkness. Speaking of darkness. Now is probably a good time. To turn off taxi and landing lights. Gonna leave strobe, beacon, and nav on, and also the panel, which is what you, allows you to see all these buttons when I zoom in. This plane seems really gentle and easy to fly so far. Minus two to you are leaving my airspace. It's not really fighting me that much in terms of trim. Just a little bit of hang to the right, but nothing bad. Roswell Tower minus two two frequency change. What's the random single light in the sky? Well, that's, you know. Whenever you enter or leave Roswell, you have to get scanned by the powers above. And they're the ones that give you permission to leave or enter. Uh, we could request IFR. Chad, do you want to do you want to do IFR? I, I feel like I'm not going to be able to see the mountains anyway. We may as well. Albuquerque Center minus 222 two miles northwest of November Mike 20. Because I can't see anything. For those of you that don't know what that means, it means instrument flight rules. But the reason why that's important is because basically air traffic control is going to tell us uh, where and how we should be flying. So they are going to guide us the whole way. Minus two two cleared to Sierra Tango India November Sierra Oscar November Mike Uniform. So right now it's basically all in my hands. And um, I could do whatever I want within reason. Okay, so they're giving me instructions specifically to change my altimeter, which I did. Climb and maintain 11,000 feet. Okay, I can do that. And then we can request altitude increases or decreases, but 11,000 is just pretty good all around. It's probably going to be fine. Can you turn the headlights on because I can't see the road? Hi, Chad from Argentina. Hello, Mute Axel. Welcome to our Roswell to San Antonio flight, uh, where we're about to figure out how to get the um, how to get the autopilot on in a new plane, which is always an adventure. I like that the nav ball up there has its own little light. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I haven't even done any east to west, like left right trim, and it seems pretty gentle. We're still just on a, on a slow climb. So let's practice with autopilot. Because we got AP here. What's this caution for? I don't know, but there's no alert. So don't ask me, chat. Okay. Um, let me try and correct this. Because it's... 
Alright, bro. I forgot being on IFR makes you uh, get harassed. I'll expedite that climb for you, my friend. Let's try nosing up to the 10 degree mark, okay? We're not going fast enough for him. So I'm gonna go. F Is it okay to go full throttle while you are um, while you're climbing? It's just a pitot alert. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> isn't that my? Isn't that the thing you're supposed to worry about to change your indicated airspeed? This is a lot of pitch for not a lot of climb. That's kind of what I'm worried about. Um, interesting. Cruise climb is full throttle, but with RPM down to 2,500. Like, when you say RPM down, first of all, RPM's at 2,650 right now, so it's still in the green. So full throttle and then pull down blue lever until the RPM listed there hits 2,500, which I almost got. Yeah, why are we climbing very much? Did you adjust mixture? No, because that's probably what it is. Yeah. Because the last plane had, like, a designated mixture for when you get above 300 feet. They didn't care about this plane. Enough to actually write anything beyond the basics. Pulling back prop RPM is kind of like shifting up in a car. Well, I've never driven stick, so not a great reference point for me. Welp. <laughs> Welp, indeed. Yeah, I mean, we're definitely climbing now. Maybe a bit too much. Try not to lose that much speed. Ooh, it's dark. Chat, it's dark. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Yeah, the RPM shouldn't actually matter that much, but the mixture did help a ton. Yeah, the mixture did help. I agree. Okay, so I was going to try and figure out the autopilot now. So we got autopilot engage, flight director, which chat told me to turn on last time. Heading select, altitude hold mode, nav mode, which I need to switch. This is touchscreen. Do we do CDI until we hit GPS? I'm assuming. Yeah, more RPM would climb faster as far as I know, just better for fuel economy. I gotcha. I gotcha. Flight director just displays the pink thing on your MFD. Sorry, I'm like veering off course while I read chat. Don't text and drive. MFD that basically shows you where you need to fly without doing it for you. We're supposed to be going up to 11,000, yeah? I'm climbing very fast. I don't care what he says. We just should climb as safely as we can without being rushed. FLC and vertical speed are related. I have learned those, but I don't remember how to do FLC now approach mode for landing purposes or thereabouts. All right, so if I just engage autopilot, are we going to instantly die? It is dark, so I'm a little scared. So let's do altitude hold mode on first. Okay, we really need to get this going, so I stop just 
trying to drive left. To, uh, hey, co-pilot, could you uh, steer us while I try and figure out the autopilot? That would be lovely. Thank you. You're so nice. Chat, you're a good autopilot, you know? Well done. Okay. Uh, altitude hold mode. Let's increase. This is our selected altitude at 3,600. So the goal is to raise this towards 11,000. Bam. Exactly where we want it to be, yeah? Exactly. We're maintaining a good speed. We got a good heading. I'm happy with that. Okay, so now that we have that on, I'm going to try engaging nav mode on and autopilot on and instantly nosedive. Exactly what I feared. Exactly what I feared. I even... Tr okay, every single plane's autopilot, dude. Minus 2-2, please expedite your climb to 11,000 feet. It's a different beast. Because it's set to 3,500. Well, okay, how do I confirm the 11,000? Sometimes you click the knob. Sometimes you just... Click altitude again. You're set to alt hold. Alt hold. Press VS. Press Alt. Please expedite your climb. I like when I'm getting multiple uh, different buttons to press from chat. That makes me feel good because it means one of you's wrong. <laughs> and if one of you's wrong, then it just proves that it's not as easy as it looks. Okay, that's all I need. I don't need both of you to be wrong. I just need one person in chat to be wrong every time there's a back seat. Because it's like, see? One of you didn't know the right button to press at this exact moment. All right. This, this turns altitude hold mode off. So what am I actually supposed to click? Turn off the magnetos to enable autopilot. Isn't magnetos just my ignition? All right, I don't read Kelly Machess comments. I only read Ace Tech comments and everybody else in chat. Because uh, Kelly Machess just writes acronyms and names of buttons and levers. And I can't tell... No descriptions whatsoever about location on the screen. Uh, I've got a pilot's license, so I just abbreviate everything. What, you didn't know what I was talking about? Okay, well, just flip off the magnetos, hit the altitude again, and if you pop the switch and then move the clutch at the correct time, then you'll be able to shift gears in order to maintain my altitude. It's easy. Minus two, two, please expedite your climb to Why are you making it so difficult? Pump it cock. Turn off engine to do sick flip. You have to counter Magneto's power over metal by using plastic weapons. Thank you. All right. Anyway, the person that said, I promise you it's VS mode. Okay, I, I know what vertical speed is, but I actually have no idea how to change it in this particular plane. Do a barrel roll. Do a barrel roll. Now press nose up. Stop making, stop just writing random buttons. To the right of VS. To the... Wait, you just keep, how do I, where do I see the indicator? Right here? No, I'm at, am I 1,800 feet? Okay, never mind. This plane sucks. All right, we're at one, okay, here we go. 1,000 feet per second, or per minute. We wanna get to 11,000 feet. If I know we're way off course, it's fine. Then we're gonna turn AP back on, and we should see magic happen. All right, let me explain to chat what just happened. Number one. It is going to, since we are on the correct GPS mode, so step one is change CDI. Shut up! This is why we never fly IFR, because you're so annoying, ATC. In fact, the next thing I'm going to find is how to... You're, you're not even giving me, like, a acknowledgement. You're just, you're just chafing my ass. 
This is my first time flying a new plane. What are you like? My my chat right now? What are you? Hang on. Is that Kelly McChess on the mic? Okay. Well, that all make now it makes sense. Anyway. Um, so what we need to do is first of all turn CDI to GPS. What that means is it's going to follow my literal GPS. See this pink line? It's going to try and line us up perfectly with that line. Okay. Step one. Step two in this plane is turn on the altitude hold mode, okay? Once we've done that, you're gonna see a number here. We set it for 11,000 feet by turning this wheel until it goes up to our designated height, okay? Step three, we need to turn on vertical speed mode, which is typical. However, in this plane, instead of a knob, they put it on two buttons. which allow you to stall the plane. We will learn why that is not a good idea. It's fine. I lowered it to 500. And we're going to lower it from that to 300. This is why you don't listen to air traffic control when they tell you to hurry up, okay? because you might stall your plane. What's that? It's the sound that you're going too slow. If we hit the candy cane, we have to get a haircut. I'm pretty sure it's one of the requirements. So uh, if you don't want to go out and get a COVID cut, then go faster, basically. <laughs> Laura, Laura's like, uh, excuse me? All right, how slow do we need to ascend in this plane, dude? 200 feet per minute. Is that too fast? Or Level out and regain st speed. Right now, you're just skimming the air at this point. Near stall. Bro, skimming the air. Perfect. That's exactly what I want to do. It's just falling forward at 65 knots. It's like entering Earth's atmosphere. We just got to keep falling faster and faster. All right. Well, I'm at zero. I think it's just still trying to hang on. Let's just turn, uh... Ten thousand. Blink. Blink once. Lessons from Kerbal Space Program, basically, yes. Meanwhile, ATC is still, uh... Still hurting me. Press the red button. Select re reversionary mode. All right, do we have enough speed to do a climb again? I'm still at, like, max engines right now. I don't even remember where I was in that explanation. But anyway, so we want to hit 11,000 feet. So we're going to mouse wheel up to 11,000. We're going to hit vertical speed mode. It's already on. Then you choose how fast this zero indicates how fast you want to climb. Minus 2, 2, please expedite your climb to 11,000 feet. Bruh. I want to go up, I guess, at a slow rate, let's say 200 feet per minute, okay? So now we are going to start. The plane will automatically climb 200 feet per minute. There you go. So what's the difference in the pink line this is on and the pink line of this? KIS is ideal climb speed for this. 110 for cruise. Yeah, I mean, I I may have boosted it just to make sure we didn't stall. But I can kind of adjust the speed slightly. Nothing is the same thing. Okay, because someone in chat was like, you got to hit the nav button, Metallics. You're not even on the GPS. Minus two, two, please expedite but I feel like I'm exactly on the GPS. But that's the other fun thing about streaming this game. You've got to suss out real backseat versus the not backseat. I feel like ATC has very unrealistic expectations about how fast I can actually climb. 
I'm just gonna turn the RPM back up to 100%. Forget about fuel efficiency, we just gotta go. ATC being a Jeff right now, more or less. We're flying around the world. We are Hassan. We are. Modified says, I'm just a little bug that got stuck in your plane. Are you uh, the coffee gnat? Hello, Modified. What's up? All right, we're approaching dangerous levels of RPM. Fine, I'll turn that back down. That was almost perfect. Play with fuel mix a little bit, maybe. Not much change, if any. Alright, we're finally approaching 11,000 feet. It's just way up there. Hey, you want some cinematic camera angles? <laughs> this is it. Oh, we get the stars at least. <laughs> hey, uh, well, you, too bad. You can't see anything except the flashing of the plane. And also... chat you left Roswell to go to space all right uh, I'm gonna say no is not my max height like 14 to 18 thousand Hey, there you go. That's better. Let's just chill at 11,000. Turn up your gamma. Now that's called wait till sunrise. Which, by the way, you can just see the faintest of red glows back there. Jesus, yes, I'm the one that asked for 11,000, so I, I know. You didn't, that wasn't your instruction, that was my request. I'm the one that said that. So, they are so needy. Chad, I hope you brought a snack. Did you guys bring a snack for the flight? I got some cookies. Minus two two, contact MT Award Center on one three three decimal. He doesn't want to talk to me anymore. Going to one three three decimal one minus two two. Hey, we're tuned to Fort Worth. FT Worth Center minus two. Going to Texas, Chad. We're in Texas airspace now. The Dallas Fort Worth area. All right, let's do a little update. After, hold on, let me do this first. Got throttle back. about 80 percent we're at about 107 knots true airspeed or uh true airspeed is about 127 so i think we're booking it i think we're going pretty quick we should be going even faster than that right i thought the the true airspeed for this is like 160 am i crazy anywho let's take a look at the uh google earth and see where we are. First of all, let me do this. Check this out. Hey look, it's the flight that we just did. Wait. Well, close enough. We went to, uh, 
Where did it, did we land here? No. Whatever. Roswell, it's close enough. From Tucson. And now, we're on our way. Lubbock's gonna be to our north. Odessa and Midland, out in West Texas. And uh, we are gonna be heading to San Antonio. But, we're going at a pretty good clip. So, if we're already in Dallas-Fort Worth airspace, that's kind of odd, right? Does Fort Worth control this entire area? That's a, that's a big radius, dude. Roswell Aliens. Dude, my hometown is a stopping point. Would you ever play DCS? Maybe eventually, but it's definitely not high on my to-do list. Uh, we are more concerned with squadrons and games that I don't need to read a book in order to play. But maybe... I can tell you for certain this trip is better at night by plane than by car during the day. That is true. I have driven through West Texas before. Never again. This is bad, dude. So what are we over right now? Let's, um... We're heading towards Midland. By the way, is this correct for a cruising speed? 123? I thought this thing goes like 165. What's up with that funky engine audio? I don't know, Ace Tech. Don't ask me, I never flew this before. See, like, look at this. Goes up as you go higher. No, that's indicated airspeed. True airspeed does not go up as you go higher. Oil, fa oil failure, it's already failing. Like, the oil failure's already happened. But yeah, the, um... RPM is already basically maxed. Oil temp, regular. Oil pressure, regular. Going pretty slow, dude. Looks too lean. I'm about 50%. 47%. I just gave it more and we started slowing down. So, that one's wrong. Manifold, where's manifold pressure? The air over Texas is just too dense. You can max throttle if you have that back at all. Just need the RPM pulled down. Don't need to pull both. Um. I have no idea. It's because of our stinky oil fields. Fifteen thousand feet at one hundred and twenty five KIAS equals one hundred and sixty. We're at one hundred and thirty eight true airspeed. It says it right there. But thank you for doing the math. Because we're not at 125 yet. But I got an indicator on my... On my dash. That tells me how fast I'm going right now. But 
But for reference, man in is the top engine indicator on the left screen. Cruise range is 18 to 20. Man in is the top engine indicator on the left screen. Oh, incorrect. Go to Jeff Jail. Top engine indicate. Oh, right there. In the green. Why is the nose pitched up by 2.5 degrees? Because we're trying to stay above the horizon. So, like, if you are pointed at the horizon line, you're pointed at the point at which the ground becomes sky. So you'd be pointing down towards that. Right? The exact line. The blades change angle while keeping the same RPM, so it can be kind of confusing, but max throttle 2500 RPM is more powerful than low 2500 RPM. I think I get what you're saying. Because, like, right now we're about 2510 because I have turned RPM control down here at 93, but I still max the throttle so we're not hurting the engine, and we're going faster. We are going faster by far. We're at about 145 uh Knots true airspeed now, which is way better. So that did speed up quite a bit. And we're approaching about, a, we might settle down at about 124, 123 uh, indicated airspeed. Seems like we're, we're making pretty good progress now. I think it was just about throttling up while uh, RPM down to maintain that. I think that's going to be the difference maker. Hey, so if we take a peek outside, we might be able to figure out where we are. Let's see. We actually might be coming up on... We're heading a beeline towards Midland. So we might be passing, um, Hobbs and Lovington. It's not now, but like, we're on the way to Midlands. So actually, that's pretty reasonable. It might be Hobbs and Lovington. Dude, there's a Denver city. Look at all these farms. Look how many farms there are. Golf courses in there, too. It's a hell of a circuit board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically is. They do be farming. Hobbs, U.S. All right, let me find out something about Hobbs. Tom's Sharp Shop. <laughs> is this the first thing we're going to find out about Texas? Yeah. I do love yard work. I love cutting trees and using big sharp objects to do it. Come to Tom's Sharp Shop. Eagle Stadium. Eagle Nine. They do love eagles here. Uh, what do you guys got? Dice? There's a casino here? Where? Wh why can't I go? Low-key rooms and suites with slots and horse racing. They have gambling in West Texas? Low-key is a way to say, like, don't expect much. <laughs> uh, I thought gambling was illegal in Texas. No food in sight. Google's very, very picky about when it shows you a food place or not. Music World! Welcome to Music World. Alright, Monument. I don't know what this is supposed to be. It looks... Cr what? Oil. These are oil fields. All of them. Low-key equals low-quality. So, this is just like somebody's 
this is probably thousands of people's plots of land. Or maybe somebody just owns a whole big patch of it, but... That's a lot of oil, dude. I knew there was a lot of oil out there, but I didn't realize it was like, pick a spot, zoom in, and then bam. Oil, dog. All the way up and down. Is that place called Kermit? All right, we found the Muppets. Kermit US. I don't know if we'll pass over Kermit, but I feel like I need to know more about this place now. Kermit City Housing Authority. National Bank. Some churches, unsurprisingly. Oil Field Rental. I thought I got excited about food for a second. It's just a blurry image of an energy company. We will actually pass... Kermit will be out the right. Let's see where we're at. You're going around <gasps> the world. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so I wasn't in cinematic camera mode. I was in third-person mode. Interesting. Good to know. Autopilot, I think, is actually still engaged. <laughs> Everything's fine. <laughs> Barrel roll mode activated. So it would seem. That's all we got here. Oil and Muppets. I've stayed the night in Kermit before. How was it, Def 2? Yeah, we figured out what the circuit board was, and we actually didn't lose any altitude on that. So, I was... <laughs> spilt me beer. <laughs> I spilt me beer. Alright, this is free cam mode. So we can actually just find out exactly where we are, because there's an airstrip right there. That is not on the map. Oh yeah, there's Hob. We were just looking at that. I thought we were going to be passing it more... Where is it going to be to our north? Alright, so we are passing Hobbs. Monument would be to our right. Probably can't see it because all the oil fields would be down there, though. Alright, let's find the... Let's, let's do the custom area. I gotta find the best restaurant in Hobbs, Texas. Welcome to Texas, by the way. Hobbs Cafe is the first one that comes up. We'll see what TripAdvisor says. TripAdvisor says, number one, Saxony Steakhouse closes in 19 minutes. Dude, we could still get there. Saxony Steakhouse. Okay, let's check this out. On Yelp. Let's see what we got. <laughs> mm, not sure how I feel about this. I'll show I'll show you what we got. This these photos are from three years ago, for what that's worth. This looks like Chicken Alfredo. Now, one thing to note about this Chicken Alfredo is the visible liquid that appears to be at the bottom of the noodles. The chicken looks pretty decent, but there ain't that much, I, I don't know, it's just kind of like, it's, it's just kind of lazy. You just threw the chicken on top. The steak looks pretty dry, chat. That potato looks pretty dry, too. That is one of the worst baked potatoes I've ever seen. Okay, that looks like shit. <laughs> um, salad. House salad with ranch. New York strip. Chili verde. Verde. 
and tomatillo salsa topped with fried pickled onion strips. That looks decent, except for the cupped microwave rice. That steak looks decent, though. I'll give you that. That rice looks bad. Chocolate mousse cake. The worst part about chocolate mousse cake is that this, you know this costs $7.50 to order because it's a restaurant dessert. I honestly can't tell if that looks homemade or... I don't know. It looks pretty good. I'd probably eat that. Mushrooms. Cake. Steak and asparagus. The plate just looks kind of sad. Like, that roll... Has seen better days, dude. That steak looks pretty good. Fries look pretty good. These plates just seem really light, don't they? Like, this is a little... Uh, that is a dollop of sour cream. That's some Texas sour cream in that potato right there. Two onion rings. That's it? Those are some steak fries. Two onion rings. What's up with the one, two, three, like, baby rings? <laughs> all right. That's all the pictures. All right, now that I've set the stage, I'm going to read the first one-star review that I can find. This reads so much like rural upscale steakhouse. It does, yes. Hey guys, how's it going? Why is everyone... Oh, you guys are waving because he's waving. <laughs> I get it. Texans hate onion rings, apparently. All right, first one-star review I can find on Yelp. See a lot of three stars. I found one two-star. pretty good sign. No one-star reviews on the entire first page. That's a good sign for this restaurant. No one-star reviews on the second page. I see two-star reviews, but zero one-star reviews, period. Wow, we did it. We found a no, no one-star review restaurant. That means this place is pretty good. All right, well, first two-star review then. Non-asshole Texans. Hey, Talex, thanks for the gift stuff. Hey, my pleasure. Enjoy the next 30 days. All right, this is the first two-star. It might not even be funny, but here we go. From D. From Homestead, Florida, with 41 reviews. Don't even bother dining in. Take it to go. So I was looking for a small, intimate restaurant to take my hubby to for an early birthday dinner. Unfortunately, there isn't much in the hops, but the Saxony that fits what I was looking for. I made reservations, since a lot of reviews said it's a must once I got there, and I definitely saw why. The place is very small. It was cozy and intimate, just what I was looking for. But there was a bar literally right next to it, and instead of closing the doors, they had them open. And we were right next to them, so it defiantly killed the entire ambiance. On top of that, there was a fight at the bar, and the two men fighting almost rolled over into our table. There was a large party next to us, extremely loud. And to top everything off, the waitress was horrible. She got our order wrong three times, plus the food took forever. It was a horrible experience. We ended up taking our food to go. The only reason I'm giving it two stars is because the food was amazing. The ribeye steak is to die for, but the customer service is disgusting don't recommend anyone to tie, dine in just order to go <laughs> okay so they got an a plus on food even in the two-star review that's pretty good for this restaurant welcome to Hobbs I guess food amazing to die for two stars almost got embroiled in a bar fight on my table free entertainment <laughs> like the fight was their fault <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, one more two-star review because this place, I, I, I can't even find anything to fault it with right now. I have to go way down the second page. Not a single two-star review on the second page. Third page. 
This must be the best food in Hobbs, period. Okay. Acknowledge. Okay, we're tuning to Fort Worth from Fort Worth. FT Worth Center minus two two eleven thousand feet. Minus two two FT Worth Center continue as planned. FT Worth Center. <laughs> I like that the ATC doesn't know. All right, let's check our altimeter. Actually, did change because we got to a c the correct altitude. All right, uh, the next review. Very short. Sharon from Woodbridge, Virginia, says Chef Nick left. And so did most of the good wait staff. Very, very sad. The ribeye are thin and the shrimp rubbery. The steaks are now coming out one at a time to the table, or some are cold if they come out all at once. Anyway, three times is my limit until Chef Nick gets back. <laughs> Bob from Hobbs, New Mexico. Wait, are we in Texas or is Hobbs, New Mexico? We're not. Are we not in Texas yet? We're still in New Mexico. Right on the border. Okay, right on the border. Heard this was a pretty good steakhouse. Cheese sticks and salad were good. My wife got the fillet and I got the ribeye. The fillet was overly peppery. And my filet was not very good at all. Wow, you just said you got... You said you got the ribeye, and then the next sentence, my filet was not very good at all. You can't even keep your own story straight, Bob. Don't know how much I trust you with your five reviews and zero friends on Yelp. He goes on. There is no way you can cook a steak correctly if it's only a half inch thick. Very fatty, even for a ribeye. On top of everything, the salad and steak came out at the same time. I hate that. My search continues for a great steak in steak country. Overly peppery in Texas is normal. <laughs> and that's all the one or two star reviews for this restaurant. We move on. Our search continues. We did find the first uh, no zero, no one star review restaurant. This sounds like a pretty... I would eat at this steakhouse despite the images giving me doubt based on the quantity of good reviews. There were like 50 reviews for that restaurant. And like three total of them were two stars or less. Minus two, two, contact MT work center on one, three, three, That's pretty one. good. It's good ratio. It was rated 4.5 on Yelp. Going to one, three, three decimal, one minus two, two. Which is pretty high for Yelp. That's like really high. Can we talk about how Tox's mouse cord is being pulled taut? That's because there's currently three other cords on top of it, as well as a blue ball of yarn. Well, we are coming up on Midland. So that is actually in Texas, and looks like KMAF Air Force Base. Still can't see shit. So we're just going to have to make do with uh, airplane stories for now. This is really <laughs> this is really difficult to navigate. kind of story you got in there, passenger. I feel like even the stars are kind of hard to see tonight. Well, there you go. Now I can see them. I guess I wasn't really looking before. <gasps> What's my horoscope today? I should have already looked. I still have time. It's only 8... 50. What's my horoscope? This could tell me what's going to happen in the next two hours, dude. Why is there one horoscope called quarantine? <laughs> Hang on. 
Is there a daily quarantine horoscope? So that you don't read your horoscope and it goes like, Today, Taurus, you're going to find adventure outside. Take a train somewhere. And don't worry about the destination. Because, like, oh, wait a second, they're all in quarantine and shit. Like, you're not going anywhere. Okay, right, quarantine horoscope. Taurus, don't forget to open a couple of windows. Make sure that the sun is able to peek through those blinds so you don't feel as isolated and distracted from how your life used to be as you probably normally are. Taurus, when you look up at the sun in the sky and you think about what it's like when it used to kiss your forehead as you went about your daily business downtown, when no one was wearing masks, then just look to this horoscope for inspiration. All right, let's see what it says. What does it actually say? Wow, this is like three paragraphs. Okay, three paragraph horoscope. Have you been it? Okay. <laughs> Have you been able to distract yourself from what's going on in the world lately? If you found other things to keep you busy and take your mind off your worries, that's great. Today, though... Today, though... Uh-oh. Is there a... Is but? But what? Today, though, during the caring and compassionate Cancer Moon... It's a lot harder to ignore, dismiss, or simply try to distract yourself from what's going on around you, particularly to your fellow humans. Your sense of empathy and sympathy are off the charts, and you find suffering almost unbearable. That's right, chat. I am sympathetic and empathetic to your disposition, stuck in a dark airplane flying over West Texas. I understand how you feel. I'm there, too. And although it's tempting to stay at home and be in- Well, they're gonna tell me to go outside even though I clicked on the quarantine horoscope? Even though it's tempting to stay at home and be an introvert while following quarantine guidelines, that's taking the easy way out. Uh-oh. Monka S. <sighs> Chances are your soul will feel a lot better if you do something to help someone else today, even if it's something small. Watch out for a moon-mercury square in the mid-evening hours. That could really affect- This sounds like it was written by someone who disagrees <laughs> with quarantining and staying away from other people. You know, like, that, are you getting that vibe, chat? That someone that normally wrote the regular quarantine was, like, forced in to write the daily quor- or, or write the daily horoscope was forced in to write daily quarantine edition? Anti-masker wrote this one today. Watch out for a moon-mercury square in the mid-evening hours. That could really affect how you interact with the people closest to you. If you feel a little on edge, you can attribute it to this stressful aspect. This isn't... Hang on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. It gets, it gets worse! This isn't a good time to preach your views or try to persuade others to believe what you do. Holy shit, this is like mind manipulation tactics. They trick you into clicking on the quarantine horoscope and then tell you not to preach your views and subtly manipulate you into like, oh, it's tempting to stay at home and be an introvert following quarantine guidelines, but that's taking the easy way out. This is actually trying to like psychosis manipulate people. Okay, it goes on to say, Your emotional biases are obvious and make you pretty unconvincing now. <laughs> and the more passionately you try to express yourself, the more flawed your reasoning seems. Spend some time alone before bed if possible to calm yourself down and quiet your mind before you try to get some sleep. That is the most, like, okay, we've read a bunch of joke quarantines on here as just, like, a for funsies. That is by far the most negative and uh, potentially stress-inducing horoscope I've ever seen. Like, actually personally attacked for no reason. Your emotional biases are obvious and make you pretty unconvincing, 
The more passionately you try to express yourself, the more flawed your reasoning seems. Really? Wow. I didn't even... You don't even know me. That was from, like, horoscope.com as well. Like, the main one. Now, you want to you wanna compare and contrast that? Let's see what, um... What the regular quarantine or the non-quarantine horoscope says. Just to get like a vibe check difference, you know what I mean? Like just a regular daily Taurus horoscope. It's only one paragraph as well. The last one was three paragraphs. September 11th, 2020. If you're not quarantining, here's your horoscope. You're good at dealing with others, but today you should be especially so. Your intuition is strong, and you're likely to instinctively understand others' thoughts, feelings, needs, and desires. You give freely of your experience, knowledge, and understanding. This brings others closer to you, which can work for you on many levels. Virtual social events may bring new friends. <gasps> That's you, chat! Virtual social events! Here we are! Who are my new friends today? Now, too bad we read the quarantine one because that was some bullshit that see, that's just a normal horoscope but do you hear like the tonal difference between those two and how it was written definitely 100% someone either was forced to write the quarantine one who really didn't want to or volunteered to intentionally like psyops manipulate somebody What's my card today? The Magician. The Magician tarot card represents someone at the beginning of their journey. The path is new, but they have no fear. <gasps> like our trip around the world. They have all the tools they need. The Magician holds out his hands. In his possession, he occupies all the suits of the Minor Arcana. Cups, swords, pentacles, and wands. His white cloak symbolizes purity of character. His shirt beneath has a mercury glyph to represent the communicative planet he rules by. The infinity symbol above his head indicates that the flight around the world is never going to end. There's just far too many flights. Both representing never-ending cycles, pointing to his unlimited potential. No matter what spells or illusions the magician creates, he does so with the confidence of someone who knows they will succeed. I feel like that one was a little too specifically speaking to me. Did you guys get that vibe too? Wow, I have literally no idea. Are we in a cloud? I think we're in a spooky dark cloud. I can't even see the stars anymore. Welcome to the void. Uh, cabin. Do we need a uh, prop ice temperature? 10 C. Nope. There's our floodlights. We could turn on like taxi lights just to see the what's going on out there. Oh yeah, we in a cloud chat. Now you can see a little bit. A little spooky, huh? Down to down to down to down to down to down. Well, at least now you can actually see the bonanza. Oh, there we go. Now I can kind of see through the, the veil. Oh, we don't need this many lights on. All right, we're about to pop into Midland. With... I was going to go low and actually fly around Midland because it actually had like a, a hotspot on the map. 
Okay, actually, bad news. Apparently, the Bonanza in-game is actually bugged to be pretty underpowered. Won't help now, but there's a community mod fix for it. I knew something felt weird. So you're telling me that we're not even... Because isn't our cruising speed supposed to be like 175 or 180? True airspeed? Are we going like 30, at least 30, 40 knots under what we're supposed to be going? I knew it was really, really difficult to climb at the beginning. I was like, this doesn't feel right. But I didn't know enough because I never flew it before. I also messed around with the sim just now and couldn't figure it out. Okay, well, I'm not insane at least, so that's good. So what you're saying is this is going to be slightly longer flight because uh, this plane is... We're just taking it, taking it nice and cruise, okay? Chat, I'm going to... If I cancel IFR, how hard is it to get it back? Because I kind of just want to fly down to Midland. But then we have to climb again. Which is kind of obnoxious. But I kind of want to see some of the sights. Because Midland is like... Sort of on the way. Wait, did we want to see Midland? What did I actually have queued up? Are you going to see anything? I don't know, just like the city itself. Peak cruise speed is about 8,000 feet since this isn't a turbocharged plane. It needs air to run. Wouldn't otherwise bring it up if we need anything we can get. Okay, then. Well, let's... Uh... The only reason I went really high is because I don't know where mountains are. Well, this is still good because we get to flex our um, autopilot. Okay, so what we need to do here, if you guys can see this, so you see this altitude at 11,000 right there? Change that to 8,000. Then we're going to turn on vertical speed, and we're going to say nose down about 300 feet per minute, okay? So what you're going to see is this negative 300, and we're starting a, a little controlled descent. So I'm not going to go too fast. We're just going to be very gentle as we pass over Midland. We'll go down to 8,000 feet, and then we'll probably be able to see a little bit more of the ground as well. I've got that mod, and I'm cruising around the same speed, but I did think it made climbing easier. That mod is pretty early days. Yeah, a lot of these planes are going to get more and more mods and support. Like, I know the A320 is a super popular one. And uh, already has a mod that I would probably consider checking out before we fly that. Are you really going to be like this, dude? Is 500 too fast? We'll go 400. 33% faster. Because 1,000 was way too steep up. We'll be fine. We're already at 10,500 almost. All right, I wanted to look at uh, the flood so we could kind of see what's on this panel. Looks like some, just a bus with alternate like avionics masters, vents. It looks like backup buttons sort of. There's a phone, a microphone. How much room is back there? Chad, if I turn the light on, am I gonna see a ghost? <laughs> Hey, who's back there? I heard someone making a noise. Minus two, two, please expedite your descent to 8,000 feet. So it's at least a four-seater with a bit of cargo room in the back, and someone's got a table down already. Oh, it's a hiss noise. Listen, I am descending at my own rate. You can just deal with it. Going through this cloud. So we're not going to be able to see Midland, but it's okay. We are gaining some speed as we go. We're going about 160 true airspeed right now. So that'll make up a little lost time. What should I make for dinner? Breaded pork chops with mashed taters or sesame stir fry with chicken. Are they frozen or are you making them fresh? 500 is the legal minimum? Well, I can't even ascend at 500. But, okay, mom, 
there you go. 500. 500. So you can see the spooky cloud here. Oops. Wouldn't normally fly with landing on, but just so you can kind of see as it reflects as we pull down under 10,000 feet to 9,700. Let's push a few buttons to see if we can figure out some more of this display. So we've got inset, which I think helps us with... Next rad would be weather. Topo's topography. So it'll show up if there are any mountains or other features down here in the bottom left. So we can go back from there. PFD, we can show wind. So we got three knots, which is the current bug, I think, in the game, where all wind is three knots. But it still was fighting me really bad earlier. It tells you the heading as well that the wind is coming from. DME is just, I think, reiterating what we already know from uh, our GPS. Yeah, we went out of the red into the orange. So I'm assuming that's lighter cloud cover. Um, but now we've got 242 nautical miles till we get to San Antonio. So that's our distance chat. HSI is just changing the compass and your heading. I kind of like the full, the full one so I can see what's behind me without having to memorize the whole thing. ADFDME, I have no idea. So I probably don't want to screw with this. XPDR. Minus two two verify squawking two three one four. Did I just change my squawk? Minus two two, please expedite your descent to eight thousand feet. Wait, what is this supposed to be on? I just changed my transponder. <laughs> Whoops. You have actual weather radar on the Minus other screen. It's pretty neat. <laughs> Alright, I turned off my squawk. Um, on. Hey, I'm back. I love that the ATC actually notices, though, when your transponder goes off. Alright, that should be fixed. So on the other screen, we got some other buttons. We got DC, LTR, and MAP. There you go. I remember seeing this in one of the jets. We can actually see the real-time weather. And also, we can change vertical and horizon. Okay, so this is flat. It's pretty conspicuous on the radar when you lose data on a contact. Listen, I'm just playing like FTL or a space game, and I'm trying to smuggle some goods. Uh, so this is like looking from a top-down view. Okay. Up to 100 nautical miles out at the furthest reach. If we go vertical, it's basically showing us how high the uh, weather systems are. So in this case, this is uh, plus 60,000 feet, so that's way up there. This is negative 60,000 feet, and this is up to 50 nautical miles out and 100 nautical miles out. So right now it just looks like we've got what? This looks like 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So it looks like if we went up to 20,000 feet, we'd be far above that cloud cover. Does that make sense? Maybe, I'm, I might not have the right numbers, but if you go up, you can get out of the clouds, is basically what it's telling you. It might glitch less if you disable the inset. Is something to do with this? Oh, is it like trying to run both at the same time? I got you. So, we can overlay the weather uh, just kind of flat on our GPS, and we can also see topography. And we can control this screen with the wheels on the right.
so we can turn down our boy on comms if he's getting annoying. Change barometric pressure, transceiver standby, adjust your course. This is the actual map. This is how you want to, if you want to change your course, you can set a direct one. So you can program this, uh, your flight plan in the computer itself without doing it through the main menu, basically. All right, we are at 8,000 feet, exactly where we should be, traveling at about 152 uh, knots true airspeed. So we did increase our speed by a pretty significant margin. I think we got at least, what, seven, seven extra knots by going down, plus we gained speed on the way down. Also chat, see Discord, but Etal, don't look. Why would you say that? That's just mean. I'm back. What did I miss? We just did a full kind of breakdown of um, our screens here and their options and checked out the weather because we're flying through a lot of cloud cover right now. So we were just looking at um, the weather display. Kind of seeing that it goes about, looks like 20,000 feet. And then we would be able to clear that cloud cover if that was important to us. So just keeping an eye on the temperature. As long as it's above freezing, we shouldn't have any issues. And then we're just changing these uh, back to GPS map and playing with the different settings and stuff. We are currently flying Crow Roswell to San Antonio. All right, well, you know what? We just flew out of Roswell and didn't do one single alien story. So I need to know. There's so many books and TV shows and travel channels. Let's go as neutral as we can. The Wikipedia page. <gasps> oil failure! Oh no, it's an oil failure! Uh, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Oh my god, uh, lights. Give me flood. Taxi. Landing. Don't, oh no! Alright, uh, hang on, hang on, hang on. Can we, are there any... You turn off autopilot. Do we want flaps up or down? All right, we got to land. According according to Ace Tech. Oh no, we got another problem, chat. What happens if I crash? We have no way to continue this flight. It's not an oil failure, you just forgot to click in your seatbelt. Hey, shh, shut up. No jokes, okay? No jokes. I know! Uh, Mayday! Mayday! I'm going down! ATC. Chat, there are no other failures engaged. Ace Tech says that every single failure in the game, there is no recovery from at the moment in the video game. So I'm trusting Ace Tech for this. If they're wrong, then we can just fire them, okay? It's fine. But the engine doesn't just go off spontaneously while you are flying and, like, just restart the engine forehead. It, it doesn't work like that. Wait. Are you saying, hang on, are you saying that I ran out of fuel in just one side? I gotta land, dude. We're at 5,000 feet and dropping. Minus two, two, please acknowledge. Chat, no, you spoiled it. Oh. 
Bro, what fuel tank even is it? Shut up, ATC. I don't even know how to restart the engine in the air. Well, I've never even flown this plane before. There's too much shit. I could have sworn it was full rich, max throttle, then start after you pump the fuel. I can't read chat, so stop. I know you guys are just writing some dumb bullshit right now about something that's really easy. You think I can look over when I can't even look away from this for two seconds to read your paragraph response about what I'm supposed to do? I guarantee it. He won't read my comment while he's literally crash landing the plane. So how's he going to solve it? 500. That's not good. All right, we're just going to go for the landing. So flaps was a bad idea. Yeah, as soon as I hit flaps, I had no control anymore. <laughs> the pilot's last words. <sighs> Chat, you're getting emote only for bad behavior. literally a setup i've never even flown this plane before it just dies in the air and i'm so hang on i have to do something someone can still talk there we go that's better This is literally a sting operation. You guys set me up to fail. Flying a new plane. No forewarnings. Literally conspiring behind my back in order to anticipate this result. I don't deserve an error for that when chat is... in. Intentionally manipulating the future of this flight. And the worst thing is, because you didn't, this is your punishment, because you didn't even tell me, guess what? We don't have a save on this flight. So I hope it was funny, because I, I can't just reload the middle of the flight. I can only fast travel to the fast travel locations, because we didn't save, because you decided it would be funnier not to mention it. Was it worth it? Now, let me deal with this bullshit, because even though I figured out what was wrong... God, this is stupid. I could have landed that too if I didn't... I was right on the road, the flap stalled me. I want to go back and do it again. I could have had a pog landing. Instead, I have a slog. I don't even know how to get back to where I was, because we were just past Midland. Okay, this stupid-ass checklist. Before starting your engine, 
I didn't have a battery or alternator switch on, did I? Battery alternator switch on. Did I ever even turn the battery switch off? Does it even tell you to turn the battery? Did I use the whole battery? Alright, I'm not gonna start the whole flight over, obviously, so you don't have to worry about that. I just want to remind myself how to fly. The other thing is the fuel selector is literally like, okay, if I am falling and I look down, here's the fuel selector. This is all I can see. And I can't even read the, it says right main, left main. So what was it on? I don't even know which one it was on before. Because by the time I figured this out, I couldn't zoom in far enough to read what it actually said. Well, right now we're on the right main. Okay, eight. So what was I supposed to do? Starting engine, we're supposed to do mix rich, Prop RPM max, so I wasn't at max, but I was close enough that it probably would have still turned on. Throttle full, I remembered that. Fuel boost pump, I actually remembered most of this, I just didn't have the correct tank set. Well, that really pisses me off. I actually remembered how to do it. Okay, then... Throttle open half. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I wouldn't be able to do it. Throttle full. Till this peaks. Isn't it supposed to be flow? Flow's not moving. Flow's supposed to be, like, right there. Peepo G. Okay. Uh, so what... There... Well, I think it was bugged. Because I just moved, uh... I think, even though I was max, it wasn't max in the plane until I just did that. Okay. I had it right. Game dumb. See? Game- I did it literally correct. You, I just had to reset what the game thought my fuel mix was at. Okay, so I actually pretty much could have started the plane. In the air. <sighs> now what? Let's see- let's just fast forward to cruise and see where it takes us. can't believe you've done this. I've been sabotaged by chat. Too many errors an hour ago sub and said it's been nine months and I've noticed you've managed to train me to hate backseating on other streams. Can't wait to find out what I'll hate in another nine. Oh, you guys are so lucky. Oh my god, the checkpoint is just after Midland. That's basically exactly where we were, maybe like 15 minutes behind. Wow. Actually so lucky. That's right where we were. Okay, well you can be free from your prison now. You can turn off emote only. I don't even think we lost 15 minutes. It might be even less than that. Maybe 15. I 
think we were like right there. Somewhere out there. Because we had left this airspace. We'll just take it from the top. Okay, so how much fuel does it simulate me as having? 31%. Wait a second. I started with 65. How? I gotta cheat in some fuel chat because it, it shortchanged me. Now, we need to set up autopilot again. Leaning the fuel mix. Okay, I need to get autopilot on immediately or we're gonna start I'm already on GPS mode, so nav should be good. Nav mode is engaged. We are going to set uh, altimeter, hold, and we're gonna do vertical speed, and I wanna go up. Well, let's select 8,000 feet. Nose up about 300 feet per minute. Okay, that should work. Why are we still going down? Vertical speed mode is on, altimeter, oh, because we're not on alt. Okay, 8,000. BS on, check, check, check. All right, that should do it. Wait, why are we still going down? Did autopilot not engage? It did not, good call. I definitely clicked it though. So will we spin the wheel after chat? I guess, but I, 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 that's not really an error that I had personal control over. I've never even flown this plane before. Punishing me for being a novice. And chat intentionally didn't mention it. Running out of gas is 100% an error. It was just in the other tank. Hey, at least you'll never forget now. Where? Okay. The thing is, like, how do you tell when one is getting low? It has a special a special indicator. Fuel quantity has a right on top and a left on bottom. See, I never would have noticed that unless we didn't, unless we crashed. I just assumed you've been switching them. I had no idea what was happening. But also, like, what would your mind actually leap towards if we literally just turned on the the oil failure you know what i mean like why would i assume anything other than oil failure when the propeller stops i was fully committed to landing the only thing that you could count as an error is the actual crash itself because i think i could have landed that so technically there's one error you can't double dip me for fuel running out and the crash you can you can hit me for the crash i guess because i think i could have landed that What does the caution menu say? I don't know, when I click it to go to alerts, nothing happens. So I don't know what the flashing caution is. I think they'd run through a checklist. 
By the way, I like that my flashlight actually goes to the wing outside. Whew, I think I could have landed that. I actually had a road, I had a street with lights on it. I had a 500 count indicator. I had all that going in my favor. I just flapsed thinking that was gonna give me some extra time and I should have just let it coast with no flaps. That sunk me like a rock. So now I know if I do need to make an emergency landing, just glide. Flaps did not give me any additional lift there. They just made me sink. Pito heater is off. Yeah. How do you know where the gate is when they tell you to taxi to gate after landing? Um, I turn the assist on because if you're going to different airports, Papa, you're just not going to be able to find it. So hit escape, go to your assistance, and go to navigation, and then check taxi waypoint on. And it'll... Sh give you a blue line because you're, there's just no way you can f possibly know every single airport without a map for those airports well the only thing I was mad about was losing progress on the flight but now we because I want to be able to say that we flew everywhere in real time and I didn't want to skip past but luckily for us Midland was actually really close so we're good we just <laughs> we lose a little time because of the crash but other than that, it's fine. No big deal. I feel like we're not on... We are. There's no reason to save now. I'm gonna save, like, later. Once we get further along. I'm not mad, I'm just disappointed. But yeah, it's okay, it's tech. I'm not actually mad. I'm just like, play mad. Because <laughs> it, it's embarrassing. <laughs> it just is. But yes, now I get fun comments. Like, uh, I'm gonna pick on you, Corridan. Flaps give you extra lift, but you also gain drag. It's not something you'd use in an engine failure. I gotta do it to him. No shit. We just crashed. I'm not gonna do it again. I'm sorry, it had to be done. I figured that one out the hard way. That's kind of information that I need to know before everybody on board dies in a fiery explosion on a Texas highway somewhere. Now I know from experience. The thing that's hard about swapping tanks is... Remembering what planes you have to do it on. To be fair to me, this is only the second plane I have flown in the game where swapping tanks is necessary. And also, if we didn't have the oil failure as a trigger, for this flight, obviously I would not have automatically jumped to that as the reason why things were going wrong. I would have probably been able to process it faster. But since it was already, like, cued for this particular flight, it was just the a comedy of, not okay, not a comedy of errors, but like, the perfect storm. Also, none of the lights light up the fuel switch in this plane. Yeah, I ended up turning my headlamp on. And I can see that we have the left tank selected, and I can see that the left fuel is draining. So I'll probably try and change once that gets to 10. Once L gets to 10, we'll try and change to the right one. Okay? And we'll do it, we'll do it better this time. Kind of mad when you make a driving mistake, someone honks at you, and you just want to yell shut up, but you know it's <laughs> your fault. <laughs> well, we 
almost made the emer I, I would have been so happy if we made the emergency landing, but we already made one good emergency landing today. Two was maybe expecting a little much. But, uh, rip this... P both planes and both flights today had a crash on them. That's a little scary. Okay, let's see if we can get going a little faster. I think we were at like 150 knots true airspeed before. Maybe a little higher. Kind of change the fuel mix slightly. They gave us a little extra speed off the top. 150 is not bad. It's still significantly faster than our last plane. All right, there we go. Back to 150. Whew. Give you a little excitement, chat. So far, even the most boring flights have ended in some kind of, or at least featured prominently, some kind of uh, disastrous turn of events when you least expect it. And that's probably my favorite thing about flying in Flight Simulator, and the number one reason I'll never fly a real plane is because I can make these mistakes in Flight Sim and nobody actually gets hurt and we can just enjoy it, and it's a fun video game adventure when my plane suddenly stops going at 8,000 feet, and I get to see if I can deal with the stress, and it just comes out of nowhere. Like, literally, I don't even remember what we were doing. I was going to read Roswell alien stories, and I just heard the engine die. I feel like uh, Wikipedia is going to be too boring of a version of events. What would be the best account of Roswell? Minty Atusis, can you briefly explain the difference between indicated and true airspeed again quick? I think I missed every explanation. Sorry. Well, I'm not the best person to explain it. Somebody in chat can be more technically correct than me because I don't uh, fully understand it. But my understanding is elementary. And it's basically like the uh, higher up you go, the less dense the air is, right? So the higher up you go, you're, you're going to technically be able to go faster by going higher in certain planes. In this case, Ace Tech has said, by the way, <laughs> I'll give you a VIP back, um, that the optimal cruising height for this is 8,000 feet. So I guess there are ceilings. But uh, this would be true of like the A320 or something if we were flying that. And basically what it means is, true airspeed in my understanding is how fast you are going if you were going on the ground. So if this was a car, and it was just traveling on the ground, true airspeed is our actual speed relative to the Earth. However, our indicated airspeed is lower than that because the measurement system by which planes dic like can decide how fast they're actually going is by receiving air into an intake called the pitot. And that's why we have a heater for the pitot in case it ices over because if it ices over it's not able to to register how fast it's going because it can't interpret how fast the outside air is coming into the intake okay because that's how it's figuring out how fast it's going is how fast the air is hitting it the sensor so if the sensor freezes over you can't tell how fast you're going at all but indicated airspeed is basically like how fast we are going at a given altitude, including resistances that the plane itself is facing from the outside air that is hitting it. So even though on the ground, we're going 153 knots true airspeed, because of the, the way that the air is hitting this plane, it registers at 136. But we can calculate our true airspeed based on our altitude and our indicated airspeed 
and basically math it out to get the true airspeed and like solve for it effectively. That's that's my understanding. I don't know if that makes more sense or less. Does that crash and your present light frustration feel like reasonable punishment to you? Logically, the punishments will get easier <laughs> as you become a better pilot. Well, I guess if it remembered our settings, things could still go wrong because we just hit restart. So it could be anything. I had my pito ice up in the sim in a cloud. It was bad. I haven't seen any ice yet, but maybe on one of these flights we will because we're going to be going all over the world. So what you're basically saying is it's magic. <laughs> it's basically magic. But I think TLDR indicated airspeed is like someone... Basically how fast our instruments are detecting that we're going based on how the air is hitting the PITO sensor. And then true airspeed is basically how fast we would be going on ground level. But it's going to look like we're going slower on indicated the higher up we go, even though we're not necessarily going slower if we were on the ground. Just got here. Can you explain how Slay the Spire works again? Thanks. Oh, yeah, my pleasure. Absolutely. All right, give me a good alien story. They have their own .gov website. That's definitely going to be the cover-up. We got a, the Guardian. We got a travel channel. We got a history channel. <laughs> ABC News. Um, the Smithsonian. These are all going to be like corrected. Where's the real story? Yeah, that's the other part of it, what Ace Tech said, which is indicated airspeed is all you are concerned with when you are actually flying, okay? Because let's say you're going, I don't know, let's just say a hypothetical makeup number scenario. Let's say that this plane stalls at under 60 knots, okay? If your true airspeed was 150 knots, but your indicated airspeed somehow was 60 knots, or less, you could still stall your plane even though you're going the same speed. Because as air density decreases, the higher up you go, the air needs, I mean, or excuse me, the plane needs air to create lift. So therefore, your indicated speed is basically telling you how much air is actually moving across your plane. And that's what you use to fly. Because it doesn't matter how fast you're actually going if there's no air to let you fly. Does that make sense? Is that the, that's the other part of it. And probably the most important part of it. Flying in space, no air pressure. Exactly. What's your Delta V, though? <laughs> we, got, we gotta go to a conspiracy website or something. Um... Chat? My stream's still on? Did I just get disconnected from Microsoft servers or something? <laughs> Peepo G Optical. Is it time to change tanks yet? What's the highest altitude any plane in flight sim can go? I think it's like, isn't it like 38, 48,000 feet? Something like that? Okay, we, it reconnected automatically. That's pretty cool. I didn't know it could do that. Stream is back. Flying across the desert night and listening to Coast to Coast AM is such a mood. I've done it twice and it's uh, Ace Tech. That sounds like very much fun. 
How can you see the desert? Because <laughs> I, I can't see Texas. Where is Texas? Chat, Texas. I regret to inform you, doesn't exist. I can confirm having f flown over it that uh, Texas is actually just one giant cloud. Is there a flood brightness or nah? How did I run out of gas in, it must have gone all the way to yellow. All right, let's go ahead and just switch tanks for a bit. So we're gonna use the right tank now and we'll just try and bring that back in line with the left. West Texas is a barren place. I guess you guys aren't really missing much anyway. If we were going to fly a night flight over one of these, it'd probably best be West Texas. <laughs> Uh, we can at least see the nightlife of um, San Antonio. We can fly low over San Antonio. That's that's a well-developed, populated metropolitan area. We'll be able to see some there. All right, alien stories chat. I'm gonna go to. We got an NBC News from 2017. The Roswell incident and the Kardashians have something in common. Okay, not gonna click on that one. How about NewMexico.org, 10 Unsolved New Mexico Mysteries? Yeah, everyone loves a top 10 list, right? <laughs> Unfortunately, uh, it's a big blank screen with only one picture on it. All right, you know how .co is its own link? Oh, some of these are gruesome. Okay, I actually, some of these are like murder mysteries. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, someone someone got the, the website newmexi.co, which is just kind of, you know, why didn't I think of that? Top 10. Alien Mysteries of Roswell. Taco Bell has ta.co? Oh, really? Well, we might have to just settle for a history.com or the Guardian or a travel channel. We got Plane and Pilot Mag. That's relevant. 10 Alien Encounters debunked. No one cares for that space.com. We know you're hiding something. Okay, it's in your best interest to pretend like you're the first one to visit Mars. Okay, I've got to find one that doesn't just say the truth. It was a government experiment. Of course Google is in on it, dude. They're trying to feed me the false accounts of what actually happened there. I gotta find the real one. It's definitely not coming from NSA.gov, I'll tell you that. Time.com, everything to know about Area 51's mysterious history. There's also, is there a Roswell, New Mexico TV show? <laughs> An American television science fiction drama series. That's not going to make this any easier. Okay, how about these... No, this is Area 50. How did Area See, people are confused. Area 51 came up. <laughs> A 
Okay, here we go. We're gonna go Roadside America. All right, I'm not gonna show you the screen because it's a it's a big, like, sunglasses screen. You guys would cry about how um, bright it is, but I will show you some images to go along with this reading. We've got the alien. <laughs> the other alien. <laughs> And the Roswell Credit Union are featured images on this page. I don't know why the Roswell Credit Union is uh, is one of the screenshots. Roswell's unearthly glow as a tourist destination comes from an apparently limitless power source. The power of an idea. The notion... That sounds like something I would have led with in an English class. The notion that saucers full of aliens nosedive near town... And then the government covered it up. Is urban legend radio? Hang on. Dude, was I the alien? We did just crash land near Roswell, New Mexico. My engine did mysteriously turn off. And I couldn't pull up in time. I'm st I think we're, we're doing one of those time travel uh, storylines where I accidentally create the past. You know what I mean? You should have an antenna. <laughs> it was us the whole time. Okay. Roswell became an essentially one reason to visit town on July 7th, 1947, when a local paper reported that William Mac Brazel had found pieces of a flying saucer scattered across a nearby ranch. The saucer may have crashed on June 14th. Brazel later retracted his story under the usual suspicious circumstances, and all evidence vanished supposedly carted away to some secret place like Area 51 or the Pentagon's basement. It took decades for Roswell to accept its heritage. It still hasn't exactly. Large signs in the town declare Roswell dairy capital of the Southwest. <laughs> but do not mention flying saucers. Some people insist they visit for the Chili Festival or to see America's largest mozzarella factory, which is southeast of town on Omaha Road. Several- we're learning some interesting factoids besides the alien stuff. Several UFO business owners told us that conservative Roswell has always feared that crazy people would overrun the town, even as local franchises of Walmart and KFC happily enliven their exteriors with extraterrestrial photo ops. Pat Jennings at the Roswell Space Center had a different explanation for their- Roswell's unease. Half the people in town still have pieces of spacecraft inherited from Grandpa, he said. I wouldn't be surprised if someone still has an <laughs> alien in a freezer someplace. Okay, if you're trying to downplay your town's connection to the extraterrestrial, maybe don't have the guy at the space center in your town go like, Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody's got an alien in the freezer somewhere, so it, it's really not that far-fetched. But it's too late to hide. Too many visitors spend too much money on think green mugs and illegal alien t-shirts. That's real. That exists. In Roswell to be ignored. We expect that the UFO business owners, like a wise alien race, will eventually help the town evolve. It can't remain the dairy capital of the Southwest for much longer. Not with what aliens are known to do to cows. Do they have a- they have museums and stuff. Interna- there's an international UFO museum in Roswell, New Mexico. Let's look that up and delete these, please. Hang on, I'm gonna just show you this. Um, here we go. They've got an interesting website, let's say. You ready for this chat? Welcome to the International UFO Museum and Research Center with COVID guidelines to reopen safely at 25% capacity. We've got your quintessential foil helmets. We've got a uh, excited guy in front of the alien life form fog machine. 
We've got 12,000 visitors from across the globe. We got Roswell, New Mexico, the show from the CW featured prominently. And a nice little souvenir shop. But only $5 to get in. Children, $2. But if you're a senior or military first responder, sorry, that's going to be a dollar extra. If you wear camouflage, the aliens can't see you. Uh, that's just a robot guy. And they have dogs, occasionally. There you go. What about this? Roswell UFO was Russian craft. Aliens were Nazi <laughs> experiments. From Tucson.com. <laughs> we did fly out of Tucson today. Um, who linked this in the chat? I'm fire linked it. It looks so bad, I'm actually curious. Dude, I would go. I would go check it out. All right, let's 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 hear about um, Roswell UFO. This is the photo, by the way, from 2010. Shows Al the alien who casts a menacing glare at the galactic market at the Roswell Convention and Visitors Bureau in Roswell, New Mexico, which opened in 2010. <laughs> is that, should that be the newest emote? <laughs> I've got one emote spot open. <laughs> Somebody, like, crop that <laughs> and make it an emote. <laughs> Dude, I know that guy. <laughs> what was... <laughs> it looks like... It looks like, um... It almost looks like a minus two personified. That's a very just, like... Very neutral expression. Okay, this is what the article from Tucson.com says. It says the Associated Press. Who wrote it? I don't know. Did Tucson write it or did the Associated Press write it? Oh, it's about a book. The world-famous Roswell incident was no UFO, but rather a Russian spacecraft with, quote, grotesque child-sized aviators developed in human experiments by Nazi doctors, according to a theory floated by investigative journalist Annie Jacobson. Her book, Area 51, An Uncensored History of America's Top Secret Military Base, is about the secretive Nevada base called Area 51. Well, this isn't about... Um... What's... This is... Uh, is this about Area 51? Jacobson, a contributing editor to the Los Angeles Times Magazine, told NPR that said she knows people will be skeptical. Quote, but I absolutely believe the veracity of my source, and I believe it was important that I put this information out there because it is the tip of a very big iceberg, Jacobson says. That's all we got. Have they scrubbed all the uh, stories? about the actual Roswell incident from the web, and it's just a commonly accepted government plane crash experiment now. We're only 8,000 feet above sea level, and it's just like, we're just in thick. Let's just check the weather. Yeah, this is what we're writing in the whole way, chat. Just right up in the clouds. Literally even with them. That red is cloud. That's cloud. Can we do a Roswell Yelp review <laughs> reading? Well, we, we already we already left Roswell. Um, where are we coming up on the actual map map? Because we got I know we got a ways to go. 
Not that far. We're at like the 66% marker, actually. That's further than I thought we were. Let's look at Google Maps. Let's check Google Maps and see if we can take a guess. I literally have nothing to bounce this back on, but we'll look anyway. So we definitely passed Midland. We should probably save. But if we don't crash, then it's fine. We could just fast forward to the descent in that case. So we're heading to San Antonio. Got um, San Angelo north of that. That's pretty much it. So if we if we went from Midland and we started here, we're like 66%. We should be right around this. Like, we should be close to San Angelo. And then Del Rio way down to the south. So let's take a look in San Angelo and see if there's any restaurants or anything up here. Hello, banana. What's up, Syntax? I love that this is almost... We're, we're, we're like one foot in Microsoft Flight Sim crashing uh, when we accidentally run out of gas and one foot in GeoGuessr and one foot in finding uh, food reviews for fun. Goodfellow Air Force Base exists here. That's just trees, dude. Uh, Google's very shy about offering food places on Google Maps. San Angelo State Park, no picture. We got a Gold's Gym. <laughs> Definitely won't find me there. Stadiums and fields. Churches. Tom Green. That is a potentially unfortunately named... Is this just Tom Green's house? Does he just live here? In this shed? Going to San Angelo soon. Nice, Hoosier Hills. Tom Green just exists. Oh, Twin Mountain Steakhouse. We got a photo, too, to go with it. Twin Mountain... We finally found one. Okay, this is important enough to be on Google Maps. Twin Mountain Steakhouse right there. Let's see what we got. Uh, they do not have a website, I'm sorry to say. But uh, their Yelp menu is available. They got a 3.5 on Yelp, so... Um, I imagine we are going to find another steakhouse, though, in Texas. What a surprise. Here we have some naked spaghetti. Literally, maybe you're lucky if there's some butter sauce on those nudes. Because, uh... It's a... That is an oversized steak in a bowl of empty spaghetti. That's the picture from Google. Ward off evil spirits with, if you have additional crosses. One cross isn't good enough. And also the Longhorn, just to remind you where you are. Peppery potato. It's a pretty rare dog. I'd like that to be tightened up a little bit. Maybe you got it that way on purpose. But just based on the char on the outside and the rarity of that, Looks like a strange combo. Pretty traditional building here. Of course, you got to go with the Lone Star and Boots to remind yourself of where you live in Texas. We got a bar built into this place. This looks like a set on. Uh, this, <laughs> this actually just looks like the bar from True Detective, like season one. Got some like zucchini and some broccoli. This place is pretty crowded. There's some. Ch what, what is with steakhouses having chicken alfredo and steaks? And that's what they got. That's um. Proportions of potatoes there. To green onions or chives. Breadsticks look pretty good. Those breadsticks look pretty good. I'll give them that. All right, what prices we got here? Filet, $23. 
This is, like, considering how this place looks, they're pretty proud of those steaks, dude. 16 ounces, $37, dude. Gordon Ramsay would charge you less for that. For middle of nowhere? Yeah. Okay, now. Review-wise... Looking for the first one-star review. All right, well, the first one-star review is two lines. Not really worth reading. <laughs> They're not super expressive here. Might have to settle for a two-star. Oh, here we go. One, I had to go all the way. Chat, this is not representative of their current service. This is a one-star review from 2012. <laughs> so maybe they changed management uh, in the last eight years. So take this with a grain of salt, okay? Like a large grain of salt. Eight-year-old review. M.A. from San Angelo says, I've been here twice. Dun, dun, dun. The first time I went... The service was all right. I ordered the signature scrap steak, which was delicious. Don't get the side of spaghetti because it was overcooked. I could pinch it and it was mushy and soaked in oil. My biggest issue was the cleanliness of the dinnerware. Not only did my plate have crusted food from the last dish that was served on it and the utensils being greasy, the wine glasses that were given to us were absolutely disgusting. I could still see lipstick prints on my glass. Instead of replacing the dirty glasses with cleaner ones, we were left to wipe down the glasses ourselves. The second time around, I ordered the sampler platter that had a six ounce scraps, three piece of shrimp, and onion rings with a glass of wine. I was a bit bummed that they didn't allow substitution, so I just gave all my onion rings away. The six ounce scraps was good, but the shrimp was salty. The worst part about the whole night was finding a piece of hair in my food. My <laughs> utensils and plates were dirty again this time with black slimy stuff that I was able to wipe off. There was black stuff in my water as well. It was, <laughs> it was a $32 meal. I was charged $5 for a $4.25 glass of wine, which apparently was a typo on the menu. I was also charged a dollar for the onion rings that I didn't want to begin with. According to the menu, they were part of the 1999 sampler. Let's not forget that there was a piece of hair in my meal, which I did bring up to the waitress. It was a horrible night, and I will definitely not be giving this place a third chance. Lest we not forget. Alright, let's try to find something more recent. Two star review from 2018. November. Written by Unknown. Well, I had a lot of mixed reviews from the locals, so I decided to give this place a try. I was disappointed. The food looks pretty good, but it was oh so greasy and not good on my palate. I learned the frog legs were cooked in the same oil as the french fries, which made me cry because I have pet frogs. <laughs> I did not finish the fries. <laughs> well, okay, that, that went a different direction than I thought. Okay, so I'm assuming that she intentionally did not order the frog legs because they had frogs at home <laughs> and then learned that the french fries were cooked in the same oil as the frog legs and therefore did not eat the fries. That went in a totally, like, left, hard left turn in the other direction. Because <laughs> I, <laughs> I learned the frog legs were cooked in the same oil as the french fries, which made me cry. Because I have pet frogs at home. <laughs> uh, Alright, one more from Twin Mountain Steak 2018. <laughs> Two stars from Josh from Fort Worth. 
When my wife and I pulled in, we noticed how empty the parking lot was for a Friday night. We got in easily enough and got a table. Our server was new this week, so I won't hold that against her. However, I will say that my kids were eating ice because it took so long to get a lemonade refill. The food. I ordered a ribeye, my wife a sirloin. Her sirloin was cooked well, but tough. My ribeye, dot, 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 was medium. And I ordered medium rare. I can live with that. However, the flavor was bland. The cut, like something from Walmart. It looked like it was boiled. I tried to put salt and pepper on it, but it didn't help. I said something to the waitress, and to her credit, she removed it from the check. For that, I am thankful. If I was to pick one thing to improve, it'd be the quality of the meat. Overall, not a good experience. This place used to be the ultimate good steak. Now, I would prefer Texas Roadhouse based on what I had last night. We don't come back often, but when we do, we won't be coming back here. Two stars. An insult to Walmart. <laughs> All right, where are we at? Dude, how am I going to land this? I hope that San Antonio's got some lights. Are we going to the International? Uh, well, my flight plan should be taking us into Stinson, so no. We're going... Oh, my God. I'm not even going to be able to see. It's like a municipal airport. How are we doing on fuel? Looks like right is just under 10. And left is just above 10. Let's go ahead and select the left tank and kind of get that going. That means we should be getting pretty close, chat. Oh, I'm zooming in, not out. If you're like, holy shit, how far do you have to go? No, I'm zooming in, not out. There we are. Uh, looks like we're well on our way right now. It says we actually can see exactly how far we are. So good, a good idea to just play with some of the instruments. I'm trying to remember which one it is though. Is it PFD BRG? Yeah, San Antonio, 120 nautical miles away, I think. Might be a good time to save the game right here just in case something goes bad, you know, like last time and do around the world day two flight. Day two, flight two, part one. There we go. What happened last time? Nothing, Somnus? Nothing? We're good. See, I woke up just in time for the traditional review reading segment. Yeah, we got a couple really good ones today, actually. I've been really happy with the Yelp reviews that we found. Not happy with how chat intentionally tricked me into crashing my plane. We've had a couple of rough flights today. We decided to turn around and do the flight again because it was so fun. But yes, we had a um, an interesting fuel out experience on. Honestly, both flights have been extremely thrilling, if only because of the disaster that has befallen both of them. Uh, we had to make an emergency landing both times. I succeeded once, <laughs> and we had an extra takeoff challenge on the first flight, which uh, was absolutely. You know what? Is that clipped? Because we could just check that out now, actually. But hello, Metal Gatsumi. Welcome, Mod Squad. Yee. Let me see. All right, chat, put your glasses on. 
Put your sunglasses on. It's about to be white screen. I'm opening the plane log. Five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Total error is four. <laughs> uh, we did our best. Ludwig level threat detected. <laughs> this is pod racing. Is this the successful one? All right, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. I'll just leave it small so you can see. I, I don't feel like changing scenes. Okay, I'm just gonna leave it small. If you want to see it big, you can just open it. Chad, is it even moving? It's not moving. Pito? Pito? <laughs> Pito! <laughs> for, for, I couldn't pull up! That, that whine means I'm stalling. So I can't pull up, so I have to gain speed. I can't... <laughs> Dude, look at that turn. Look at that turn to dodge these trees. I can't gain it! <laughs> Mike Peak. And then I have to dodge Chad, that. Is it even moving? So I'm taking- this is not a runway, if you didn't notice at the beginning. I'm on a, a regular road. It took eight attempts to get off of this road, so not pictured the seven to eight crashes before this. <sighs> because I kept hitting the, um, spot right in front. I did land successfully on it, though. And that was, uh, that was pretty pork, dude. I crash landed directly on it. But I, I succeeded in not crashing. That was the important part. Would it be a good idea to put a colored pen on the map everywhere you crashed? Maybe. That sounds difficult to find, because if it's not on the map, I have to know pretty much where it's at. <laughs> that might. What crashes? Exactly, Ace Tech. What crashes? Regular road is generous. That was a goat track. Well, you know. Replay the second one. What, the next clip? What's the next clip? Alien conspiracy? You mean the alien conspiracy to crash or the actual landing itself? We could use, like, uh, what, what pins have we already used? We haven't used red pins. I could mark it with red. All right, we're almost sub 100 nautical miles. So, I expect... I mean, it'd probably be easier to just check. Does it work out the way you think it does? Like, can I divide nautical miles by our true airspeed and get, like, an effective ETA? How does that work? No, because knots are... Knots as a unit of measurement is nautical miles per hour. So one knot equals 1.15 miles per hour. So, wait. Yeah, it's per... Yeah, I was right. So 150... Uh, if we're going 100 nautical miles, in theory, should only take... 30 minutes? No. It should take 45 minutes. Right? Because if we were going 200 knots, then it'd be 30 minutes to go 100 nautical miles. It should be 45 minutes. But this is where, like, we start our descent if we were at, like, 16,000 feet. It shows actual ground speed and ETA on top right. Oh yeah, it does show the distance right there. 
There's my bearing. Where's a uh, ETD? E ETE? 40, yeah, it was basically spot on. Good job, chat. We mathed. We did the math. But yeah, it has a timer right there. Oh, that's pretty cool. See? Still learning stuff. That's what I enjoy. I like these the, the time we get to kind of look at the little details, because I'll remember stuff like this uh, next time we fly this flame. And uh, next time, hopefully, it'll be during the day. But another thing we're going to do is keep switching our fuel back and forth, because I'm not about to make that mistake again. I'm probably just micromanaging it a little too much. Estimated time. I want to. What does ETE stand for? It stands for estimated time en route. That's what I originally guessed, so I was right. Estimated time en route. 42 minutes? That's too long! Oh, yeah? Where were you before? This is a real time flight around the world, okay? We're doing it legit. And we're going to San Antonio. We're basically almost there, considering that uh, according to Ace Tech, this bug, or this plane is bug, and we should be able to cruise around 180 knots, maybe 185 top speed. So I can't hit the knots because this plane isn't doesn't go as fast as it's supposed to in the video game. So I assume that will be changed over time. It's about 30 knots too slow. According to forms via me, but they seem reliable. Well, I can feel it that it, I mean, my throttle's maxed. We got RPM around 2,500 because we have turned the RPM controller slightly down. Um, was it B-Bomb that said to keep it under 2,500? So we are practicing that. That's good to know. We got fuel mix that we've been playing with. Need to change our altimeter every so often because I'm bad at the video game. So why don't we do that? Are you planning airliners to cross the ocean? You'll see. Stick around and find out. We got the whole trip planned, and we are going all over. We're going to get uh, wherever you guys are, wherever you live, we will find you. I mean, we will visit your hometowns, and your countries and continents will be represented in the game in some capacity. And I'm looking forward uh, to getting some feedback from you guys. I saw somebody had pictures. Somebody earlier said that they had photos from White Sands, and I don't know if they linked it or not. Did anybody see that? Is it in Discord, or what it, was it here? Let's, let's see their uh, White Sands pictures. We're going around the world, and you're going too. I can link it again. Yeah, link it again, because I want to see your White Sands uh, actual experience. So wherever we've been going, chat, I saw some people talking about their hometowns. Get some postcards. You're gonna, if you go ahead and get the, if, you, if you've been through um, any of the states that we've already been in and um, want to grab a postcard, I'll hopefully have a place for you to mail that and we'll show it on stream uh, as we fly in the future. All right, picks from around the White Sands. Okay, Secret Warrior. Let us see what you are capable of after How do you do um <laughs> Okay, hang on. <laughs> I act I don't know how to use I'm trying to How do you do like a gallery? Is it possible to full screen I guess I could just download this. Instead of showing the page.
Here we go. Here we go. Okay, and then we can full screen this. How do you how do you make Windows Photo uh, dark background instead of light? Does that exist? You would think so, but I don't know. All right, whatever. There you go. Okay, it, actually, Windows Photo Viewer sucks, and it just crashed. Here we go. Chat, it's going to be bright. You've been warned. Three, two, one. What is that? I Is that a speed limit sign? What did you take this photo with? Google Glass? I'm just kidding. Going 82 miles an hour? Could you go like, Mom, pull over. I want to see white sands. Not setting Windows 10 to dark mode. No driving off road. Okay, so she couldn't pull over. That's fair. You answered that. It crashed. I'm sorry. Hang on, it just crashed. I'm out. Hold on. The next picture. There we go. Not using image glass. Okay, so at first I was like, wow, that is some white sand. And then I looked in the background, and that actually just is the dune. <laughs> so the rest of this is this the sand that's blown over the dune. And it's probably closer to the road. But yeah, this is the dune back there. It's gonna crash again. I, dude, Windows. What's the deal, dude? Look at those little pineapple trees, dude. I can't believe they grow naturally in white sands. They can't go past it because they were testing out missiles and stuff. So that that makes sense. White Sands National Monument Visitor Center Information Scenic Drive Museum. Aw, that's cute. That's cool. It reminds me of going to Red Rock Canyon. Did you get to see any missiles blow up? But thank you for sharing those. How did you feel while you were there? Was it cool? So when, when they have like a scenic drive, uh, what all does that entail? I didn't want to lose my phone in the sand. That's actually kind of scary. That makes sense. Because if you open the window and hold it out, I, I hate doing that. Very cool and windy. Nice. I like knowing that you guys have actually been to, in some cases, the places that we're going to in the game. Because that just makes it more real to me. Because I've never been to these cool places. All right. We can zoom the map in a little bit because we are only about half an hour away and let's check on fuel maybe just switch back to left tank again not gonna forget that hey we finally came out of the clouds is that a cloud that better be a cloud because if that's a mountain we're dead are there any mountains over here that I need to be worried about Uh, oh, we could look at, um, I still can't see shit. It's okay, I can't either. I can only see stuff inside. Finally out of the clouds. There's no moon, dude! This is real time. The moon doesn't exist today. Look. I think... The moon is not there. What kind of moon are we supposed to have today? not out yet. It's like 1234. What do you mean it's not out yet? It might be behind some clouds. I'm gonna say that based on the brightness over that way, that it's like behind the clouds that way. 
I just want to sky, ve sky vector and forgot how comically flat West Texas is. It is to a point, though, because I have driven over that. When you're heading into um, New Mexico, it's not. There are some annoying hills. They're not very high in elevation, but they're still steep. They just built over them. There's like, eh, nah. Yeah, let's just let's just follow the curvature of the hills the entire way. And it's really annoying. I'm gonna Google where is Moon. The moon is currently in the constellation of Taurus. Moonlight world map time and date. Moon phase, fraction of moon illuminated, 32%. Not much, chat. I'm st I still can't believe that quarantine um, horoscope was actually written by somebody. I'm still mad about it. But on that part of Texas, is a huge stretch where there's no altitude to change at all. I believe you. Texas is so big, I probably just drew, drove through the really, really hilly part of it. We're basically, um, I mean, I can just show you where we are. So we went past San Angelo a while back. And we are en route to San Antonio. So we are roughly probably next to, uh, Kerrville. If I had to guess, maybe just a little bit further west. Maybe just somewhere in this area. Probably getting ready to pass Kerrville. So let's look at Kerrville. Our defining feature is the courthouse, apparently. Kerrville is a city uh, with a population of about 22,000. Kerrville Space Program. Yes, of course. Uh, we got a Kerrville Convention and Visitor Bureau. That looks nice. Well made. Some churches. A Universalist Church. I don't know what a Universalist Church is. Salvation Army. 2.7. Wow, it's really low. Utilities Lab. Oh. Starbucks. I got excited. I thought we were going to see some custom coffee here for a sec. We got Bernard Meat Processing. Is a fork and knife here. Southern Spirits. Oh, get me some Southern Spirits. That hits the spot. Uh, do we have any other, like, food stuffs or points of interest down here? Looks like we got a concert going on. Camp meeting. So we get a little closer. Looks like this is kind of suburban with some lakes back here and a reservoir. Rio 10 Cinemas. Oh, baby. I think I've seen a Rio before. Get your teeth pulled. Nothing. Uh, let's go to the middle of town. Right here in the center. There is a concert being played. I knew there was. There's the courthouse. We got... I saw a drink just now. Main liquor. A lot of liquor here. A lot of... Oh! <clears throat> a lot of drinking for fun. I forgot that I had that. Luckily, it's in a thermos, so the ice hasn't really melted. Um... Food, though. No food. It just doesn't come up on Google Maps. That, all, that building looks pretty cool. Got a bridge. Over. Whatever river this is that leads directly into San Antonio, it looks like. What uh, interstate is this? that leads 
from Kerrville to San Antonio. There's Comfort. Comfort USA, chat. Wow, what a name. Just south of Kerrville. So I don't think we're going to pass Kerrville, but we might well pass Comfort. All right, let's look for uh, let's look for a restaurant in Comfort. This is the Yelp review special. All right, top ten best restaurants in Comfort. We got Highs H I G H apostrophe S Cafe and Store, and the number two is Comfort Pizza. Dude, when your number two spot is pizza, that just makes me jealous. I'm not even angry this looks pretty cool actually okay now we got to see comfort pizza take me to yelp number two spot pizza okay what was the question? Have you talked about any more of the sitting postcards? Yeah, you're actually not the first person to ask about that. Um, but we are going to... I'm going to try and have that taken care of. By, I might be killing my frames here. Actually, Ooh, wait a second. We might have something to see down there. Not really. But I can actually see signs of... Oop, signs of civilization, at least. roads instead of just desolate nowhere. Too bad we can't fly over this during the day. But the good news is we'll get to see San Antonio during the day uh, the next time. So it kind of works out. We got to see Roswell when we were landing and we'll get to see San Antonio when we're taking off. So it's kind of kind of works out nicely. Yeah, that's like a main main drag. That's very well lit. But yeah, I'm gonna try and have postcards set up like within the next week and see if I can get you guys some actual information on that. But for now, if you wanna just get one uh, relative to a place that we've already been, that you have that you live or have hometown roots in or something like that, then you know, go ahead and collect those. And that's actually gonna work out because if we can get like a bunch of them at the same time, that's gonna give us more to look at. You know what I mean? Like to the point where we could do a postcard stream. Because if we just do it per stream, then it's gonna be maybe just a couple, like here's two. But it'd be cool if we had like a bunch to look at all at the same time. You know what I mean? So it kind of works out. So just go ahead and get them and I'll let you know. A physical one? Yeah, I'm gonna open like a PO box if I can for letter mail only. And uh, if we travel to a state or city or whatever that you live in or have been to or can get a postcard, I'm gonna let you guys send like a postcard in the mail. But don't send me a letter. Don't send me an envelope. If it's in an envelope, it's going in the shredder, okay? Immediately. I'm not even gonna open it. <laughs> I know this sounds mean, but it's only for one purpose. Be no packages, there'll be no boxes. It's gonna be postcards only. I'm gonna shred anything else. And don't write a return address on it, okay? Postcards, no personal identifying information other than a place that you've been. That's it. No last names, uh, no addresses, no return, just postage stamp, and the P.O. box. You're probably, once, once I do it, you're probably going to have to, um, Well, I'll just I'll just have like a I'll probably have it in the plane dock. I'll probably have the information in the in the plane dock, and that'll work. Can I use your shredder for documents I don't need anymore? No, go get your own from like Amazon Basics. All right, we are T minus twenty three minutes until touchdown, so we're gonna have to start a descent at some point. We can probably math this out. So, uh, here's my question. Can we look at, um... Oh, oh, the pizza. Comfort pizza. Let's check this out first.
comfort pizza. The Greek is my personal... That looks like a decent little pizza, dude. I would be all over that. That looks like a solid pizza. I don't normally like tomato on my pizza, but I would be... I'd be ready. This is a nice little, like, outdoorsy establishment. Colorful chairs. Chalkboard menus. That's a salad. Outdoor seating. As long as the weather's nice. See, this is the this is the kind of country that I like. This right here. Kind of like country and I know it instead of looking like a uh, retirement home. Like the other couple places that we looked at did. Video of pizza tossing from 2015. That's just a good look. I mean, I know it's got salad on it, but I would still eat it. I know it's like got uh, spinach and, and tomato, but look at that. Look at that bacon in there. And the cheese. Looking like a Supreme with extra. Bike rack with old timey bikes as a decoration. Wait, was that a pizza video? That's a cheese pizza video. A little bit of tomato sauce and pepperoni. This place looks pretty cool. Looks like they're trying their own thing. This is some non-traditional pizzas for, for Comfort Texas. You know what I mean? Looks unique. Five, okay, first review is five star, five star, five star, five star, five, four star. This is like the second top rated place in this entire area. All right, first one star review from last year. Edit, remove the only star it had because as soon as I posted my review, they couldn't help themselves and went on Facebook and started bashing me, calling me names, saying my review is inauthentic and had their quote, fans call me some pretty foul names, which sadly I expected after seeing how they interact with people who leave low reviews. The original review says as follows, ate it once before about a month ago, was okay. However, went by a couple weeks ago and was told I can't order a pizza unless I have a reservation, but that they would, quote, sell me a salad. This company also blasts people on Facebook and calls them, quote, keyboard warriors for leaving a bad review after turning customers away. Very unprofessional. Honestly, wouldn't even be writing a review if it wasn't for seeing that kind of behavior. <laughs> From Gage S., from a place called Early Texas. So didn't even taste the pizza. Every other review on this on that page, all of them are five stars. FYI. The next page I see only three star reviews is as low as it goes. There's seven pages of reviews. Okay, here we go. One star. Aaron from San Antonio says, I wish I could give this place less than one star. This is a pizza place in the middle of nowhere, Texas, and you have to, quote, reserve the dough ahead of time. First, nowhere does it say this in any of the online resources, parentheses, Yelp slash TripAdvisor, we used to find this place. Therefore, we drove over from Fredericksburg on our weekend getaway to have a pizza here and arrived two hours before closing only to find they had no pizza left, quote unquote. Second, the place is going for this family-friendly feel, but it's so pretentious that it requires pizza reservations. If you're trying to be a posh, upscale restaurant, then go for it. But you can't have it both ways. I will never make the trip back here. Huge waste of time. So literally another person who didn't even taste the pizza. Okay. One star from 2016. What kind of establishment closes before their scheduled hours? I called last night at 7.50 and received the message they were closing shop. This is the third time this has happened. Here's some simple advice. Stock up on supplies and you won't have to close early. If I decided to leave work two hours before my scheduled time, I'd be fired. Totally insane. 
Thank you, Josu. Uh, next one star review from Nyla. I had pizza from here last night that was brought to an event I attended. It was some breakfast pizza with potatoes and eggs and other stuff. I ended up getting food poisoning, so that was not a good experience whatsoever. I'm still affected, and it's been over 12 hours. I will not be eating here again. On another note, I did have their iced coffee earlier in the day, and it was good. <laughs> All right, thank you, Comfort Pizza, which I would totally trust over whatever Nalia said who had some pizza at an event with potatoes and eggs, and for all I know, is lactose intolerant and had a tummy ache from the cheese. Like, I just don't trust you. You didn't even go to the restaurant. <laughs> I, I, I have to believe that that's the best pizza place in that entire quadrant of Texas. It just has to be. Based on those, those were the worst reviews possible. I would absolutely go. I'm sorry. Did you have to did you have to call the pizza place and say, "Can I come?" and they say yes and then you go, "Oh, I'm one star." It's pizza, bitch. I shouldn't have to make a phone call. I should just have to drive from Fredericksburg, Texas and show up and just get whatever I want because I saw it online. And I don't remember a time when humans had to go through the trouble of beep boop beep boop to make a phone call to see if uh, you were still open in a completely different city and town. I get what I want, okay? If I left work out early, I get fired. with the headband it's head tracking do you see how it moves when i move my head also welcome to the first ever flight sim stream that you found we're talking about pizza in texas chat true or false if you ever watch anything about italian food do they or do they not make like in a good italian place they make the pasta fresh every single day and hand roll the pasta and cut it right why would you not do the same for your dough why do you want old stanky dough from two days ago if they made all the dough to make all the pizza then that says that means it's the freshest possible pizza that's just more reason for me to want to go eat at this pizzeria dude like that's a pro you ran out of dough that's the freshest ass dough you could get at any pizza place in Nowheresville, Texas, dude. Like an hour and a half away from San Antonio out to the west in Comfort, Texas. That's a feature. Fresh ass dough. Alex, I redeemed a question a few minutes ago, but I think you missed it. Chillin', what does the Ask a Question Redemption say? Huh? Read it. I think you missed it. What does it say? You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. I'm just kidding. What did you say? Can we write our Twitch username on the postcard? Yeah, you can write your Twitch username on the postcard. Or you can claim it uh, when we show it on the stream. But yes. You can identify your Twitch. Okay, chat, let's open up. Talk to ATC. We kind of just got... Can't, we had to restart because we crashed. San Antonio approach minus two to his type beach it's been more peaceful this way, though. Northwest of Tango Alpha six six. It's very brightly Northwest lit up. Following. Minus two to San Antonio approach. You can actually see city, though, dude. Count multiple, multiple points of interest there. Squawk five two four one minus two two. You know why? Because we're coming up on your pick of the litter of airfields. We got KSAT. We got KSSF. We got KSKF. All sorts. Copy minus two two. Change our altimeter again. So, we should be on our way to KSSF, yeah?
Yeah. KSS, do we... I don't have IFR. So... KSSF isn't even on this. Check our fuel again. Go ahead and switch to the right tank. Looking good. Right tank's in the green. We'll definitely carry us in the rest of the way. Uh, approximately 12 minutes until we actually get there. So, if we're 12 minutes away... Got it, buddy. One, one, eight, decimal, zero, five, Start our descent now. And we're going to descend to like eh, four or five, that four thousand feet, five thousand feet. We are only about twenty-four nautical miles away. San Antonio approach minus two two is out of eight thousand feet for seven thousand five hundred feet. Minus two two. And then we're going to have an interesting nighttime, no lights landing. Okay. Do you just not pass me off, dude? Going to one two seven decimal one minus two two. San Antonio approach minus two two is out. Who wants me? Nobody wants me. Okay, I've adjusted it again. Uh, let's go ahead and start a descent because we don't have IFR, so I think I can just do whatever I want. Hey, Tox, thanks for the gifts up to yourself. What happened? I crashed the plane. Among other things. Actually, I don't... Yeah, well, among other things. So here goes autopilot. So what we're looking at here is our designated altitude of 8,000. We're going to go ahead and choose um, something a little lower to the ground. 5,000 sounds good. We're going to turn on vertical speed mode, and we're going to say nose down. What we're doing is looking at this 300, so we're moving down about 300 feet per minute. So we're just going to maintain kind of that controlled descent. And we might even take it down to 4,000. If we looked on Sky Vector, we could see what the airport's actual altitude was as we cruise on over. If you guys don't get a good view of the probably edge of the San Antonio metropolitan area, don't worry, because we are going to see it again next time we fly. But if you take a look around, you should at least be able to see the approach here. G1000 can show you the airport elevation in the flight plan screen. That's pretty cool. Am I in the G1000? <laughs> or is the G1000 the uh, Skyhawk alternate? Why are the rivers glowing? Yeah, that is a highway. That is a highway. And these are lo some low-hanging clouds. G1000 is the Garmin map panels. Okay, yeah, but you forget... Uh, pilots just abbreviate everything. Okay? G1000 has one... One fewer letter than writing Garmin. Um, so they have to save time wherever possible by cutting acronyms up. That looks startlingly like my skyline city. Well, it's based on reality. Okay, I don't know what I'm looking at here. San Antonio, distance 15 nautical miles. Uh, but I don't know how to see, I guess I have to go to flight plan, which I probably do. Careful here, buddy. How do I get off the screen? Press the FMS. Oh, 
god. What? Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I can't see anything, dude. It says, press the FMS knob to return. But it doesn't do anything. I'm looking out my window and it's a lot more wet than the weather you're currently seeing. It's about two hours delayed for the live, all live weather. Imagine all the buttons on the right are toggles, so to close the menu you open, you just hit it again. Yeah, I don't even remember what I clicked. So they just clicked all of them. And nothing closed it. Literally clicked every button on this panel. I have pushed all of them. And that only complicated things. But yes, the weather is real-time hair barns. It's just a couple hours delayed because they have to get the reports and then go from there. All right, we need to descend faster. So we're going to go about 500 feet per minute. Set that to about 400. Let's go about 600, actually. Show me my city. All right, well, we'll just leave that open for now, okay? We don't know the altitude yet. It's fine. The pilots in chat have a teach a man to fish mentality, which is understandable. Instead of just telling me the information I want to know. Here you go. Now you guys can actually see stuff. Looks really cool, though. I love how uh, there actually is light pollution. Like, we couldn't see anything in the middle of nowhere West Texas. But now that we're loading in San Antonio... We still can't see anything. <laughs> Breaking news. San Antonio was hit by a void out. This is Deftu's fault. I could have stayed in the cockpit and been fine. It's okay. We can just fast forward to the approach. We were like less than four minutes out. This is truly a cursed run. You know what? I'm going to blame... Uh, you know, I always just blame Ace Tech. I find that easier. Maybe maybe I pushed 17 buttons uh, on the panel on the right, and that glitched the game. Because they wouldn't just tell me how high the airport was. And then the, I, I'm pretty sure the menu bug, because I pushed every button, and none of them closed it. You. Just let me have this, kid. <laughs> Truly a cursed flight. We'll do the best we can with what we've got, though, Chen. And the good news is, we were there. So, we don't have to worry about not completing the flight. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure I pushed... There were no other buttons to push. The only thing that could have closed it is if you have to hold one of the buttons in, like we did before. That's pretty much the only thing I didn't do, was hold all the buttons in. It was the coffee night again. 
Hello, Moppenheimer. What's up? Thank you for nine months. Sorry I had to crash the game on you. Garbage is also here for the Fresh Prime sub. Good evening. And thanks for uh, sharing the subs. Clear is the only button that should be held down. None of the other ones will do anything different. Good morning, Tim the Sorcerer. If you just got here, you're in time to see a landing. Which we're still going to do. But it's okay. We, we get to go back. We get to go third person and see a little bit more of the nightlife, the nighttime. What I was going to say was I really like how um, it realistically depicts the ambiance. So if the moon is not visible, you can't see anything. You're just in a cloud. It's dark. What do you want? It's dark. If you start approaching the city, the light pollution actually lights up the clouds and we could see our plane. You know? That's that's really just neat detail. I, it makes me appreciate flying at all times of the day. Sure, flying at daytime sunset, being able to see the ground below you is great. And it's probably more fun. It just because you can see. Like, I'm not going to argue that. But it's still just neat kind of going into civilization and kind of getting that like, <sighs> like that sigh of relief that you're coming out of the wilderness back into where the people are. You know what I mean? It's just kind of cool. I like seeing the, the planes work at all these different times, because crash landing, uh, while not being able to see anything, that was a terrifying and harrowing experience. And it was a lot of fun even if I died. Wait, this is not the right flight. Hold on. Load around the world. Day two, flight two. I think I saved this the wrong thing. But it's okay. We're just going to skip to the... Anyway, so it doesn't matter. As long as the flight conditions are live. Um... Excuse me? Chat. Can't click. I can't click on anything. <laughs> uh. Enter to validate. One more, please. It's okay. This is the last flight of the night anyways, so we may as well make it a good one. One more, please. So to make this game, they just take Google Earth and throw a plane in it? Kind of. Bing Maps, actually. That's the first time I've ever broken the the map. Yeah, I think it's just this flight in particular is cursed, and I think chat cursed it by purposely hiding uh, that I was going to crash. You guys actually brought this on me, and the rest of you. We were going to be just fine. Golden. And you had to bring me into the ground to establish dominance over me, huh? You knew it was coming, you just couldn't look away like a train wreck in slow motion. I just messed up my game in the exact same way by reproducing the bug. How do you even do that? I just sit here and watch and make jokes. But no, this has been um, incredibly fun. I just want to pull off the landing and say that we completed the flight even if it was a patchwork quilt that we had to cobble together. Because I want to update the actual map. While this is loading, I may as well entertain you.
dog. He's asleep. Right there. <laughs> he knows. He heard me. <laughs> How does he know? I'm not even doing anything. Like, I'm barely even... Let me fix the camera. <laughs> All right, it just loaded anyway. How's this? Good enough. Is my camera laggy? No, it's probably fine. Okay. Back to it. Load the correct one. He's too smart. He is too smart. Day two. Um, flight two. Plan. Okay. Flight conditions are live. Listen, we had enough fuel. You all saw it. I, I did the correct... Um, on the last one, I actually was switching the tanks like I'm supposed to. But we definitely were closer to, like, 20% or something. I forgot my ATC options, but that's okay. We're just gonna land it anyway. What's wrong with the, um... Oh, I don't have enough... Okay, actually, no, 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 it's simulating the whole flight. So I actually need the fuel to fast travel. Okay. For those who just got here, the game just crashed. We were at our destination. So we're just gonna skip forward. So yes, you are late, Aku. He looks so mad that you woke him up. <laughs> he could just, maybe he could just tell that I was watching. But don't worry, we'll get there. Bit of a rough day. Multiple crashes. <laughs> Making the best of what we can can do. Alright, so, um... Oh, this is messed up. Cool, I did that. That was me. Okay, it is centered. Now we just go here. This is... Okay, we definitely want to skip past the descent. Can we just... Let's just go from approach, right? We were less than four minutes away. That should be approach. One would think. I have no idea. Let's see where it puts me. Hopefully, not literally on top of the airport, because I wanted to try to find it. But final would be the actual landing. Approach should be just getting the position. And it might automatically teleport me to the correct height level. We were we were approaching like four to five thousand feet though. Let's see where we are. We're really low. Well, a really cool action shot though. As everything loads in here. So we might have skipped ahead a little bit. But uh we're doing what we <laughs> we're doing what we can do given the circumstances. Okay, let's hop in. Um... Yeah, I think we skipped a little bit, but honestly, there's nothing I can do about it, chat. 
we, we, we were less than four minutes away. Right now we are... We skipped three minutes of time, okay? You can, you can forgive me three minutes. It counts. We went from ETE like four to ETE 40 seconds. We'll see uh, more of San Antonio on the way out. To be honest, though, um, this is kind of harder because now I don't know what approach I'm supposed to do. Uh, am I X SXG? Clear to land runway 32 SXG. Okay, they gave me clearance to land 32, which is like the opposite direction. I have to turn 180 degrees. Why? This is not the approach that I had in mind. Let's speed up so we don't lose anything. I'm going to RPM down. I don't know what you're actually supposed to do on landing. All right, I mean, this is 32. For all intents and purposes, this is it. Do we have trim on this plane? Because this nose is embarrassingly low. Like, it is fighting me. Okay, get a little look-see at nighttime San Antonio. Five hundred. We might have to do a flyover because I really did not get a good look. I have no idea where the runway even is, even in third person view right now. So if we have to do a quick flyover, that's fine. It's this blue right here, but that's it right there out the right window that's got to be it okay now I know where it is this is this municipal airport doesn't have a lot of lights it's got to be it so if you look out the right window see those white lines that's the that's the strip right there so we're gonna make a little go around which normally would be an error but Given that I have no idea where I am when I load back in, I am not going to count that. Because ga game crash should absolutely negate um, something dumb like that. But yeah, this looks really good. Is that a, it looks like a church down there or something? I have no idea. We're getting some nice um, opportunities here. We're gonna turn on landing lights. What what floodlights are on right now? I never even found the button for the floodlights that are on. So we're just gonna land with these on, I guess. Because this light is pretty good compared to the other one. All right, you guys ready? because we're just going to go in for it. It might be a button above. Yeah, it could be. It's okay, though. It shows me that there is one. Right about here is where I'm going to make the turn. See those blue lights? 
That is the spot right there, dude. Gonna go ahead and get landing gear down. He remembered landing gear. You thought he wouldn't. Flaps are currently down. I know someone out there was like, please, come on, skid to a stop. All right, cleared to land runway 32, chat. So the blue should be taxi, but I still had the right idea. It's this one. I didn't see, I didn't even see white lights the first time, chat. Certainly not me. Oh, yes, uh, me. I wasn't hoping you would crash again. Not my prettiest landing, but certainly far from my worst. All right, we should have turned right there for taxi. Okay. Is that a taxi? Oh, that was one too. Am I going to go to the end of the strip right here? Because I am having trouble seeing what's going on. Also, yes. This thing turns like a truck! Alright, acknowledge. This thing turns like absolute mud. Request taxi. Taxi lights on. Let's acknowledge. And I guess go find our spot over here. Am I stuck? Did I accidentally hit... Um, I didn't even mean to hit the parking brake. My parking brake was on. I'm pretty good at this game. See what I mean? Look at this turn. Look at this turn. Steering performance as bad as engine performance. I bounced way harder. I honestly think that was a pretty good landing. Like, I, f I know that you heard the stall whine, and that probably sounded alarming, but we flared the way we were supposed to, even if I... It wasn't a perfect alignment. Like, I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you I was dead center of the runway, but I cleared the trees that I think I couldn't barely see because it was dark, uh, I landed after the cleared spot that I was supposed to. Like, I followed the white lines on the ground to try to land beyond that. Um, I cut my speed and cut the throttle, I think, at a good time. And just flared up when I thought I was going to hit the ground. And I think it was a pretty gentle touchdown. All things considered. Got some jackasses taking up spots on the road as we come in here. Let's get a little visual. The taxi line maybe isn't the most gracious here. <laughs> this is where it told me to go, though, dude. Through the other airplanes. See, now it's got an arrow pointing that way. Does that mean back up or you're good? Does that mean too far? I can't back up though. That's as far as that just means good. Okay, parking brake engaged. All lights on. Let's uh, work the checklist backwards. Okay, well, I can't really see everything. We can go ahead and... Normally we'd probably refuel here. How much fuel did it simulate me with? Too much. But it's fine. Because I was, I was managing it. Okay, avionics. 
Don't need to talk to you anymore. Oil pressure. Throttles down. Still don't understand Magneto. Oh. Well, hold on. I'll... <sighs> I'm not done. <laughs> Take me away, dude. Because we got... Are you supposed to turn the batteries off once you get the plane going? Because it never tells you to. So the battery's just kind of running for no reason. We can cut the... F close the fuel shutoff valve. Prop down to zero. Mixture control, I guess, cut it. And then you can just turn the batteries and avionics off, and you should be... That should be it. And then just flip. The light switch is off, and that's actually it. Okay! Whew, we had some hiccups and some bumps along the way, but uh, the landing, the actual landing, was not one of them, thankfully. That was a really fun landing. It was pretty tough because, I don't know if you, I mean, you could probably see as much as I could. Like, the way that we were flared, I really couldn't see over the dash, and I had to kind of just go with instinct that I was hitting the ground. Honestly, the Garmin having the visual of the runway was a big help, so I could try and stay lined up. A little bit better, but I'm I'm fairly happy with that landing. Always room for improvement, but given the fact this is a dark municipal airport with just a couple of lights um, on the actual runway, I feel like that was pretty smooth. Got remembered flaps, remembered landing gear, and uh, feel like we headed at a good speed. So it felt it felt good on the way down. Now they're a little bored. She's about to just walk around. I don't know what you want. But GG, good flight. I know it was fairly uneventful because there wasn't a whole lot to see, but next time we pick up uh, San Antonio will be our departure, and we'll see it during the daytime. And then, chat, we got a little change of scenery because uh, we are ditching the United States, and we are going to Mexico. So we're heading to Mexico next time we pick this up. Enough of the old U.S. of A. We're getting out of here, dude. So we're going to see all new parts of the world. Head south. It's, I, th I thought San Antonio was a nice good springboard. Uh, we got another plane to catch. So we're going to have uh, new planes. Maybe we've flown them before, but new planes for the 30 planes. We just crossed off the 172 six-pack. That was the first flight, and then the Bonanza just now, which I'm looking forward to flying during the daytime, and maybe with a patch to get it going. Hopefully the Bonanza doesn't come back up for a little while. I don't think it does, actually. So, that's good. Or maybe Ace Tech removed it. I don't know. But either way, we probably need to bump that back until we can either get a patch or get a, get a mod. Um, but the next one, two, th I don't think there's a duplicate plane for at least the next eight flights. Actually, I think like 10 flights. I think we got the next 10 flights, no duplicate planes. So we got something else we need to do. Come with me on another adventure. We got to look at where the, the headband is. <laughs> we got to update the map. I'm loving this series. What a fun idea. I'm glad you're liking it. Hair Barnes, we got a lot more land to cover, but we're going to have, uh, obviously, we haven't even touched the fastest planes in the arsenal, so there's going to come some times where we cover a lot more distance than we have been. Let me turn the lights up. If I can remember how. There we go. Okay, sorry. And I gotta grab myself a yellow pin. This actually should be pretty easy. My 
Swedish. All right, there you go. Sorry for the wobble. It'll calm down in a moment. Also, I see Coffee Nat is still here. All right, let me go put the pin in. So, got to find San Antonio on here. There we go. So look at how our trip around the world is developing. We've gone pretty far in some small, sometimes slow planes in just a couple days. Like, we, this is really only day two. And there's so much more left to see and so much more left to uh, experience. We got a nice sample of the southwest of the U.S., and we're going bouncing from San Antonio down uh, the bottom, the chin of uh, Texas into Mexico. So we were going to uh, start our Mexico journey next time. And uh, I, I don't know, we might do this on Sunday again. I'm not going to have anything insane planned. If you guys are okay with that. Um, honestly, there's going to be so many trips that there's no way I could have something like super spicy planned for each one, but I'll try and get something. I got a, I got a couple ideas that uh, obviously aren't going to be doable by by Sunday. Oh, and were there any errors on that flight? I guess there were, huh? I do have to spin the wheel of disaster at the beginning of the next stream. But yeah, that feels good. We got a nice line snaking along the bottom of the USA there. So much world left to see, though, man. But um, next time I'm going to try and be a little bit more quick and efficient. Try and get three flights if we can. That would be lovely. I think... I think that'll be doable. Uh, we have some real chunky ones. There's one flight in particular <laughs> that we n may need to reevaluate, Ace Tech. <laughs> uh, upcoming, I think you know the one that I'm that I'm talking about. So we'll uh, we'll maybe make a couple of adjustments and try and get three flights in next time. I think it'll be doable. Maybe we'll do Crusader Kings tomorrow, then Flight Sim Sunday, then Crusader Kings Monday, or something like that. We'll see what we can do. Ooh, okay. Let me stand by for a moment and let's do uh, the finales. It's kind of weird that we're finishing before midnight and it's still a 10 hour stream. That's bizarre. Ooh, it's bright. Control center says too bright. Okay, fixed. But yes, I think um, <laughs> those those flights were very memorable just because of the disasters that struck. A ten-hour stream that didn't even span two different days. Is that allowed? 
Let's check out uh, the Google Earth. So if you do exclamation plane, you can see the progress that we're making. On both of these, I'm loading in now. It's trying to load the Google Earth. Okay. So check this out. And by check this out, I mean check this out. Total flights four. <laughs> We're doing the best we can. Um, hey, you got a good picture of the Beechcraft Bonanza. It's very dark, but that's about as good as it gets, I guess, right now. Still very good, very good snap. That must have been when we crashed. And it did like the... The little push start to play situation. Alien conspiracy to crash the plane was one <laughs> error. Takeoff landing flaps all caps. What does this go to? You also gain drag. Flaps give you extra lift. But you also gain drag. It's not something you'd use in an engine failure. I gotta do it to him. No shit. We just crashed. <laughs> I'm not gonna You're do it again. Flaps give you extra <laughs> But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. <sighs> I had forgotten about that. So we got to see the Skyhawk today and the Beechcraft Bonanza G36. Um, you got clips for takeoff landing for our first two flights if you wanted to catch up briskly. And also the flight from earlier today. Dude, I loved um, the mountains just outside of Tucson. That was... You're going. I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. That was probably my favorite um, visual segment. It was right at the beginning. Very front-loaded. Went the wrong way after... T what? What is went the wrong way? Okay. Yeah, no, that's true. I did do that. Uh, alien conspiracy to crash the plane. Then start after you pump the fuel. I can't read chat, so stop. I know you guys are just writing some dumb bullshit right now about <laughs> something that's really easy. You think I can look over when I can't even look away from this for two seconds to read your paragraph response about what I'm supposed to do? I guarantee it. He won't read my comment while he's literally crash landing the plane. So how's he going to solve it? 500. That's not good. That's where it all went wrong, all dude. Right, we're just gonna go for the landing. The flaps. I hear them. Look, there I could have landed on this. I was lined up if I didn't put flaps down. We're at 50 knots. So flap see, okay, here's the part where it went wrong. So I want you to watch. This is how you can tell when you're stalled. Watch this. So, see how the plane is angled right? Watch my joystick. I'm just like cranking it left and it's not doing anything, watch. Because we're totally stalled. Right. There. So flaps was a bad idea. <laughs> see how like I was totally to the, well, left is that way for you. And it still just kept on nose diving right. <sighs> That's why I said, like, flaps was a bad idea, because the crash was inevitable. Like, I couldn't do anything to possibly correct it at that point. Famous last words. <laughs> I want to see the landing again real quick. I want to... I guess I can big screen it. Because it felt... I want to see what it looked like versus what it felt like, you know? Now I can watch it objectively. Alright, we're, so we're just on the left side of the runway. 
but in no danger of even coming close to not my prettiest landing but that was pretty smooth dude Maybe just a little bounce, but like not a hard bounce. That's pretty good. I'm happy with it. But thank you for keeping up the plane long, Kyra Toby. And uh, let me see. Uh, Google Earth says. Google Earth says. Well, I don't know why it's cut like that, but it gets the point across. Vegas. And uh, all waypoints that we hit along the way are here with information if you want to see some. Uh, from Google to Havasu City, we started today from um, La Choya Air Park. A private air park in Oro Valley. Flew up to Mount Lemmon, then way down here. I think this is when we... Did you, did you put in the screw up? Yeah, we're supposed to <laughs> go directly from here to that, but now it looks very intentional. Now it looks like we were supposed to go down there. And then ended up in Elephant Butte. That was honestly, truth or consequences, and Elephant Butte was really fun to like learn about. Then we went over White Sands National Park. Holloman Air Force Base was somewhere around there. The Cloudcroft Incident. <laughs> this is where we landed in an emergency and had to do some practice takeoffs. Wow, this is very detailed. All the way up to Roswell, and that's where the last flight was. Roswell past Midland to Stinson with a couple of hiccups along the way. But we got there. So that last flight, look at how much longer, right? Here's La Choya to Roswell. Roswell to Stinson is like almost 20% longer. But actually a shorter flight if you don't count the crashes. I got the street too. That is detailed. But if you want to follow along, exclamation plane. We'll show you the chart, charted course that we have been carving uh, through the world, we're going to keep bumping up the planes. Obviously, we've got, we still got the the passenger jets are going to be flown as part of the 30 planes. And uh, the regular jets are going to be flown. Oh, look how round the world is in Google Earth. It looks very round when you're rolling it around like that. But very cool. Very excited about it. It's a lot of fun. Where to next? We're going to Mexico. So we're getting out of the U.S. And uh, we're going to cross the border going south. And check out Mexico, dude. So, going to be a lot of fun. We might do this again on Sunday. The The schedule's tentative right now, but I'd like to do a little bit just to try to catch up, and I'm enjoying it. I think the flying is a ton of fun. Learning little factoids is a ton of fun. Food Yelp reviews is like its, <laughs> its own dumb segment now, permanently. And I enjoy learning more and more about um, each of these areas of the world because this is dumb stuff that I don't think about. Like, I don't know... I'm sorry if I'm ignorant, but I just didn't expect, like, my brain didn't connect Roswell, New Mexico, apart from, uh, actually, Area 51 is, like, two hours northwest of you. I don't know why. I thought those two were, like, way closer than that. So I'm learning geography. Um, I don't have the firmest grasp on the states of the United States of America. Like, I could name them, but I can't point out the end of, I couldn't show you where Roswell was on a map. For example, now I could. Now I can see like, okay, Albuquerque, and there's the Rio Grande, okay, and that's going through Truth or Consequences, New Mexico, and then that goes along and traces the border of Texas. Now I know that. I didn't know that before today. The Yelp reviews are such a solid part of the flights. I don't know how they're so consistently good. I used to think Area 51 was near Roswell too. I blame cartoons. It just makes sense because it's like aliens, secrets. They're connected somehow. Anyway, GG everybody. Thank you for staying up um, past your bedtime in some cases. A lot of fun today. Midas is antsy. I don't know why he's this antsy, but he needs to chill out a little bit because we've. I guess it's been 10 hours. It has been 10 hours. That's true. 
But we'll do some more plane game. I don't want to make it wait like another week. I'd like to just fly more because flying is a lot of fun. And I'd like to do more flights. So hopefully we can get three in next time. The series is entertaining and educational. I hope you guys aren't burnt out on it by the time we're done. I know that some of the excitement is a takeoff and landing, but honestly, there's been so much excitement in the middle of the flights unexpectedly that I don't know how you can... I don't, I don't know. For me, it, the highlight is something goes terribly wrong halfway through somehow. <laughs> I don't know how it happened both flights today. But hopefully you guys are at least comfy, if nothing else. Totally stoked. This is a great way to stream The Sim. Glad you like it, Renacat. And thank you as well for your brand new subscription. I'm glad to have you. Exactly with the big people happy in chat. What's up, Zach? Thanks for sharing eight months. Hope you're doing well today, dude. Maybe I'll see you again uh, later. We'll probably start Crusader Kings early and just kind of stay on that. So let's just plan on another early start for CK. Okay? We're going to get it going at like... Maybe that's a bad idea. But we're going to try and get started early, okay? Preferably by 2. So let's let's say by 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific. And then because if we play a uh, plane game on Sunday, I need to start that really early. But that's hard to do because Crusader Kings is liable to go for like 12 hours. So I'll do what I can do. Nobody says I have to do three flights. We could just do two more flights. That would be fine. Doesn't have to, They don't have to be a 12-hour plane stream. So we'll see how it goes. But I, I would like to. I'll try to get some more stuff queued up. I'll try to get the P.O. Box stuff. It's not going to be by Sunday. It'll be by, like, next week. And uh, see if we can get some spicy plane streams queued up after the normal one on Sunday. So we're going to keep trying to spice it up, mix new stuff in. And I've got some ideas for that. The Wheel of Disaster made some accidental spice for that second flight. It tricked me into thinking that it had gone off. <laughs> and Disaster did strike, though in a way not expected initially. Kind of, kind of baited me there. I hope you dream of eggs. Who me or sawdust bunnies? Good night, everyone. Have a good one, Mid Sid. Take it easy. I will catch you guys again very soon. AKA about 14 hours from now, maybe even less. If I go to, depending on what time I go to bed, there might be a 1 p.m. stream. I'm gonna, let's say 1 to 2 p.m. Because I'm looking at the time, it's only midnight. I'll probably go to bed in the next three to four hours after I make some food. Let's say 2 p.m. By 2 p.m. But it'll definitely start early. Okay, that sounds like a good plan. Oh, that feels good. That feels good, dude. Oh, I feel great, even though I'm still stressed from crashing in both flights. Shall we raid? No, nobody's really on right now that's playing a game that's relevant to what is going on. How many of you guys are even still here? How many of you guys are pretend numbers? Chat, if you want to raid, type raid in the chat right now. Let me see your energy. What is your energy level at? All right, all right. I see you. Two out of ten, enough to raid.
You guys want to go to another plane game stream? Oh yeah, get your uh, Etal planes. Dude, get your Etal planes. Let me see some Etal planes in the chat. Alright, we're gonna go say hi. We never raided Bike Man before, but he's playing some Ill 2 Sturmovic. Playing uh, a plane game with guns. So that's gotta be more exciting than what I was doing. Rip. Um, a Secret Warrior and Midsid Chargoth just finger on the trigger banned two people just to make sure his gun still worked. They have been, <laughs> they have been unbanned. <laughs> I believe they have been unbanned. You're going around the world. But I don't want to. Just let me have this, kid. Just let me have this, Neurobot. Good night from Europe. Good night, Neurobot. Have a good one. All right, chat. Get your Etal planes and cast them. You're the late night crew. You are the remnants from 25 minutes of stream wind down, okay? This is not Etal Channel at its best, but it is Etal Channel at its brightest. Burn brightly, okay? And uh, drop some bombs, shoot some machine guns, use your Etal plane efficiently. Good night, goodbye, and I'll see you again in like 13 hours. Etel is not... I, I, I am sending the planes that still fly in the night sky. And then Midas is going to whine at me the entire time. Good night. I'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. Etel Air is going around the world. And now you're going to... Hey, Midsit, thank you for your sub... Uh, goodbye. Good night. Oh, wait, Chargoff, thank you! <laughs>